night. The time now is 10, 15 a.m. And uh, uh, then we do have an agenda here before us. So presiding is myself, Seth Damon, Speaker of the 24th Navajo Nation Council. Uh, with that, uh, if we could get a roll call and then um, go on down to an invocation, we can go ahead and go from there. But without further ado, could we go ahead and uh, get a roll call? And then uh, after that, uh, well, we can continue on. Good morning again, everyone. Got the Ebene. Good morning, honorable delegates. I will begin roll call with honorable Almer Begay. Honorable Almer Begay. Honorable Key Allen Begay Jr. Honorable Key Allen, Allen Begay Jr. has answered roll call. Honorable Paul Begay. Delegate Paul Begay is present. Honorable Paul Begay has answered roll call and is present in the chamber. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Honorable Nathaniel Brown has not answered roll call. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton has not answered roll call. Honorable Amber Kanaz Bakrati. Uh, yep, a Sadeja, Delegate Amber Kanaz Bakrati is present. Thank you. Honorable Amber Kanaz Bakrati has answered roll call. Honorable Speaker Damon. Honorable Speaker Damon has answered roll call and is present in the chamber. Honorable Herman Daniels Jr. Honorable Herman Daniels Jr. Honorable Herman Daniels Jr. has not answered roll call. Honorable Mark Freeman. Honorable Mark Freeman. Honorable Mark Freeland has not answered roll call. Honorable Pernell Halona. Uh, good morning, Delia. Hello, Mr. President. Thank you. Honorable Pranel Halona has answered roll call. Honorable Jamie Henio. Honorable Jamie Henio. Honorable Jamie Henio has not answered roll call. Honorable Vince James. Honorable Vince James. Honorable Vince James has not answered roll call. Honorable Ricky Nez. Honorable Ricky Nez. Honorable Ricky Nez has not answered roll call. Honorable Carl Slater. Delegate Slater present. Honorable Carl Slater has answered roll call. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. has not answered roll call. Honorable Wilson Stewart Jr. Honorable Wilson Stewart Jr. Honorable Wilson Stewart Jr. has not answered roll call. Honorable Charlene So. Present. Honorable Charlene So has answered roll call. Honorable Daniel So. I'm here. Honorable Daniel So has answered roll call. Honorable Eugene So. Oh, close is Kate. Yeah, thank you. Honorable Eugene So has answered roll call. Honorable Odo So. Honorable Odo So. Honorable Odo So has not answered roll call. Honorable Thomas Walker Jr. Delegate Walker Honor is perfect. Honorable Thomas Walker Jr. has answered roll call. Honorable Edison Wanika. Here. Honorable Edison Wanika has answered roll call. Honorable Edmund Yazzie. Honorable Edmund Yazzie. Honorable Edmund Yazzie has not answered roll call. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair. 
Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair has not answered roll call. Going back up. Honorable Elmer Begay. Honorable Elmer Begay. Honorable Elmer Begay has not answered roll call. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Honorable Nathaniel Brown has not answered roll call. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton has not answered roll call. Honorable Herman Daniels Jr. Start the daily events. Honorable Herman Daniels Jr. has not answered roll call. Honorable Mark Freeland. Honorable Mark Freeland. Honorable Mark Freeland has not answered roll call. Honorable Jamie Hennio. Honorable Jamie Hennio. Honorable Jamie Hennio has not answered roll call. Honorable Vince James. Honorable Vince James. Honorable Vince James has not answered roll call. Honorable Ricky Nez. Honorable Rick Nez. Honorable Rick Nez has not answered roll call. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. Honorable Ray Raymond Smith Jr. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. has not answered roll call. Honorable Wilson Stewart Jr. Honorable Wilson Stewart Jr. Honorable Wilson Stewart Jr. has not answered roll call. Honorable Odo So. Honorable Odo So. Honorable Odo So has not answered roll call. Honorable Ed Minyazi. Honorable Ed Minyazi. Honorable Ed Minyazi has not answered roll call. And lastly, Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair has not answered roll call. So with that, Honorable Speaker, you have 11 delegates that have answered roll call and 13 who did not answer roll call. Good morning, Delegate Freeland here, checking in. Thank you. Honorable Mark Freeland has answered roll call. So with that, honorable speaker, you have 12 delegates who have answered roll call and 12 who did not answer roll call. Thank you very much, colleagues. 12 uh, members have answered roll call this morning. Thank you, colleagues, for being here with us again. With that, uh, if I could go to the floor uh, in uh, Honorable Freeland, uh, do you mind doing an invocation for us this morning, Honorable Freeland? Speaker, good morning. Sorry, um, I have a case of the mute uh, star sixes this morning. I was on mute. I apologize. I'll be, I'll be glad to. Uh, um, I'm honored to give the invocation this morning, Speaker. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Adosh um, members of the Navikia Tech Committee, uh, staff. Good morning, um, everyone else. The president, the vice president, chief justice, all of our justices, all of our law enforcement. 
first responders, everyone out there listening in this morning. Let's go ahead and and just give um, a little reflection and a little time to uh, give thanks as you know we are embraced as we embrace this beautiful morning and it's such a beautiful day and we have blue skies and the wind's not blowing. Uh, we're thankful as we are given another opportunity. Our most heavenly Father, our gracious God, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Savior, most merciful one, we thank you for bringing us together once more at this most important time, Father. We ask you for your continual blessing upon each and every one of us as we conduct the will and the business on behalf of our people, Father. We ask you to give us the courage, the strength, the knowledge each and every day to continue to fight on this on this, on this battle front on, against COVID-19, Father. We know we, we have the protection of you and, and your all of the angels that that we have around us, Father. We ask you to bless all of our Navajo people right now, those who are feeling ill, those who are feeling lonely, those who are under some sort of despair, Father, whether it be mental or physical anguish. Give them hope and give them opportunity. Give them a smile today, Father. Give them, give them that strength to carry on that hope as well for all the families as well bless them those who are who lost a loved one to COVID father give them the peace give them the opportunity and give them the opportunity to heal at this time father we ask you to bless each and every one of them we ask you to bless all of our protect all of our veterans all of our law enforcement all of those who are on the front lines as well in the hospital setting protect them as well we ask you to bless and protect all of our elders, those who are maybe feeling lonely as, as well, Father. Give them hope. All of our children at school, give them give them the continual protection as they are our leaders of tomorrow. We ask you to bless and protect all of our leadership at this time. Our President Jonathan Nez, our Vice President Myron Leiser, our Chief Justice Joanne Jane, Associate Justice of the Navajo Nation Supreme Court, and all of our justices throughout the districts of the Navajo Nation Court. We ask you to bless and protect all of our leadership as well, all of my colleagues of the 24th Navajo Nation Council, their LDAs, all of our chapter officials, local leadership, chapter officials and administrative teams right now, those who are out there serving and, and helping our people at the local level, Father. We are so thankful for their, for their help as well during this time. Most importantly, Father, we continue to give you the glory and the praise each and every day as we carry on our business and on this fight. We know that we can turn to you and ask you for forgiveness, forgiveness of trespasses or forgiveness of our sins, as we know we are imperfect. We know we continue to we can continue to come back to you and ask you for that continual forgiveness, Father. For those things we continue to pray each and every day through your son Jesus Christ, who will bless through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Freeland. Thank you very much for uh, that wonderful invocation this morning. Thank you uh, to my colleagues and members of the Navajo Committee uh, for uh, being with us again, and everyone that you recognize in your prayer, uh, Honorable Freeland. Yeah. Uh, with that, colleagues, uh, again, we are continuing on, on our work sessions this morning. Uh, but before we do that, uh, at this time on our agenda, uh, we have uh, recognizing guests and visiting officials uh, this morning. Colleagues, is there any recognitions? Speaker. Honorable Freeland. Uh, speaker, thank you. I wanted to give a shout out to my eight chapters uh, this morning. Uh, um, guy, White Rock, Herpano, um, Naiza, the Sensei Crown Point, not just you, uh, um, good morning to our, our chapter officials across the eight chapters, as well as the 102 other chapters. Uh, good morning, um, as well as the, all the administrative teams that are there at the chapters. Um, I did spend the last few days out there with my chapters, so I'm um, looking forward to uh, working with them on the ARP stuff. But I just wanted to acknowledge the, the local officials at the local level, as well as the administrative teams. Uh, speaker of my, my eight regional chapters. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Freeland. That colleagues, any other recognitions this, at this time?
If there are none, let's just go over, jump right into it again today. Uh, as uh, Honorable Eugene So stated, uh, we're burning daylight. So let's go ahead and move on down to item number three, our work session topic. Again, today we are continuing to dis discuss the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. And even though uh, we have not uh, actually uh, heard the two uh, big initiatives from the plan, uh, one is how much the nation's gonna be receiving uh, and then the second, uh, the parameters, we do know at least a, uh, a bit to give us a specifics on how uh, the Navajo Nation uh, can really try to identify and working together with our economic opportunities. And not only internally with the Navajo Nation, uh, three branches of government, but also uh, working together with our enterprises and that's who we'll be discussing with those opportunities here today. I know in reaching out to our enterprises, if you look on the agenda, colleagues, uh, we do have uh, Navajo uh, Agricultural Product Industry, or known as NAPI, who will be do, uh, presenting this morning. Navajo Arts and Crafts Enterprises, or known as NACE. Navajo Nation Hospitality Enterprise, and then Navajo Nation Oil and Gas Company. Uh, KTN Radio Station is on there, but uh, unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately, they've already teamed up with uh, uh, Communications Department. And uh, as uh, last time go around, they have their uh, presentation that was already presented to us uh, and will continue to be presented uh, to us uh, with uh, broadband initiatives and working in that. So. Uh, uh, we'll go ahead and hear from them again at that time. We do have a uh, Navajo Nation Shopping Center and then uh, Navajo Times, um, then Navajo Engineering and Construction Authority in NECA, then Navajo Nation Gaming Enterprise, Navajo Tribal Utility Authority um, is uh, set to uh, present, but I think they already did present on that on their behalf. So, uh, and then uh, Navajo Housing Authority will be presenting uh, next week. So we'll take uh, those two individuals off. Actually, NHA is presenting with uh, BDC and the Veterans Administration next Wednesday on the capital, uh, actually on the, the housing development. Uh, and then uh, not Ani Development Corporation. And then we did hear from the Nate Development Corporation already as well. Uh, so it looks like colleagues, we have about Nine, nine enterprises that are on the agenda for today and tomorrow. Uh, colleagues, again, uh, just uh, reaching out to every single one of these enterprises. Uh, some of the enterprises ha have not responded, but maybe they'll be on the line here today. Uh, and then we can go ahead and uh, hear from them directly. But we do have an opportunity to, one, hear from Navajo Nation, uh, My colleagues, we just wanted, we heard the, we're hearing some feedback and we just want to make sure that everybody that was on mute within the chambers is here. Uh, so uh, again, uh, we did want to make sure that the, hosp uh, the opportunity was given to our enterprises if there was any recommendation on their portion that they were looking at. So uh, in helping assist or helping to understand uh, the process and seeing if there was any uh, recommendations from their side uh, on the American Rescue Plan Act, or if they're looking at utilizing some dollars to help refuse uh, to help the Navajo Nation's economy too as well. So again, thank you very much to the enterprises for being here with us. It looked good to have a good discussion. I know that uh, a lot of uh, my colleagues will be uh, in and out today, but uh, we do have a majority of them that are listening in. So again, I thank everyone for listening in. Uh, for the record, we have Honorable Edison Winika here in the chambers with us too as well. So without further ado, uh, as going down in the uh, roll call of the enterprises, uh, Navajo Agriculture Products Industry, known as NAPI, are you on the line this morning?
I know that um, They need to do star six before they get on. Star six, yes. It seems that we did get a, a, a report from NAPI ahead of time and colleagues and that actually a report and presentation uh, from the CEO, Mr. Zeller. Mr. Zeller, are you on the line? And uh, colleagues, that, that was sent out uh, at 1024 a.m. this by Mr. Rico. Mrs. Zeller, if you could uh, press star six. Speaker Damon, this is Dave Zeller. Hey, Mrs. Zeller, good to hear your voice. I get to play the game of star six, apparently, so um, yep. I'm sorry about that. Welcome to the club. <clears throat> Okay, I appreciate the uh, the honor being given us, um, and I hope that you can please accept this uh, humble report from your farmers um, to our esteemed colleagues in council. We have at NAPI went through, and basically after some thinking, broke a report into about four different pieces, uh, hopefully of which you received them last evening uh, via PowerPoint. Uh, one was proposed projects for public benefit. One was our capital infrastructure project um, budget. One was the NIP project budget. And then uh, one would be the proposed water projects that we're looking at as well. Um, we were a bit uncertain about how to approach this and that we have the difficulty of, of course, A, not knowing what the parameters of this rescue uh, program is going to be like or relief program would be like. And then second, always the concern about the NIP, whether if that, since that's supposed to be a federally funded um, enterprise, whether that is to be considered in these or not. So I do have that in the presentation, um, but again, we were not certain as to what would be received, what would not be, and again, not knowing the parameters for uh, distribution of funds, uh, we have just kind of ventured out on a limb, so to speak but appreciate the time to talk to you. Uh, I would welcome any questions at any time. Um, I will try to make this as quick and brief as possible um, because I know you have a lot of business to be concerned with at uh, each time uh, with each enterprise. Um, I don't know that I will particularly go in the order of the slideshow, but um, I, I will try to address your, your thoughts. Um, the first one, the proposed projects for public benefit. Um, these are Zeller. areas that, eh, yes, sir. Ms. Zeller, this is Speaker Damon. Um, are you going to be sharing your slideshow on your screen? Um, it, it was uh, emailed yesterday afternoon to Ms. Yazi and uh, was it Rico. Was it not redistributed on no, your no, end? No, no, we, we, we have that, but I was just wondering if you were going to share it on the screen through the through oh. your Zoom account. No, I'm just I'm just via uh, telephonically right now. Okay. Well, I'll, uh, staff here will uh, share their screen then. So okay. You're good to go. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, the first item were the proposed projects for public benefit which the NAPI board and staff have discussed in terms of our community. 
these are things that we think should be addressed, and we have been looking at addressing them. We do not, in many instances, have a cost yet um, provided. Uh, some of that because of regulatory requiring three bids if we know it's going to be more than uh, $10,000, and also the interaction we have with BIA. Um, but we have discussed, number one, repair and reclassifying the road known as County Road 7010 and Navajo 3003. Uh, that's a 24 and a half mile major road that serves mining, agriculture, and tourism. It's in uh, significant need of repair. We have talked about uh, in points two and point seven about water delivery to the nappy housing areas. We refer to it the tribal housing area uh, here near our industrial park. And that would be water line uh, improvements and infrastructure, both potable and non-potable. Again, we go back to another highway, number 371 and 302, uh, looking at traffic study and engineering redesign. Uh, another point in our block three area on the NIP would be a cell phone tower uh, installation to improve uh, communication efforts, particularly for the tribal housing area. And in regard to that, also um, the child care situation that goes there. Many people have children there. The COVID situation created problems with them not being able to uh, have people to look at them or when school was out, um, not being able to take care of their children when they needed to work. And we have looked at trying to assist in the expansion and improvement of the child care situations here. Uh, we have also talked about fencing repairs on uh, N371, because many people go down that highway much, much faster than the speed limit. And then also uh, we have some uh, in internal situation with a potato uh, storage and at some points in time, we have had concerns from tribal members about the smell, and we're looking at trying to see about getting that relocated to where they would not be affected by that as well. Um, also looking at installing laterals at the OHO facility in, on behalf of ag supply chain resiliency. So those are some public projects that we're looking at. There are no dollar figures attached to them at this point, um, again, because of some of the concerns and restrictions I mentioned earlier. On page, what I would call the second page, the NAPI Capital Infrastructure Projects. This is basically pulled from our operating budget and our capital budget. Uh, with the onset of COVID last year, we delayed all capital projects for at least one year in order that we could continue to operate in a profitable manner and return a dividend to Navajo Nation. Um, as you may recall, last spring, we sent approximately one half of our workforce home to help maintain social distancing, and yet we maintained our uh, payroll, everyone was paid in full, there were no layoffs, um, and so in able to do that, we, we pursued the no capital infrastructure projects. Last year, they were all postponed. So you can see a number of them, approximately 30-ish, that are listed on the next um, board. Uh, to the right is the cost in millions. And then if you see where it says under evaluation, those are areas that have been put out for bid and we're collecting bids on those and do not have those back yet to share. Um, we start out uh, with our bean plant renovation, 
As you know, yellow beans and pinto beans are very popular on the Navajo Nation and have been provided to the people for a number of years. Unfortunately, that plant has some age and it needs to be renovated and increased capacity. Um, step number two, item number two, center pivot replacement in region one, block one. I might point out to you that last year, Nappy reached 50 years of age. And as an example, we have replaced uh, or are replacing right now in the what's called the South Chaco area. We're replacing a lateral line that broke, and that pipeline was put in October of 1976. So we got our 30 plus years out of it, but right now it is interfering with our alfalfa crop. So that should say something about the aging infrastructure that we're working with here at NAPI. Um, Number three, we talk about more water wells and storage for livestock and um, wildlife. There's a figure there. Our flour mill and grain elevator improvements and expanded storage for it. Uh, our organics like our potatoes and other crops, the warehouse and storage facility are listed there. Uh, seed cleaning and storage plant that's being looked at. Additional grain storage in region one for wheat. Uh, the idea there that we will not have to be transporting wheat from region one over to region two storage, but it could stay there with a shorter haul and be available out of region one. 509 new barns, those are hay barns to protect the alfalfa. Uh, that's used not only by tribal members, but also goes to like the Colorado Ranch as well. Uh, we need to retrofit a granary dryer. Uh, the potato storages is mentioned in items 11 and 12 for rehabbing those. We are also wanting in that same area to rehab what was our original fresh pack building. Uh, we plan to use that building to use in our packaging of our native foods, the Navajo tea, the chilies, the sumac, uh, the uh, other projects or other plants that we're uh, providing now, use that for storage. We're in the process of trying to get an online store built and that also would play into effect of that would be again where we would package those out before shipping. Also, a replacement of the scale and improving our seed yard um, before we revamp that again. Uh, that's also over there in Region 1. In Region 2, we need to increase our electrical capacity at the complex there. That's being looked at. We have grain facility and storage that needs to be renovated. Uh, the bean plant, we talked about the renovation and increasing production capacity, but we also need to uh, upgrade a retail packaging machine uh, that's being bid out. Uh, hay barn renovation also in Region 2 for storage. Um, storage for, again, the organics are listed in items 21, 22. As you know, may know, Wilbur Ellis has a facility here on the farm, or they lease a facility that is in dire need of repair. We're also in the part of developing an organic compost facility. Our pellet mill needs to be revised um, with a new electrical system there. We also need to upgrade the sewer system here on the original headquarters office. Um, unfortunately, that's caused some discomfort for some people. Uh, we need to also work on the fire suppression system here as well. With the custom grazing that has been required of us by some of our board members, there's a need for improved fencing. Uh, which we'll have to look into. 
And then from a communication standpoint, the two-way radio system, given the size of the NIP, you know, almost 30 miles square, it's uh, a real problem we have in terms of communication. Part of that is the IT system. Um, we need to improve our fiber um, communications there and our two-way radio systems. Uh, we also have been collecting bids to construct a new greenhouse. Uh, the greenhouse would be intended to not only grow our own seedlings for potatoes, chilies, watermelon, etc., but we look to expand it by growing in the off season. During the winter months, we would look at growing like tomatoes, more chilies, uh, microgreens or lettuces that we could make available through the Region 2 uh, store during the middle of the winter. Uh, the object there is so that people could continue to have fresh fruit and vegetables uh, during the cold winter months. With regard to the NIP, there's um, on the next page, there are some items there. Again, acoustic fiber optic system for trying to predict where the next failure will be on this aging infrastructure. Uh, building a 200 acre foot reservoir for additional water storage in case of line breaks, uh, the fiber optic communication system, uh, a sand trap concrete lining for near the Gallegos plant, and then on highway N36, uh, trying to do some seepage drainage modifications there to reduce any runoff that goes into the Upper Fruitland chapter. Uh, we have tried to maintain our relationships with the local chapters, and that's an area that we're working at very hard at. The next slide uh, is specifically built around water projects. We are looking at assembling or adding additional upright water towers to help us uh, store water for the off season, the winter months, because during um, about mid-October through middle of February, no water comes down that canal from the lake. That is shut off so that repair work can be done to that major canal of I think about 40 miles, and then also to the local um, structures here uh, on the NIP itself and the pivots. We are looking at drilling additional water wells in, for instance, blocks 9, 10, and 11, um, so that should that land be um, brought back into, be allowed to be brought back into use, we can have it available for livestock if we do not expand the planned irrigation system that's already been designed for it. Um, and those things are not cheap, of course. They're like thirty to 50000 for a 100-foot well, according to the estimates we've been given. Um, we looked at maybe as many as 15 of those wells going in. We also look at those wells being used in some of the areas, rather than tiling fields, which just diverts the water, by putting a well on the outskirts of the pivot in the non-utilized area, being able to pull water up from underneath that. A, making it available for livestock. We can move that water around to other places instead of it just running away or creating a mini aquifer underneath those fields and resulting in seepage or pondage. And then last but not least, least, and I have skipped through these quickly so we can go back and discuss any of them in depth, we have a mock design for building a water bottling plant utilizing water from Navajo Lake 
um, constructing this on the NIP. And the rough order of magnitude in that actually has been anywhere from 62 million to 91 million to construct said water bottling plant. Um, that plant, uh, it's in the initial phases. We don't have any of the full schematics, but that plant, if constructed, could redistribute 123 million gallons of water to the Navajo Nation. Uh, that would be done, that's approximately only 377 acre feet of water from the lake, so that won't create a problem. And the concept there is to bring that water in, filter it, clean it, and then it could be made available in several manners, one of which is a tanker loadout, where tanker trucks could then haul that water to any part of the Navajo Nation to refill reservoirs for communities, or internally also would be water bottling lines of like 16 ounce plastic bottles or one gallon or five gallon water jugs, which those could also then be utilized on the nation um, in communities, at the stores, uh, travel centers, casinos, or sold off the nation as well. Um, so those are things that we have looked into at uh, NAPI. Again, that's kind of a, I know that's really quickly that I went through that list, but I wanted to make time available for specific questions or discussions about any of these projects. Um, is that satisfactory to you, Speaker Damon? Thank you, Mrs. Zeller. Uh, well, I think it's uh, that question would go back to you. Are you complete with your presentation? I, I think at this point, yes. Um, I wished I had a few more numbers available than I have, but uh, that's what we have with the time that was given to us and not knowing what our, uh, you know, parameters would be with regard to this program. Okay. Well, again, uh, uh, in this, this is kind of a, uh, this isn't a final document, a final presentation. And uh, with that, the recommendation that you have moving forward, uh, we can continue to accept that and make sure that uh, that's something that can be uh, redefined and realigned if there is going to be an allocation or yes, if there's a recommendation for moving forward with uh, an amount of funding that could be presented to a NAPI from the America Rescue Plan Act dollars or the capital that's coming in. Thank so you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Zeller. One, for one, uh, one is uh, thank you for accepting the invitation. And, Thank you for presenting to the NAPI committee this morning. So with that colleagues on uh, NAPI, is there any comments or questions at this time? If there are none, uh, Mrs. Zeller, oh, thank, you very, thank you very much. Uh, speaker, speaker Callen. Uh, hold on, Mrs. Zeller. Honorable Callum Begay? The Vice Chair Smith, I don't know. I'm not sure if my text or the text that I sent in is not being received because a lot of time I don't want to disrupt the uh, conversation. So I text in to say that I want to make a comment. But, um, if I could not be done, it's not as naggy. Um, Mr. Zeller and then the NAPI administration and staff. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, speaker, 24th Council, and everyone. Um, I wish that we could be able to hear exactly how NAPI is seeking additional funding and any other strat strategic plans that they have and expanding out their service out into the Navajo Nation. 
and I believe I've been asking them, Nappy, about their service to be uh, the need, and maybe this is a good opportunity for Nappy to seek funding so that they'll be working directly with the chapters. As you know, that the Navajo Nation is struggling, and uh, meaning that we uh, there's a lot of uh, farming uh, plots across the Navajo Nation with water development, improvement, and so on. And I've been asking Nappy and, and helping some of the chapters that I represent uh, to help develop uh, their how they're uh, operating at a smaller scale to help the chapters to initiate any of the uh, their activity uh, at the local level. Uh, so that's the one area. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I've, I've I've put this in writing. I've uh, requested through the time in the last term that I was a uh, uh, NIP subcommittee, uh, and then also been communicating directly with with Mr. Zeller and then other staffing about uh, direct connection and helping local chapters. So. And I know there's a great need, I believe it was in several millions, that certain part of the development that needs to be uh, to be finalized. Uh, Adadag at Kishinas mill across the Navajo Nation. Because there are an enterprise, because throughout this discussion, opera funding, Hatnido no was then Hatnigo go by local Hatnota. Ado the enterprise, but that she knows, eh? And hit that nota, yada. So I believe that I've been asking that, and I've been uh, making that request that our own Navajo enterprise is able to reach out to all local chapters to help them to develop a lot of these uh, operations that happened at NAPI. Speaker. So maybe uh, I did ask a follow up on one of the enterprises. So maybe this is another enterprise that I would request for a follow up to be made to the council. Uh, otherwise, uh, I mean, uh, sometimes I always say that on behalf of the community and the people that I represent to the council, but yet there's not much is going to be happening. What good is it for me to support uh, an enterprise that's not re reaching out to me or reaching out to my chapter and not making any recommendation or uh, uh, to the uh, chapter that I represent for my support? I don't know. Uh, if there's a better way or another way that Nappy could make a, a, a presentation again. I think that, that that's the main reason and that's the main purpose of these uh, work sessions. leadership and I believe that every presenter should be in this 
uh, position to say that this is how we can help our Navajo people with these potential funding, not just only the funding that's going to be received by the Navajo Nation, but other area. I know there's a big chunk of funding that, uh, that the federal government had, had appropriated for farmers, ranchers. Oh, Aj, how is NAPI reaching out to get funding from other source? What plans do they have? Abdik at the press release is a dada. Yeah, I mean, Kodon has in the Hagnet. Put Pun Liniki, Hitch Hundo, Neski Water, right? Shato, Hitch Hinda, who is not a Badahanet. A Coco, if there's potentially that the Navajo Nation will be getting into the right of getting additional water, how is it are we preparing to get these lands to be uh, irrigated or or to have certain type of uh, planning available to be done by our Navajo people. A quacky key speaker. I don't know if I'm uh, I'm not in the right uh, way of uh, uh, making this comment, but I believe that the reason the reason for this work session is that how do we uh, uh, get input from our enterprises to help uh, strategize in de- making development on the Navajo Nation. Oko <laughs> Maybe uh, again by tomorrow. I don't know if that's too too soon. If not, I don't know if there's going to be additional uh, work session that can be uh, rescheduled for a lot of these uh, uh, requesting for uh, 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 another presentation by the enterprises. So, speaker. Thank you, Honorable Kiyom and uh, that's the reason why we're having these work sessions and these are preliminary work sessions and to take in input and those recommendations from each one of the enterprises. So, uh, and if uh, there's a response on that, uh, I look to Mr. Zeller on that. So, Mr. Zeller, uh, before I go back to you though, let me go to, uh, I do have, I have uh, Vice Chair Smith, and then Honorable Yellow here. Vice Chair Smith. Uh, good morning, Speaker and Navajo Nation uh, Navigate Committee members. Good morning, and the staff and presenters of the enterprise. Good morning. Those 15. Yeah, they been. My question is um, there's a feedlot there. And is that feedlot going to be considered to be um, expanded? Reason why I'm saying that is that um, we do have Navajo uh, livestock owners that take their animals up there and keep them for a time period and fatten them up and and then they're marketed. Um, The reason why I say that too is uh, down here in Hadadzil, we have the uh, Padres Mesa, also known as the 14R, which produces Navajo beef. And since the pandemic, it's been an uh, impact on our industry down here. But uh, as soon as we get back to normalcy, things should change. And I know that there's a feedlot up there. I'm just wondering if that's going to be a uh, part of the uh, nappy way of uh, helping the economy and uh, producing uh, livestock or not, maybe a novel, novel beef name that is already taken. But uh, in aspects of uh, having our own uh, bread basket up there, corn, squash, pumpkins, uh, the feedlot, and water being used up there. And also I heard too that the uh, 
you know, be bottling water up there. So um, that's one question I have that's going to be uh, thought about in, for livestock to be uh, utilizing that uh, feedlot. The other one, too, is uh, I sit on the uh, subcommittee with uh, four other uh, members of the Navajo Nation Council under Navajo Indian Irrigation Project. And I know that there's uh, a dire need to upkeep those irrigation canals. Is that also the proposal within your uh, request from the federal government to help subsidize funds for the upkeep of water? Because I heard that it's like a, a leaky faucet. And a leaky faucet, you're just wasting water. But if you don't have a leaky faucet, then you're not wasting the water. That's one thing that uh, we as uh, the committee would like to assist in that. And I know the committee all the morning did to Matthew about putting in a wish list on behalf of their needs for the operation. And uh, it is basically something that uh, we can uh, look at and entertain regarding the needs for NAPI. So those are the three things that I've been uh, considering and, and, and thinking about uh, for the uh, benefit of uh, Navajo Nation. And lastly, there is hay sales. And I think those hay sales are, are, are beneficial. However, the chapters are requesting, could they be shipping it down to the chapters? Could they be uh, marketing them at a local area where the chapter folks can purchase hay? Um, because we're always seeing folks at the border towns buying hay. Why not uh, Nappy uh, start their enterprise by um, branching out and getting those uh, semi trucks out there on a maybe weekly basis and people will buy hay. They, they need hay. They need hay for their livestock and other grains uh, feed for uh, their sheep. Um, you name it, there's uh, livestock owners that would like to use that because it's not raining. It's really dry out here. That's uh, the one thing that I, I wanted to mention on that. If we could get maybe more equipment, more trucks to um, ship that and to harvest hay and to make uh, hay in abundance and in return, when you have livestock and you take care of livestock, Livestock takes care of you the same way with farming. So just wanted to say that uh, speaker and uh, Nabikia committee members and those that are listening. And I'm glad that NAPI is still thriving and still a enterprise. And I'd like to see NAPI flourish like a, like a, a beautiful tree and having all kinds of fruit on there so that the, our folks can, our Navajo people can, utilize that from the flour, from the corn, from the hay, from the uh, livestock uh, feed yard and water. And it, 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 it's, it's something that's uh, a valuable investment that we made. So thank you, Speaker. Appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Honorable Vice Chair Smith. Right, let me go on down to uh, Honorable Yellow Hair, and then I'll go back to Mr. Zeller. Honorable Yellow Hair, where's yours? Yeah, yeah, oh. been a good morning, Speaker. I was on the Fort Navajo Nation Council. I don't touch the net. I got it. I'm not trying. Vicky, she has checked me out here. This is the team about it. I'm very, very happy that they we we talk about Navajo Nation enterprise. Number one is the Navajo agriculture product industry. So Nappy, I'm proud of this farm. We got the biggest farm and like others outside our reservation. And he grew a lot of product on the not for the Navajo Nation. But my biggest my biggest concern is we have to make revenue and money at this area uh, so so uh Nappy can be continued with that enterprise. But I have some experience, so many experience I have. There's a, a problem I see we all see everybody has being this a problem with nappy. They uh, up by hay, alfalfa hay, 
and also a uh, mixed grass hay. The alfalfa hay is very, very heavy. And, but the problem is there's just too much sand in there. I kill about four to five horses within 25 years. I keep go there and I want to just see this hay. It's not going to happen this time, but it happens again. And there's just too much hay. And I understand that whoever does the contract for nappy, I understand they do cut these alfalfa at night time. They close, they uh, cut too close to the ground and there's just too much sand. Some way, somehow, this has to be improved. Uh, nappy. You got to do a good job. And everybody knows that they, uh, you, you have too much sand in the alfalfa hay. That's, that's my big concern. We need to do a better job. And someone must evaluate your hay or do it yourself. Look at it. I don't know if you buy hay from there, you could see it too. That's the biggest problem we have in Navajo Nation. Everybody say nappy had too much sand in there. Anyway, that's my, uh, my concern. And, um, I would like to see bring more money that really helps the enterprise. And I think we do that. You guys do that too. So I look forward again on to have, have a better hit in 2020, 2022, uh, next year or just coming fall too. I look forward. And then, but your mixed grass is okay. Uh, that's a little kind of clean. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put on the speaker. I don't know if you're a kid. We like to have uh, the first priority that we need to take our cattle to your, to your field up there during fall time. I don't know. We like to have a better price on the heads on fall time so we can now we can afford it to leave the last up at the uh, next during fall time to winter up to spring time. Thank you for the floor. I'm so bad on me now. Thank you, speaker. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, 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 suggestion and recommendation on the other. That, let me go back to Mrs. Ziller and then we can come back for. Again, uh, thank you, Mrs. Zeller, for being here. Uh, the floor is yours if there's a response. Uh, thank you, Speaker Damon. Um, if it's okay, I'll go in reverse order. With regard to Mr. Yellowhair um, and the concerns about the sand within the hay, that is something that we address all the time, and it's, it's a simple problem, but there is not a simple solution. The sand in your alfalfa hay is caused by the prairie dog problem that we have up here on the mesa. And the reason that the alfalfa seems to be heavier and have more of a problem than the grass hay is because the prairie dogs prefer the alfalfa and the corn products. So they tend to try to infest those fields the worst. And we actually have internally within our staff, a crew of 16 that are devoted solely to doing nothing more than combating the, the rodents. Unfortunately, we have government regulations about what products can be used and when they can be used and the manner in which they're used. Um, so we're limited by the federal law. I, I can't... <clears throat> You know, I don't really blame the prairie dogs. We've set up a grocery buffet for them up here on the Mesa. Why would they want to leave? And we're doing our best to eradicate the problem, but um, there isn't a simple solution based on the current laws and regulations that we deal with. Um, but that's, that's a staff that's employed year round, doing nothing more than trying to put various products in those burrows and diminish that population. Anyone who has driven the roads that cross the NIP has even noticed holes within the asphalt where the prairie dogs have even burrowed up through the asphalt. We have water lines and electric lines that will have a short, a short on them. They'll stop. 
will find it, and it's because they've chewed up even the conduit and the cabling that we deal with. So they're a terrible problem, a very terrible problem, and we're trying to deal with them as best we can. Um, but that is what's creating the sand problem that you specifically note in your alfalfa hay. Um, with regard to Vice Chair Smith, who I have the honor to work with as he sits on the NIP subcommittee, um, yes, the feed yard is here. We do have plans to work on doing some renovation and some cleaning of the plan. Uh, we also mentioned about the water source there. The feed yard is present. There are no cattle in it right now. Uh, it had been leased out to a party, and quite simply, that party said that they were tired of losing $200 a head feeding cattle in a feed yard right now. Um, and at this point, Nappy does not have a cow herd or cattle there ourselves uh, for that various reason. Uh, under the advisement and consultation of Delane Adsity, who sits on the NAPI board, we're working really hard to try to develop a viable plan for the feed yard, allowing um, individuals to use it, um, as well as people who want to custom graze cattle here at NAPI, since we do have uh, some areas that would normally have been sitting in fallow or resting. We're trying to renovate those pastures. Um, you know, we need to do that also to try to keep land erosion from happening. Um, so we're in the process of doing that. We're working on that. We actually even have consultants coming in from Mexico um, from a similar desert area to look at it and see if we can get some suggestions there. Um, you mentioned Padres Mesa. We have dealt with Padres Mesa in the past. They have grazed cattle at Nappy. They did not last year with the COVID experience. They informed us they weren't able to essentially be traveling out and about um, and overseeing their cattle. But yes, Padres Mesa has been involved here. Uh, we've done some backgrounding for them. We did not finish cattle in the feed yard for them because they sent those to the yards they utilize in Nebraska for the, um, I'm trying, oh, Labatt program. That's who it is. It's Labatt uh, is actually who they run their cattle through. Um, but yes, the feed yard is just not being utilized right now just basically because of the economics um, that are in there. Uh, as, ter you know, as you also know, in sitting in those NIP subcommittee meetings, when they've been held, we have very aggressively put forth what we wanted to do and how to go about it. Um, as you know, there's been some holdups, um, in the way that that was to be pursued based on the NIP subcommittee. Um, but, you know, we do. We envision and do desire to build out blocks, the rest of 9, 10, and 11. But, again, that's the matter of getting that funding from the federal government in addition to getting the operations and maintenance funding back at a reasonable level um, so that we can actually do preventive maintenance on the canal system and the pipes rather than just repairs. Um, I hope that ex uh, helped you there. As far as hay sales, um, we do offer, we reach out to chapters all the time. Um, we also ship hay into the, have hay shipped into the Colorado Ranch as an example. Again, I think the big difficulty we run into is the fact that um, everything is sold FOB at Nappy. So then it requires trucking to move that hay from Nappy to the chapters. And that runs into a problem in that that has to be done by outside sources. And, um, you know, that that's always a concern. But, uh, 
we do look at expanding the livestock aspect here at Nappy, uh, which includes, again, bringing the feed yard back online when it's uh, cost effective and efficient. We are looking at and do have plans in the future for our own personal Wagyu cattle herd here to provide beef for the Navajo Nation, uh, reintroducing bison here also for behalf of the Navajo Nation, as well as other species like uh, boer goats, Texel sheep, um, Berkshire pigs, you know, very, very high-end protein sources that the Navajo people should be able to enjoy raised right here on their farm. Um, but again, you know, we're just getting started on things uh, some of these programs, uh, like I mentioned, the custom grazing, these things take a little bit of time and some refinement. These have not been the best of times from an economic standpoint between the COVID and the drought. Um, you know, so all things in due time. Uh, I hope that makes you feel somewhat better about what's happening at Nappy, but uh, we, again, have the challenge from our board is to be profitable, to be able to return a dividend to the Navajo Nation each year, in addition to providing product for natives and also jobs for natives. And so, you know, we work at that as hard as we can. Um, I guess everybody has different ideas about what's sufficient, but we are working at that. Uh, with regard to Honorable Key Allen Begay and his concerns about help to other chapters. Um, obviously, we're trying to, when I mentioned that first page of projects, the public benefits, most of those are dealt, are dealing with our neighboring chapters, Herfano, um, Nanadze, San Juan, Upper Fruitland, Burnham. Um, the neighbors that are closest that we can most easily help first. Um, we do have, uh, we do make efforts uh, to stay in touch. And yes, we are supposed to be uh, having another meeting with many farms and Loop, far and Loop um, regarding their plans or their desires to help there. And we are trying to be accommodating in that area as well, but one must always keep things in order in your own house first and try to keep that done while we're reaching out to do the others. Um, I don't know that I can really offer up anything else at this point to you. Obviously, we're always willing to meet and discuss things and see what we can do within the financial constraints that we have to deal with. Um, and trying to provide assistance to the other chapters uh, outside of the adjoining chapters that we have here. We do have uh, lots of programs here. We're packaging organic seed potatoes. This being made available to you know other nations or other than other chapters within the nation right now. We're working on that. Um, you know the hay sales as we mentioned there. The big problem there is trucking um, and getting that arranged. And then, yes, we have had discussions about possibly setting up satellites, um, but that creates another set of problems there. So, again, we're trying to get through the hard times that COVID and the drought have caused, um, do our job right, and then just continually try to grow and expand as we best can. Um, but again, that's all dependent on what happens with the NIP. If we get to build it out or not, you know, is, is it possible for us to provide more products and services? If we build out the NIP, absolutely. Are we now stymied and with where we're at partway through nine, if that's it, then we probably have reached, you know, a ceiling and we just have to just work it continually becoming more efficient. So those are the concerns that we have to deal with um, 
is the regard is with regard to building out the NIP, the support of that, and the increased infrastructure cost for or increased infrastructure repair and maintenance cost for for that as well. I I hope that satisfies you. Obviously, anybody that wants to call in the NAPI, we're willing to devote time to that and uh, see what resources we can reallocate. But um, I'm, I'm hoping that, that you've received sufficient answers at this point in time. Thank you, delegates. Thank you, uh, Mr. Zeller, for that uh, response. That let me go back to the board. I do have Madam Chair Amber Crotty and Honorable Brown in the queue at this time. So, Madam Chair, uh, good morning. The floor is yours at the sign. Uh, hi, good morning, yet a speaker, colleagues, um, individuals on the line, and I appreciate the report and PowerPoint presentation from our agriculture enterprise. Um, in looking at your uh, presentation, I think what is also important, um, we sat on a San Juan County uh, economic development um, intense uh, work session two weeks ago. And so NAPI continues to be uh, the number one employer of San Juan County. And um, I think in terms of that impact, I want to thank NAPI, its board, um, its workers, and um, others who continue to support um, the vision of what, what NAPI um, can do. And now, as we're hearing from our colleagues, how we can support uh, rolling out uh, that benefit to, um, to, to the rest of Navajo Nation. Uh, in hearing more about uh, the NIP and um, sitting in one of the discussions with the subcommittee, I, I understand that this is um, can also be a very um, sensitive issue. And so I think, um, Speaker, if you could just help delegates, if we can collectively understand where we're at when it comes to the NIP. Um, I, I have not been on a recent meeting, but has there been uh, additional guidance from our DOJ or our legislative council um, regarding how uh, we're going to move forward when it comes to NIP. Uh, I, I just need to make sure that that I have all of that information as we move forward with um, understanding the needs to to finish that line, but also uh, what is the federal responsibility? And I think that needs to be clear, especially as we move forward for some of these infrastructure. Um, federal dollars that are um, anticipated to come down the pipeline, and also um, the role that NIP, or uh, I'm sorry, the role that NAPI, the Agriculture uh, in Product Industries, has worked with co our congressional leadership. Uh, is there uh, proposals submitted to our senators to also uh, then uh, fully fund uh, NIP through these other opportunities that are coming down the federal pipeline? Uh, my second area was when we talk about the economic engine of San Juan County um, and NAPI playing a pivotal role uh, in these discussions, um, the second priority for this work group that, um, that cuts across all of San Juan County, whether it's Navajo Nation leadership, um, RBDO, uh, City of Farmington, uh, and, and colleges, whatnot, uh, this kind of inclusive group of individuals, is um, agriculture products um, a pathway for our youth to get involved in agriculture? And so I'd like to see, and, and I understand in reading this list that the immediate needs, the immediate community needs are on the list, but I would ask NAPI to expand that vision to include either a partnership with uh, the NIC College, which they just received funding, from the state of New Mexico to start building an agriculture, um, their agriculture building and revitalizing their fields there in the Shiprock area. And then how we can build up um, other areas uh, across um, and, and be a true partner when it comes to building up other areas, when it comes to the river communities. Um, because in talking with your staff who have the experience 
in managing commercial fields, our producers on the ground are also going to have to uh, receive support so that they know when they're asking for equipment, when they're upgrading their irrigation line, that we understand all of the dynamics and all of the challenges um, to support uh, this robust agriculture um, and vision that we have for Navajo. Uh, our district, uh, District 12, um, is working with Army Corps of Engineers uh, for on a watershed study. And so what we're looking at is how do we increase capacity for dry land farming? So NAPI at this point is, is about, you know, irrigation, um, but where could we find um, some common areas where we could support farmers who are dry land farming um, and having conversations with our Department of Agriculture when it comes to um, that drought insurance, those plans that are being put forth so that we could have pilot projects that are um, productive and pilot projects um, that could help the communities. And in these discussions on the permanent trust fund projects, uh, there has been some challenges with Navajo Nation pr uh, programs having the capacity to manage these projects. And so something that could, or I'm not sure has ever been discussed with NAPI is um, if NAPI could receive or if there could be uh, some type of development or partnership to help manage these grants uh, especially when it comes to some of these um, producer grants and, and what does that look like? Understanding that you are a business, that um, you have a mission and a goal from your board, but there's also an expectation to be a community partner. And so um, maybe at this time I could request if we could have a uh, schedule a call in terms of uh, the work that we're doing uh, with the San Juan County Four Corners Economic Development, because that second phase is this pathway for the next farmers, youth development, employment. And um, I understand it's seasonal work. So what do we do in between seasonal work so that you can have a successful workforce? And I think that's also part of the challenges when we look at NAPI in terms of um, uh, what, what could we be doing and how can we increase um, either some additional added value products to keep your wor workforce there year round. So um, I, I just want to say thank you for the presentation. I know it's very high level. Um, again, I would just need a little bit more information on the NIP, on who on who's that responsibility lies with, if there's possibility, and um, how we could continue to be partnership. And, uh, and I think um, I would also ask if, Department of Economic Development has provided any assistance in some of the challenges that you raised. So when I think about the truck situation, I do know that we have like Navajo truckers who are involved. Um, and so what what are then some of the support uh, that, that we could be providing to maximize uh, NAPI and, and its growth? Thank you very much, Speaker and my colleagues. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. That, let me go ahead and go on to back to the floor. I have Honorable Brown, and then uh, I'll come back to Mr. Zeller. Uh, Honorable Brown, floor's yours. Honorable Brown. Honorable Brown, you might have to press star six. Honorable Brown going twice. Honorable Brown going three times. That. Speaker. Speaker. Have... Hello? Speaker. Yes. This is Ed Mignazzi checking in, sir, for the record. Good, Good morning, Chairman. Uh, with that, morning, uh, I have Honorable Keon Begay, then Honorable Otto. So, 
Ano ba kaya ang bigay? Uh, Chairman, I uh, believe uh, Cecilia hasn't spoke yet, so maybe have him go first and then I'll go follow. Hey, for a follow up. Uh, Thank you. All right. Thank you, Honorable Kim. Yeah, with that, Honorable Otto, so then I'll come back to Honorable Kim. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. And then uh, members of the EFK uh, committee who's on the line, and uh, those of you that are listening, staff. Um, then Mr. Zeller. Say it again. Can't hear. Oh. How about now? All right. Oh, you betcha that niche. Anyway, um, thank you very much for uh, the presentation and um, I guess uh, Mr. Zeller, um, your proposal is to um, to the body here is uh, how and where can ARP A funding help accelerate NEPI uh, for the improvement of the area of economics? development and uh, we know that uh, a lot of the produce is um, shipped out directly off the nation directly into the market and I know that majority of your alfalfa and um, is shipped out and sold by the ton to other um, areas and I believe that's where the market's at. And uh, I know that there is a uh, sale, hay sales facility that's on NAPI that also purchase, that allows Navajo citizens to purchase hay by the ton, which, are, which is broken down to three wire bales and uh, other other things are also sold there. But uh, what I'm getting to is that um, I know that many people drive to that facility, you know, maybe on a weekly base, bi-weekly base, and a monthly base to purchase those items such as alfalfa hay, um, corn, straw hay, wheat. Uh, I, th I think you guys have some wheat bales also. And then um, also your grain. But what I'm getting to is the, the economic opportunity for other distribution points of that type that has a facility, a building in place. I serve as the uh, Navajo Hopi Land Commission chairman and we have a facility there on Nahat Atzig, which um, of that nature could be uh, explored of NAPI, maybe opening up a distribution point, a selling point of um, hay, feed, and uh, maybe down to the flour, down to the, uh, down to you guys' produce there at Nahat Atzil. And it could serve the region of that area uh, which circumference around about nine to eight chapters immediately there that could benefit. And uh, yes, uh, many Navajos in that region will go to Gallup to buy hay because that's where a lot of the alfalfa is coming up from um, southern Arizona. And um, but if Napi could uh, look at that study there and may or maybe provide a study to see if um, they could lease the facility from the land commission so that you guys can provide that type of a, um, uh, a distribution point of uh, alfalfa hay and uh, other assortment of uh, livestock feed for the um, Navajo citizens that own Navajo, uh, uh, that own livestock, whether it's cattle, horses, and uh, sheep, goats, and uh, 
So that's just what, one area that I want to uh, bring by since uh, the, you're talking, we're talking about the American Rescue Plan and economic opportunities for um, uh, for NAPI and to and, and, and this uh, American Rescue Plan has um, has many aspects that I know we haven't get the guidelines from it, but we can um, definitely have that conversation. We have a building there that's uh, in place. I say roughly about a uh, maybe a hundred by two hundred foot building that's there at Atzi plus or minus. Um, I'm just gonna throw that out. And uh, the uh, infrastructure is there: water, sewer, and um, I believe there's a communication communication line there also. Uh, that would be a very good point for a distribution point for NAPI. What you have. At, as the operation there on uh, at uh, I believe it's block six where you guys have your sales of hay and um, and then looking at other areas where you could uh, create these distribution points selling points on the Navajo Nation uh, based off of the um, economics because we know that we cannot set up a um, hay uh, uh, feed store in every community. Uh, we know that the economics is just, just, just not, not, not there. But if it's properly planned out and um, things like that, I think it, it can it can flourish. And um, uh, for instance, I represent Tuba City uh, chapter, the western portion of the Navajo Nation, and. A lot of the hay that is imported into that region in Western Navajo either comes from Southern Arizona and uh, Southern Utah. And uh, we, a truckload will come in and we'll have a whole line of people line up to buy alfalfa hay. And uh, they'll be purchasing it, purchase it until they're gone. But uh, how can we get NAPI to set up some distribution point seller, uh, you know, points where they could sell these, uh, sell the hay to the general public, and um, that way um, we can um, have these facilities and um, have the revenues circulate there and on Navajo. Because right now, when the Navajo citizens buys that hay from that hay, that, 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 that truck that comes from southern Arizona or southern Utah and western Navajo or anywhere on Navajo, those dollars are being directly exported off the Navajo Nation. But to recycle that dollar to be spent on Navajo, maybe at the minimum of seven times. And if we allow that Navajo dollar to be uh, uh, recycled there or circulated seven times before it leaves the nation, I think it'll improve the economy overall within the nation because it will create um, other revenues for other streams of businesses such as gas stations, such as uh, places where they eat, maybe like a McDonald, Burger King, and uh, the dollar circulates before it leaves the nation. But those are just one area that I really hope that you guys have a, uh, uh, in your plan to see if there's a uh, future plan to establish feed stores across the nation. But with the Navajo Hopi Land Commission property that's in Nahatatsi, uh, that's 100% Navajo control. And I think we could spark some sort of communication to, 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 to begin that uh, conversation there. And maybe that could be some sort of a model so that you know, other communities out there could have uh, th those type of um, models there. So those are just some of my thoughts of, uh, of, 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 of uh, how um, NAPI could um, utilize uh, the ARP dollars as they request for some dollars that are coming down the pipeline.
And uh, the other is that I guess with your responsibility as the as a, as a tribal enterprise, um, when you start uh, exploring uh, with agricultural off of Napi, uh, I think you're on a fine line. Um, but uh, the uh, I guess uh, like for instance, my brother was talking about uh, the agriculture area in. Um, other and in chapters, you know, the the, the technical assistant is, is probably what uh, a lot of it comes down to, the technical a, uh, assistant aspect that's required so that the chapters could 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 learn learn this trade so that they can pass pass that on to our Navajo farmers out there. Uh, you have uh, I I represent the community community to the city, and. Uh, we have the Curly Valley um, portion down in Tuba City, and we have the Monavi farming facilities or farmers. And uh, the last round of per, uh, of permanent trust fund, uh, uh, permanent trust fund funding that came through the pipeline, our farmers in that region were uh, excluded. And um, I remember I made an amendment to. Uh, even up the dollars uh, based off of the agencies and uh, my amendment failed because they thought I was taking money from these communities but we have we have farmers out in, 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 in Western agency and in, in Fort Defiance agency in Eastern agencies that were um, excluded out of those dollars but um, you know the technical advice that, that 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 or the technical aspect the farming that NAPI has. How far do you do does NAPI go to give technical advice to chapters? Because uh, I think that that's where the, the lines at. Um, are you only honed and geared to uh, concentrate on NAPI? Uh, operation based off of what uh, the, 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 the enterprise, uh, how the council established the enterprise to, 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 to build out NAPI. And, um, you know, uh, that, that part, you know, how much uh, technical advice are you guys able to give to the, um, give to the, um, um, give to the chapters so that, you know, these chapters, they have our farm boards out there so that they can um, um, ha uh, harness these teachings and uh, uh, the aspects about uh, uh, farming in the technical aspects. So those are just some of my thoughts of this as, as, as a representative. And, um, but again, you know, um, with NAPI, uh, you're only geared up on the northern portion of, um, uh, I guess, the northeastern portion of the Navajo Nation. And, um, you know, to improve the NAPI, uh, what law that is in place that establish you, you know, uh, I guess that's where your proposal comes in. And uh, to go further and beyond may, may be on a thin line and you may not be able to, 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 to do those things, but the marketing aspect is, is, is what I'm speaking about to create these um, a, a, a portals so that hay sales can happen. And uh, I'm sure it will, um, it will um, generate some sort of revenue for NAPI, but not a lot because so you're going to have operation costs and transport costs that has to be um, um, done or, or uh, adjusted for in these in, in, in the cost to operate uh, facilities out there. So those are just some of my questions from, from NAPI. And uh, I really want to hear, um, I'm really looking forward to the Department of Agriculture's um, report relating to the um, to the ARP because that's going to speak to the immediate immediately bigger now the big Navajo farmers out there so such as the farm boards out there you know how how their how their needs are 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 packaged within Department of Agriculture's need 
but we know that you as uh, the, our tribal enterprise is pretty much honed and geared to the NAPI operation. So again, thank you very much for the time speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Arso, for that. Uh, colleagues, uh, uh, I do have uh, Honorable Kian Beguet and Honorable Yellow Hair. Please keep in mind, colleagues, that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more uh, in the, in the presentations in the queue. So and we, this is our very first one. Honorable Kian Beguet, uh, I'm going to go to you and then I'm going to go back to Mr. Zeller. Uh, Honorable Kian Beguet, four years. Speaker, can you put this in the queue box? Thank you. Yes. Jay, closures. Uh, yeah, not speaker. Um, well, the uh, although that I got a response of um, uh, as that deal concentrated the in-house first tells me that there's not much of uh, a support to be uh, to be. Uh, I guess proposed for our local chapters. So um, maybe I'll just go ahead and leave it at that. Um, maybe I can have our own chapters uh, reach out to other areas for uh, support. Uh, but we'll see what the, uh, the Department of uh, Agriculture, Navajo Agriculture, will uh, uh, do their report. That's a bit of a story. If not the Division of Natural Resources, I know that they've uh, submitted a proposal in the amount of a two billion uh, shortfall, and I don't know if that's included in some of the areas uh, that we're dealing with. I don't BIA Division of Natural Resources to open on it. I don't go 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 do um that initiative and to some extent that they are uh our trustee or, or that, that we need help on behalf of our local farmers, so, uh, all the uh, irrigation system. I mean, I think the Navajo Nation had invested so much money locally in, the, in each of the five agencies. Uh, I guess my position is not to uh, talk on to any of the enterprises, but it's just a matter of that. how is it that they're also as though that they're struggling and how is it that they continue to reach out to the local chapter to get help in, 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 in justifying that um, this is how we're seeking help. So a lot of time uh, my comment, uh, because a lot of time I just, probably that I go back and forth in English and Navajo that everyone misunderstands my statement or my questions. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I'm asking the NAPI NAP to do what they can to help themselves at the same time, reach out to the local chapter uh, to help them as well. Uh, in that fashion, uh, how, would, how do we continue to advocate? Uh, with the uh, support request to the state and federal uh, officials. So it is also not state on this because um, uh, the, the three major, some of the major irrigation system on the Navajo Nation are in place, uh, although that, that we are dealing with drought, but I think getting water, uh, water drilling to AEC Kishin Sato um while we are still in the drought season uh maybe help develop some water wells for irrigation speaker thank you Thank you, Honorable Kambier. That, Mr. Zeller, let me go back to you. 
Floor is yours. Thank Floor's you. Response. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, with regard to Ms. Crotty, um, I do sit on the Four Corners Economic Development Council Board. Um, yes, NAPI is a big driver in San Juan County. And, um, you know, the employees here can reach 500 during the summer months when we're picking the organic squash and watermelon, etc. We are a big driver of employment here. That is a big concern of the NAPI board in making sure that the people are taken care of, etc. They are also constantly reminding me that we need to be working in concert with other institutions, um, not just New Mexico State, which has a science center here, as you know, um, here in Farmington, but the others. Uh, and I think uh, it is interesting, both Mr. So and Ms. Crotty and Mr. Key Allen Begay have all talked about seeking NAPI's technical expertise. And I appreciate that you think that much of this enterprise. I would, however, remind everybody that different irrigation systems present different problems. For instance, a flood irrigation system is vastly different than one utilizing the center pivots or one that uses what's referred to as wheel lines. Um, there is differences between them. Um, and in terms of technical expertise, our people tend to have been concentrated on the pivots rather than the others because that's what we have available. In terms of the farming expertise, yes, we're more than willing to help and we try to do so. Uh, I would also remind though that that's what the extension service departments are for as well, is to help provide some of that technical expertise as well. Uh, yes, we do have contact with the Department of Economic Affairs. Uh, we do have some contact with Diné College. Um, and, you know, we're more than willing to, to work in, in partnerships um, with regard to pilot programs. Um, it's just a matter of having them defined properly for us so that we can do that. Uh, I invite you to give us a call and to see what we can do in terms of scheduling some together time uh, to address some of that. Uh, with regard to the NIP, um, it would probably be best to get that information from your NIP subcommittee members. Uh, Chairman Halona is in on the call today. I know there has been some problems with getting the group gathered um, to discuss items, um, but I believe there's sufficient data there amongst those uh, NIP uh, committee members um, to, to help you with regard to where we're at on that program. Uh, obviously, we here at NAPI want the program to be built out, but if that's not the desire of the Navajo Nation, then we will have to adjust accordingly. Um, with regard to Mr. So, yes, we have discussions uh, within the board meetings about the possibility of setting up satellites or remote locations uh, for distribution of product. Um, you are correct. It does create another set of problems in that uh, having staff that can administer those remote sites properly, the additional freight that's involved there, um, and having those people move that um, freight from Nappy to uh, wherever it may be, Gallup as an example, uh, or your spot there near Tuba City or the Hopi Land Commission area. Um, Yes, again, we are willing to provide technical expertise. Um, 
in what we can offer. Uh, we realize our own limitations, though. We're constantly reaching out to others to improve our own farming techniques as well. And, um, you know, that also applies to Mr. Keallen Begay's comments uh, with regard to that. Um, I think anyone would acknowledge that when you're put in charge of a product project, the first thing is to make sure that you take care of that project before you reach out. In other words, you walk before you run. And um, we are more than willing and have indicated that with many farms and we will continue to. In fact, we're, we've been trying to get a, a, a meeting scheduled uh, in the immediate future with them as well. So we are there for support. Uh, we realize our own limitations, but we're willing to help where we can or help find those that can help um, and go from there too. I hope that that satisfies um, everyone at this point. But again, I do recommend that you call into NAPI and we'll see about setting up time and have the discussions to uh, proceed accordingly. Um, as you all know, this is a very busy time uh, right now, when we're trying to get in multiple crops, uh, hopefully we will be cutting alfalfa soon. We're trying to get corn crop planted. Uh, we're trying to get the beans planted as well. The chilies have already been planted. This is busy time of the year. We're in a drought. We're trying to keep the water system band-aided together and, um, you know, address items as they come up. We do not know what's going to be made available from ARP, um, so that's why I'm unfortunately not able to give you a little more specifics than what we did. I just tried to share with you the items that we think are important here at NAPI for the near future, including um, the public benefit programs as well as growth of, of NAPI. And uh, when the program does become available, then we know which items that we could focus on, and hopefully we can uh, give you more specifics to help you and you make your determination of allocation of the way the funds should be spent. Um, I thank you all for listening to me, and I release the floor back to uh, Speaker Damon for other comments. Thank you. Thank you again. Mr. Zello for your uh, response with that. We go on down. I have Honorable Yellow here and then Honorable Freeland. Honorable Yellow here, floor is yours. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Karen Shash, and I come as the uh, speaker of Navajo Nation. Shash, do not act on the council, man. Do should not he's not strong enough to get so he give a quiet. I did it this morning. I could have a stiggy, yeah. Alfalfa has too much sand in there, didn't it? Connect eyes is not on that. As it was told, everybody heard it. It says too much, that there's a lot of a paradox holes. That's the reason, should you know, But I'm not really satisfied with the remarks back. There had to be some solutions got to be done to produce a good, clean hay. Uh, just for example, in Gallup, New Mexico, there was a golf course up here in Gallup, and they have so many uh, a, a paradox. They do away with it by using uh, after saucer. But I guess the law is uh, you can't use a pesticide, but they use a after saucer. And Nappy, not planting hay for a paradox. Uh, this is where we need some cleanup immediately. It's got to be done something. This is a concern. That case, that case, been going on. If uh, if the uh, if the nephew can't do much about it, we need to improve. We need to uh, do something about it, or somebody to hire to get this clean nephew. Hey, that's that's the main source. It's where we get money too. There's a lot of uh, concern, a lot of Navajo concern. Everybody knows, even Cortez says nephew got too much sand. That this makes heavy, and uh, I buy hay. But I kind of quit right now until I see a new hay. That's what you need to do, um, Slicer, that you take care of this business. Uh, we need a good product. 
and everything, yeah, all the, everything. So that's why you need to do it and um, tell your uh, committee, and you got to do take care of this immediately, or this coming twenty uh, twenty one fall time. Uh, I look forward to get some clean hay. I support it because it's where we get money and bring the revenue back to the Navajo Nation. Once about how sweet I don't want to have no complaint from you. Just take care of this business. Do it for us as Navajo. Eh, once about how sweet I live, the speaker. She's not hot, even not. Eh, I'll ask you a couple of things. Oh, because you don't. Once I start on it, they not even not by a tea. The cocoa hut, eh, once ago, yeah. Uh, she has the shenanigans on it. I go back on mute now. Yeah, speaker. Thank you, Honorable Yellow Hair. Uh, with that, let me go on to Honorable Freeland. Honorable Freeland, where's yours? Speaker. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's a little after 12 o'clock right now. But I want to, first of all, um, thank Mr. Zeller for the presentation this morning, um, as well as um, my colleagues for their questions. I just have a few questions in relation to your operation, Mr. Zeller. Um, first of all, I, I appreciate you mentioning Herpino chapter and as a delegate of Herpino, representing eight chapters and Herpino is my largest chapter. I really appreciate you continuing to collaborate and work with them directly and, and um, assisting them like you have mentioned with all the neighboring chapters, but particularly Herpino. Um, in relation to, uh, I was just up, I was just up in the area these last, uh, actually yesterday, but, um, I noticed that the feed yard was empty as well. Um, is there any specific reason for the, for that? Um, and then in relation to our ranchers, producers and farmers and permittees, I noticed that, you know, in, in the fall, we, we, you have the leasing. Uh, opportunities for them. And I wanted to see if there's any way as a recommendation you could work or give them priority as well, because I'm, I've been working a lot with them. I've been meeting with them, um, especially our Eastern ranchers. How can we um, bring additional resources to them? And you would be a really good uh, resource and asset to them. But if, if there's any way you could talk to the board or I don't know how you all do it, but look at uh, prioritizing our ranchers um, and giving them those you know, access to those crop circles in the fall, um, that would be very much appreciated. And lastly, in regards to your situation with the prairie dogs, and, you know, I have had discussions with, and I think I've even mentioned this to you before, with Navajo Fish and Wildlife, through the United States Fish and Wildlife Program, they do have the Black-Footed Ferret Program that would be, these are natural predators to prairie dogs. Um, you know, releasing them into the burrows and, you know, they would, they would of course hunt the, hunt the prairie dogs out for you. So just something to consider and, and you know, maybe give it a try and, um, you know, it, it may, it may help resolve and may not help resolve your, your prairie dog problem, but, you know, it's worth a try. Anything's possible or anything, you know, as they're waking up right now. And, and I know there's a lot of, uh, um, predators around there too. You know, there's a, um, we have a lot of uh, uh, hawks and a lot of eagles that are uh, raptors that are, 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 you know, always on the hunt too. So I see them out when I'm driving out there, sitting on poles and, you know, I'm out there um, watching them too. So it's, it, you know, just something to consider um, the black footed ferret as a program uh, working with Navajo Fish and Wildlife uh, through the United States Department of Fish and Wildlife. So ADS speaker, just certain a uh, few comments. Uh, pretty easy questions this morning. But thank you, uh, Mr. Dollar. Appreciate it. Thank you, Honorable Freeland. With that, colleagues, is there any other comments or questions at this time? If not, let Speaker me go Damon, ahead and back Delegate to you, uh, Auto, uh, Mr. Zeller. Speaker Damon, Delegate Rick Nez, request to speak. Uh, Chairman Nez, Mr. Zeller, hold on real quick. Uh, Chairman, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Speaker Damon. Yeah, Patterson and uh, colleagues. 
I, I am just going to make it brief, straight to the point. Mr. Zeller, I just want to say thank you for doing a good job for Nappy up there and working well with the our people, our employees. Uh, when I go over there, I'm always happy to have a conversation with myself and just thankful for always supporting Nappy. And it's good that our people are working there and they're able to support their families, their children, their education. And I know that our enterprises, some do well and you have done well. And hopefully some of the things that you had brought up will come to fruition. And I believe that we all do support Nappy, knowing that you've been established well and uh, work seems to be doing well. And it's just right here in my backyard. And I fully understand the work about farming. It's, it's how I was raised on a farm. And not a dull day goes by always something to do out on the farm so just want to say thank you and appreciate the work that you do and all the employees that are there at nappy so you have my support thank you very much and god bless you Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairman Nez. That let me go ahead and turn the floor back over to you, Mrs. Zeller. If there's any response at this time, and I think um, maybe some closing remarks too as well, because I don't have anybody else in the queues. Mrs. Zeller, your floor. Thank you, Speaker Damon. Thank you, Speaker Damon. I appreciate the the time that you've allowed me to share with the uh, council today. Um, certainly, it always gives me food for thought. Um, these will be items that will be presented directly to the the NAPI board um, for further discussion. All of them have been discussed by our board numerous times, but your individual uh, points will be applied. Um, with regard to Mr. Yellowhair, I appreciate your comment. We will continue to work on improving our alfalfa program and the, uh, the project there as it goes. Um, specifically with like, we have looked into the black-footed ferrets. It was my understanding from government officials that's an endangered species um, that was not available um, outside of their management and they hadn't provided any uh, impetus towards sharing uh, that kind of situation with it, but I will readdress that again. Um, as Mr. Freeland, he asked again a question about the feed yard. It was pointed out earlier that due to current economics, the past manager of that feed yard or leaser of the feed yard was not suited in losing $200 a head feeding cattle right now. So that's why it is empty. Um, certainly we're open to reopening the feed yard uh, with corn being at the record price it is, alfalfa being short in availability. It isn't very encouraging as far as feeding cattle, but certainly uh, that's something that we will be looking at. Uh, with regard to utilizing these pivots in the fall, particularly the wheat pasture and the corn stalks, uh, yes, you just need to have those people contact us as early as possible. They, can, they will be put on a list. Uh, the current process is that Navajos come first. It is only open to the Navajos. 
until we go through a period where we don't hear from anybody. Then we open up the remainder of the pivots to the non-tribal members. I will point out to you also that the prices on those pivots are based, first of all, on crop. And then second of all, or that's not true, first of all, on tribal membership, because uh, native tribal members pay a reduced lease fee compared to non-tribal members. And then it's built on the particular commodity, and then it's built on the number of livestock you had. So a native will pay less on wheat pasture than a non-native. Um, and then there is a variation in cost between wheat pasture and corn pasture. But again, the discounts still apply. Um, it is very ingrained here that Navajos come first at NAPI. Uh, we use the Navajo Nation preference in all aspects of this organization. Um, the current native versus non-native employee relationship percentage is approximately 98% natives to about 2% non-native, of which I would fall into that 2%. Um, but it does come first. We follow the regulatory commission guidelines, native preference first in, uh, in uh, being addressed. So I just want you to know that. And I appreciate the kind comments from uh, Chairman Nez of the RDC. Uh, we have been very blessed at NAPI to have, from the staff standpoint, not just a strong board, but a strong oversight committee in RDC, and we have been very happy to have worked with that set of people, and we hope that relationship continues into the future. Um, I don't think that there's any need to take any more time, the valuable time that this council has and needs to spend with other uh, enterprises. You have the brief outline of projects that we've discussed here at NAPI. Certainly, we are more than willing to discuss them in depth um, at your convenience um, as you come closer to making your decisions. Again, I appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Um, my phone number is 505-566-2603. And I welcome any call at any time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Zoller. And thank you very much for uh, accepting the invitation today. And thank you very much for your presentation. And we look to further discussions with you. Uh, we will follow up, Mr. Zoller, on your presentation. And if there's any further comments, I I'm sure my colleagues uh, would uh, like to get back with you. I know Madam Chair Amber Crotty indicated that she'd be contacting you personally. Uh, so, uh, Mrs. Zeller, uh, have a good day and thank you again for being with the Navajo Nations Advocate Committee today. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for having me. All right. With that, let's move on down. I have uh, Navajo Arts and Crafts uh, next in the on the agenda here. Uh, Mr. Rico, we sent out anything? What, 10.30 this morning? Colleagues, uh, Navajo Nation Arts and Crafts has sent out a uh, proposal too as well this morning and that was sent out at uh, 10.34 a.m. That is there in anybody on the line from uh, NACE? Mr. Speaker, Elijah Musket here. Oh, uh, yes. Good morning, Mr. Musket. Uh, without further ado, Mr. Musket, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the presentation in front of you, uh, me and my staff worked together to put these numbers together. Uh, we just had general estimates on doing some of these before COVID happened. And um, we had to uh, make some adjustments, knowing that um, uh, the increase uh, 
prices for some of the requests had happened after COVID. So these numbers might not be final and we might need to do more uh, research. So in general, um, what we're asking for is um, our four store locations that we have for um, that were on that are on a withdrawal land. They are on Wonder Rock, Chinle, Kianta, and Cameron. We have our other locations too, but we uh, actually rent space from Navajo Shopping Center. And uh, those are for to the city and Chip Rock. And then we have our um, pop-up store in Gallup. But these four main locations have been with the enterprise for over 50 plus years. And um, these locations need to be, um, we can try to keep up maintenance on them, but they need to be rebuilt. Uh, since they've been in these locations for a uh, better part of half a century, they uh, grandfathered. So that means all the other locations that have been built around them have uh, been more modern in the locations that we have. Uh, take, for instance, Wonder Rock. Uh, this location's been here since uh, the 50s. And um, the foundation's lower than the foundation of, uh, of the other um retail establishments in the area and also the infrastructure that was built was built around these locations so um these uh utility lines and um everything else they're they've been built around so uh when we discuss um modernizing these locations some of these utilities will have to be relocated so that they um modernize at the same time and um, uh, the locations that we actually estimated for Window Rock, we put 14 and a half million, Chinle 17.3 million, Kanta 4.9 million, and Cameron at 6.1 million. And uh, we included these with uh, HVAC, landscaping, paved parking lot, and concrete walkways. So that's just kind of a general estimate of to rebuild these locations. Um, and in general, uh, when we rebuild these locations, it would um, improve our curbside appeal, um, modernize the infrastructure, and then uh, reduce the maintenance costs that we have because we have to maintain these locations. And in addition, we can improve the efficiency of the space uh, designed toward a retail goal, improve parking, security, and then do infrastructure upgrades in um, relation to uh, the utilities. And then we didn't really know if we could get the money for rebuilding the store. So we included uh, maintenance and repairs as a separate item, which would be on the second slide. And um, we need to repair the, uh, in some of these locations, we don't actually have an HVAC system. So we use um, obsolete heating and cooling systems. So we'd like to, um, improve those and then um, our landscaping we um, need to improve that to improve our curb appeal uh, the paved parking lot uh, some of our locations like Cameron uh, Fianta Chinley we don't have pavement it's all gravel so we'd like to get those paved better accommodate our customers especially during the winter time um, it's rather difficult to uh accommodate the customers. And then and, um, we have a septic system for our production facility. And we like to upgrade that to, to connect to the actual sewer system. And for that to happen, you know, we need to uh, drill and that's gonna cost some money. So those are all the maintenance and repairs. And then as part of the request to uh, help with economic development, and we were requesting uh, money to purchase inventory for resale products. Um, significantly, um, COVID-19 closed us down for six months last year. And during part of that was during our fourth quarter where we generate majority of the revenue. We were hit pretty bad. Um, Council did help us with the $2 million for payroll and we're grateful for that. But we still have to pay for inventory. Uh, we promised vendors 
uh, we pushed orders out. We did our best to try to save uh, cash flow as best as possible. Uh, we're still on the line for some of those orders where we're still trying to get those things in, but that is affecting us now. So for us to um, get back to recover quick, more quickly, um, money to purchase inventory would be a great help. And we put in uh, the money for the next four years from 2021 to 2024. Included in these are the monies that we use to purchase from the artisans. Um, and then the 2020, we didn't actually purchase as much from the artisans because of COVID. Even now, because of the um, strain on the cash flow, we're not purchasing as we did in 2019 before COVID. So we're, we're struggling. Um, and that would be $28 million. And then before COVID, we were trying to reestablish or help with the market because we understand that there's not that many silversmiths out there. Um, no, there's not too many weavers, moccasin making, basket weaving. It's, it's difficult to get those products. Um, so we were trying to set up classes to kind of help in that market. And we were working with uh, the Tanae College to set up a program so we can get that off going. And that was before COVID happened. After COVID happened, we just shut down and we kind of stopped. And we want to continue to do this. So um, because of the cash flow and everything else, we... we... Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, you're still on. Okay, I'm sorry. I have difficulties with my internet. Um, so we uh, kind of estimated that, you know, to get this back up and going would be uh, the products and materials, equipment, the um, instructor manager salary, and the remodel will be at 340000 And then in addition, um, marketing, uh, because we need to advertise for everything that we do, sales, uh, positions, um, general information, um, marketing is requesting, you know, a million dollars, uh, information centers for tourism, uh, 13,000, which will be located in our stores and, uh, billboards, which will be, uh, 1.6, 1.6 million dollars. And the billboards will be something similar to what we have at Fire Up, something we can put at our store locations. And then uh, human resources, uh, um, money to uh, do training, uh, cost of living increase, and uh, hazard pay, which would equate to $100,000 for training, $55,000 for cost of living, and uh, has a pay for $75,000. Overall estimation uh, with the buildings and rebuilding would be uh, 65 million and 30,000. Without the buildings would be 33 million, 467,000. And those are just general estimates, which we still have to research further to get more closer to a cost appropriation and still follow nomination guidelines and do PRFs and purchase orders. And that is, that is it. I'll turn the floor back to you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. That colleagues, any comments or questions? Anybody in queue? Anybody lined up? Speaker, Kellen. Okay, let me get you. Go ahead, four years. Um, which enterprise did we get 
uh, presentation from. Navajo Arts and Crafts just now ended their presentation. Okay. Uh, I thought, I thought the uh, speaker, if I have the floor. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, the only um, on the presentation, what I saw was the improvement of the uh, facility across the um, Navajo Nation. Um, I guess further, uh, dude, there's a lot of areas that I know uh, to improve uh, funding for, for a facility. And we call it the Navajo um, Arts and Craft But I think it's okay to sell clothing uh, at these uh, uh, stores. But that really, uh, I guess, the uh, target away from the intended uh, purpose, kuto, um, jewelry, um, what is the plan that they have um, to expand out further in in the retail environment, halit um, di the arts and craft uh, could be further be upscale in 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 concentrating on our Navajo people uh, handmade jewelry. A koko to hiyun hit nan liniki atas. A koko, I mean, why, why, why can't the arts and craft have a store like in Santa Fe in conjunction with like the uh, Indian market or in Scottsdale there at the uh, Fifth Avenue, the short yes. Oh, you Jewelry's in Lindigi, don't hit Nan Lindigi out of the old town in Albuquerque. I mean, I know this because I've been uh, been doing uh, silversmithing uh, along the time that I was uh, uh, working. Adosh of family relatives, or oh, you. Um, jewelry that they a cocoa quite like it's a donor. It's a donor, go to that jar. I do quite a monument valley, four corners, even here, Canyon de Shay, uh, vendors to you each in the east, me to quack it on the east, no, but on the. But when you go into the Navajo Arts and Crafts, uh, a lot of time, uh, one time, uh, I, 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 I'll put you guys on the spot, uh, that we uh, got, got to the store, uh, uh, what we uh, were selling, and we were told that, well, we don't need those. I didn't know, we didn't know yet. And I'm thinking, I mean, maybe the person, the, the buyer is Navajo and it's not intended for him or her. He and let it the name Kasiki. How that she Kasiki a quacky. 
because you got cluster, you got internal inlay, you got inlay. Uh, it's on the two, it's on, it's on, it's on a variety. Chip inlays are done, yeah. But ego got all, oh, you need to know, as art out at the as oh. I don't live in Nina, as the little that we did know that. As art out could not get all you that as a call a digit on sin to host me cook with. They have a lot of hosts over. I bet you that uh, there's one jewelry buyers in Gallup that does probably outdoes the Navajo nation in, in selling. But the thing is, is that a lot of our Navajo people are being, I would say, ripped off because they're at the wholesale with all oh, unit because they're in dire need of house, I mean, uh, money. Other but not that stock culture. Uh, silver. Uh, supplies not that you see me. And I think some of the uh, uh, stores have um, supplies to buy these uh, uh, silver door, uh, nickel, that, 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 Dot rock weaver, basket maker, and so on. They got in a situation that they don't have no proof that they're the artists, vendors that the no. A koko, how can you take the lead in? In I guess that a lot of the Navajo people could not identify as a authentic maker, because a lot of time, not shouldn't be focusing on jewelry. If you go next door into your clothing store, a lot of them is made in different countries, the Baca. So how can we mix products saying that this is authentic within the Navajo nation, but yet it's okay to sell products that are, that are being shipped in from different country. A call, Dean hit the name Linigit or Hayu at the Aspego, good to Yego. A Kaichi the Arch Coco. We're very selective of what we think could be sold, but we don't think of what a visitor is going to be wanting. Because I know a lot of these jewelry making late overseas good Arch good ship out the dish and stuff. Uh, I think that's one of the areas that a Navajo Nation Arts and Crafts should really refocus in the realms of uh, a connection with our, 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 our artists. Navajo Nation, Navajo people, the key. Edigi, Baal, and Liniki, do the Jews, Betis, and the how can we have them not travel to Phoenix, have them not travel to Albuquerque or Santa Fe or wherever that they sell these jewelry? That you, as a novel arts and craft enterprise, that you're in the prime position to help the Navajo people. Of course, aunt our culture that she had this own home in Han the Honey. I could all her huge and hit the name Linky. Oh, I think we're losing focus and we're not focusing on that. And how can the Navajo Nation arts and crafts change that? And that you could span out and I mean, what, 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 why isn't that we don't have a store? Washington, that Indian jewelry, the Bakako, about the that they're being labeled as Indian jewelry, but you know it's not. So Indian jewelry, that I don't know if other in, uh, tribal tribes are making these type of jewelry that they indicate as Indian jewelry. 
So it requires all. I mean, how is the management pursuing? I mean, yes, we can give you a building, but I mean, how is it that we're expanding out uh, that we are showcasing our Navajo jewelry to the world? That there's even the shows Lego Yubanda Alte. That there's a destination. I mean, why isn't the Navajo Nation have their own, uh, uh, like Santa Fe uh, Indian Market? Why isn't that the Navajo Nation uh, just art, uh, Navajo Nation Museum? It's a the other an annual Navajo Nation fair to Banata Alta. And I think a lot of people from the outside, even from different countries, travel to say that let me see if I could be able to purchase something that's uh, authentically made by Navajo people. The Gorman Hall or Nagai Hall, just as an Indian section, ban ban na alte sa sati. Koko odat ego ni tinaki sa we're kind of like leaving them out. Oh, that I know it's just some people that I know that I'm sure Navajo Arts and Craft won't be able to afford to purchase these. But if you look at the value of it, the artist of it, and it's handmade by our Navajo people at that price level, I mean, I think that we really need to honor our Navajo people in that fashion. I mean, what's the purpose of having that arts and crafts label? We might as well just put it a uh, retail store for for other companies. Because a bit a So I guess my 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 comment to you as a presenter for the Navajo Arts and Crafts is that how is the management sincerely making a change? That there's nothing but a focus of Indian jewelry being exchanged through that particular entity. That you guys are expanding out throughout to different part of the uh, market sector across the Navajo Nation, across the uh, United States. I mean, why isn't the Navajo Nation being a business elsewhere, at the airport or somewhere? So, Ede, yeah. Showcase that to the world. Uh, but, but I think that, that there's a reason why it's called Navajo Arts and Crafts. And then I think we really need to upgrade of our or make it genuine uh, uh, in selling our Navajo product, jewelry, that Haggy, and Hit Net, or Yubinan, she just an Aja. So, Ede Yakudo, and then connection with the uh, vendors, connection with the uh, people, and then it can goes back how do we help our Navajo people uh, that they are truly uh, a jewelry maker? Dika in the Hanihiki. Because that way they don't get in a situation to where, I mean, Halit Alan Hitnan Liniki Bakat Nija Sato. Because I know there's tax purposes. I know there's uh, 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 because I know the Division of Economic, even our own Navajo Nation Division of Economic Development was asking certain type of uh, authentication that they are an artisan. That's the only way that they will qualify to get some of these uh, artisan hardship uh, funding. Pahanana sit or this cojing hit an ad jewelry door rock weavers that are denigrated or any other way that they make a living in self employment. So I think that's it. A run along Kodon hit an air. Ye can the Kedo ye Kodon be ye not a test store. So Hotela, Chairman, 
I don't know if there's any way that they can respond to where we can be able to uh, see some type of a, a management uh, change of their marketing of our Navajo uh, jewelry. Speaker. Thank you. On Bukian Begay, with that, let me go to Mr. Back to Mr. Musket for a response. Mr. Musket. Hello. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so we focused on trying to rebuild our infrastructure um, with the four store locations that we have. Um, we okay. were saving up. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, so that was kind of the primary um, goal was to start rebuilding this location. Then we were trying to rebuild the Window Rock location. Um, we were, we had opportunity to build, not on the site we're on right now, but um, in another site in Window Rock. Um, that didn't pan out. So we're just generally trying to get these locations rebuilt. Um, and the reason why we feel that it would be more economical to do that is because we recognize that our market and where we make generally more of our money is with our own people. And we do want to grow off reservation, but we want to make sure that we serve our primary customers and that's the Navajo people. Um, so in general, we want to build a foundation here on Navajo, make it stronger and then start moving off reservation. And in addition, we're investing monies into trying to um, set up our organization so that it is um, alignable to um, something that we can compare to Amazon. We're trying to set it up so that the retail and what we have as part of the organization with inventory and everything else can um, move online so you can buy it online. And we do make sales off reservation with a lot of our products that are generally more, you know, um, represent the Navajo people. So the jewelry, arts and crafts, uh, pottery, and uh, the crafts. So, that's kind of the strategy right now. As far as opening up in um, other locations, you know, we wanna we wanna do that, but we wanna make sure that we secure a foundation here on Navajo first, so that in the next 10, 20, 30 years, that you know these locations will be there to serve the people. 
Um, and I understand that, you know, we participate primarily in retail. Um, when I started here in 2005, um, NACE was already selling clothing. Um, the payroll program was in effect. I know that um, it's probably frowned upon that, you know, we're sending a mixed message, but we're trying to get back to just selling jewelry and um, focusing on that as a way to grow. Um, but at the same time, um, with the organization, you know, selling clothing and other things, um, you cut that off, you cut off the revenue stream. Um, if the Navajo people can't get it here, you're gonna go somewhere else to get it. And most likely they're gonna go off reservation. Um, I'm trying to um, help in providing that so that these communities don't have to travel off reservation. I know that, you know, we're arts and crafts and we're supposed to, you know, do stuff that are primarily focused on arts and craft, but at the same time, it's um, it's just something we inherited and we're trying to um, address it as we move along. As far as the helping artisans and um, doing what they need to, we're trying to set it so that I know that we have a buyer that sometimes, and like I said, we're focused on um, trying to buy an effort to sell it. Um, and that's from a retail mindset that if we can't sell it, it does us no good. It, it sits there, it collects dust. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing when it comes to a collectible, because there are certain pieces out there that are very, very, um, very nice. And, you know, those are collectibles. Those are the items that, you know, I see artisans that, you know, they make and they present at the, um, these markets and they get prime dollar for that. And the market that NACE participates, majorly pay, participates in with our customers is um, kind of the items that they want to buy. And the trend is um, row bracelets, uh, cluster bracelets, cluster rings, you know, and we don't have those, you know, we always try to fill those. And we do have some artisans that come in and, you know, they want to sell high end uh, items. And unfortunately, we have to turn them away because, I mean, when we do buy them, it generally, it's hard to turn. So we have been trying to work on setting it up so that we can participate in this type of market. Um, and this type of market is more of a gallery type market where um, you're not buying the art, but you're also buying the name, the representation. And that type of market is um, very exclusive and it depends on who you know. Um, and like I said, it's relationships between the artisan and the person usually grow at these places. And I agree, I mean, we should try to work on setting up uh, an Indian market here on the reservation, but I think that it's gonna take some time before we get there. And we're open to that. And then to how NACE can help authenticate jewelry and crafts. Um, we have authentication tags here um, if you just need authentication that the artist had made it, um, we would probably have to set up a record, your trademark, and we'd be willing to share those tags. I don't know if that's uh, sufficient enough to answer the questions for uh, Delegate Allen, um, but I'll return the floor back to you, um, Honorable Speaker Damon. Thank you. That, I don't have anybody else in the queue. Any other comments, questions? Twice. 
went three times. Thank you very much, Mr. Musket, for presenting here to us today. And thank you very much for uh, being uh, accepting the invitation. Uh, with that, uh, the speaker's office will make sure we keep that information. If there's a follow-up, we will definitely invite you back to that follow-up, uh, Mr. Musket. Uh, yeah, for being here with us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That, colleagues, let's go ahead and continue on down to item number C, Navajo Nation Hospitality Enterprise. And colleagues, Navajo Nation Hospitality Enterprise did send a uh, presentation and that presentation was sent out to as well with the other presentations at 10.34 a.m. this morning. So without further ado, I'll keep, turn it over to uh, NNHE. Uh, uh, thank you. Hope everybody can hear me. This is Stan Sapp. I'm the CEO of the Hospitality Enterprise. Yes, Mr. Sapp, um, we can hear you. Good, terrific. Um, so, we got our our uh, uh, summarized uh, project list. Um, we are pleased to present it. It's a funding request uh, as, as requested. Uh, so, and it's very simple in that we've got five construction progress projects listed on it. Uh, all the construction progress uh, have no need for any type of approval, land release, uh, uh, and any no land issues in any way, uh, and uh, nor infrastructure requirements. All that's needed is funded, so tr truly shovel ready. Um, all the projects uh, generate revenue and are, are, in our opinions, financially feasible. Um, I'll, I'll just summarize them. Uh, uh, what you've got there, uh, and I, the first item on the list is the completion of our Winter Rock office buildings. If you've noticed behind the Quality Inn, uh, we've got two three-story office buildings going up 15,000 square feet each. Uh, they they do have tenants for them already uh, in place, um, and we're building this with uh, with our own funds, and we're hoping to just fit, there's four million left to finish on both buildings, and we're just hoping to get that uh, through this funding request to complete that. That allow us to free up our funds to do other things. Uh, the second item on the list is what we really have a lot of passion about and, and hopefully we can pass along that some of that passion to you, but it's for our Winter Rock Hotel there. Uh, it would really promote visitation and tourism to Winter Rock. Um, the price tag on that at current costs are right at $13 million. Architecture has been completed. Um, the actual the utilities, the NQA has already got the utilities lined out over there, and we could immediately put it out, out to uh, out to bid. Um, and it's really we need to retire. I'll call it retire the existing quality in it. Many of you know that stay there. It's uh, uh, it's it's just old. It's just old, and and the the repair and maintenance is significant on it. We perhaps would turn that into office space or something, but the the capital of the nation certainly needs a new hotel in, in our opinion. Um, item number three on our list is uh, uh, our third office uh, building in the back there. We've got two, as I mentioned, that are going up. Uh, the third has not been started yet or put out to bid, uh, but we it's a, it's a mirror image of the other two. And could quickly be put out to bid. Right now, just with uh, just as a bit of information, we're building those two current buildings you see going up for three million. And this is just our estimate with the rising construction all over the all over the nation. Uh, construction costs are significantly up, so that's a higher price tag at four point two million versus the three million each currently currently bid at. Uh, Number four on our, our list is um, the expansion of our Tupa City Hotel. This again promotes visitation and tourism to the Davo Nation, particularly on that along that uh, Highway 89 corridor. Um, if, if we the expansion would be fairly easily done on existing site. If you're familiar with our 80 rooms, then would go up, uh, add another 32 rooms to that, and an indoor pool. Uh, the hotel currently does well. This addition would do very well. Um, it's um, yeah, it's it's, it's it's economically it would be a terrific thing to do. And the fourth and uh, or I'm sorry, fifth and final thing is just 
expansion of our Navajo Travel Center. Uh, we uh, we did a, a restaurant expansion two years ago that's very successful, and we need to go. And that was for the men's room only. We need to get on to the um, to the women's room and uh, do those modernize those. And then what we would move is move our subway building out to reestablish that as a separate entrance to our existing building. Um, that's just a, a overview of all these projects. We have this, the, the board has approved this development list in the past. Uh, uh, we continue to work on this as best we can with our own funds. But any funds that could be assigned to us would be appreciated. Um, just, as you know, you know the, the money certainly gets uh, the construction progress following now. Uh, preference laws, money pretty much stays here. The construction would employ a lot of people, and these projects generate revenue then to uh, then back uh, back to the enterprise. So um, it's certainly financially feasible. Uh, that's really it. I've been brief about it. I. Uh, uh, could uh, read, answer any questions you might have, though. Thank you for that, Mr. Sapp. Uh, for that uh, presentation, and thank you very much uh, for you and your uh, accepting the invitation to be in here with us today. That colleagues, are there any comments or questions for Mr. Sapp at this time? Success, Eugene. Well, Eugene, so go ahead, the floor is yours. My phone went out. Which one is this? Uh... Is this the hospitality or still on Arts and Craft? Hospitality. Okay. I got um, a place in Trinity Rad on top of that. How they end. I would really like some help to get that land for Navajo owned bins. The criteria. I would request a meeting with you guys and also JT Woody. I already got the BIA. So, it will be hostile, it will be needed. I, I do um, like number who own, especially motels and eating places. We shouldn't have all those fast foods all over the reservation. Ada should hot Ada. And we should never whole nation should be now competing with outside with more child. Should have more child all over the world by now. Instead of we go to quality in or all the hard etc. The name these name uh, name is Mocha. I don't know why. We should be making our own money. They're still gonna but pay for a room no matter what it's called to sleep there. Okay, so this okay, go ahead, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Eugene. So, any other comments, questions? Kellen. I'm with Kellen Gay. Go ahead, Forger. Yeah, I don't know what this from the uh, enterprise hospitality. Uh, I guess, uh, along with the same question that I posed to the other enterprise, the the expansion out of the uh, your service. I know there's several hotels are being developed, but but that's through different sources. I know Shipwrecks getting one, I know Crown Point's getting one, I know Shantu is getting one. But I I don't see that's a connection through your office. A coco um through your with your recommendation i mean maybe I, let me speak on behalf of my five chapters uh what potentially where is potentially the best location for expansion in my area and 
one example is many farms. But we really don't have much support or a driven um, a technical support with chapters. That's one area that I like to know. I mean, what specific location is the uh, hospitality trying to make a footprint of, uh, I guess, certain level of a rated hotel on the Navajo Nation? Like, for example, page. And what you pay to do a you hotel it is about a cross push to the nayan or a you visit the dash and then in like four corners area in other area koko e kwaki kila nihin nihin hat akila how far ahead is that being uh developed within your plan ado um Every year, the Navajo Nation programs, even uh, every branch of the Navajo Nation conduct an annual event, usually sometimes in Albuquerque or Phoenix and other locations. Akoko, once this pandemic goes away, I'm sure we'll be back in normal life to have an annual um hotel i mean uh, annual events such as uh navajo nation fair if you look at it usually to my understanding there's always a, wa- uh, a waiting list during these fairs to lodge in winter up otherwise you have to go into gallop I've asked these questions to non-Navajos uh, during some of these events. How do we spend, and not necessarily for the benefit of the Navajo, uh, Navajo program to conduct their uh, retreats or convention, but I'm sure more companies or more businesses uh, could want to conduct their uh, conventions or or others on Navajo, but with the lack of a conference room, with lack of um, uh, hotel rooms and so on, is maybe the reason why, is obviously the reason why we don't have much uh, conference activity on the Navajo Nation. Okoko, how can we focus, especially in Winderup, uh, we have a conference room that, that could hold so much people or that could hold so much uh, event on an annual base, not just only for fairs, but other activity on the Navajo Nation. Uh, some tourism convention center activity. How is that uh, the uh, how hospitality uh, making the plan uh, for development in the near future? Maybe if, if it's allowable through this funding, could the nation say that let's build a huge convention center with hotel uh, in the midst of the Navajo Nation? And then upgrading the fairground is, is, is very needed. So if we're talking about economic development, some form of uh, of funding to be coming onto the Navajo Nation, but yet we really don't have much of the facility to accommodate these events. So that's my uh, comment, speaker. I mean, a question, speaker. Thank you. Uh, with that, let me go ahead and go back to Mr. Sa. Okay. Uh, yeah, if I got the gist of, of the of the first question, 
he was related to the, the franchises we've had, like in, in the, uh, the Quality Inn, Winderock. Uh, we have actually, uh, just so the council knows, uh, last December 1st, dropped the Quality Inn franchise over in Tuba City. It's, uh, it's our own Navo brand. Uh, the hotel we're planning in, uh, in Window Rock, uh, and, and it should be at the bottom of the, of the sheet that was handed out. Uh, these are our, our independent hotels and Navo themed. Uh, franchise uh, agreements, uh, just so you know, they typically have a window, five-year windows, we call them. So it's e- every five years you can decide to stay in with the franchise or not. And just for your information, the, the quality and franchise is up for a, a review here in Window Rock uh, in 2004. At that point, then our board will be, take a hard look and see what we do, whether we want to continue or not. We, and as a basic philosophy, we do not want to continue. Uh, just so, just so you know where where we're headed, but that decision yet is yet to be made by the board. The, the second question is uh, quite a few. I will highlight them from uh, uh, Mr. Begay. Uh, we we do have targeted uh, hotel projects, and just so you know, they they fall along what we call the kind of the tourism routes to the nation, which is Highway 89. Uh, so, you know, coming out of flag, then all the way up to, uh, the Chi and then, uh, and then also, uh, Highway 160 as it, as it cuts off at, uh, north of Cameron there, and then it heads toward the four corners. It, any new, because they're tourist, uh, corridors, that's where tourists go and any hotel along there would do, do we, in our opinion, very well. So, uh, you know, anything at, at uh, in pitch would do well. Anything at the camera, and it's particularly there at Monument, would do well. Expansion to the city would do well. And, of course, anything over at Monument Valley, the Cantu would do, would do very well. That's a general answer on where we think the hotel should be built. Uh, we're ready. Um, we've been had some meetings this morning with the Speaker's Office on some hotel projects, and and we stand ready on any of that that you've listed that that we can help do. Um, in my background, past we, we built quite a few hotels, so we're we're comfortable. We're good, but the the need for uh, conference facilities here in Window Rock. Uh, the Window Rock Hotel we've got uh, on their thing had very large meeting rooms in plan for our Window Rock parcel. We've, we've got a lot of land there in our lease. That behind that would sit a conference center, which we think would, would do well. We would uh, The food would then come out the back of our kitchen here in Window Rock that you're familiar with, and then uh, cut it over to, to feed any convention people. Uh, but then it would sit behind the planned new hotel, and that's in our master plan development. So uh, I think you had some specific questions about Many farms. Well, we operate the Thunderbird Lodge. I don't know if you if you know that, but um, it's uh, Chinle is not quite ready that area for another hotel right now. But that that things may change, and and we hope to see Canyon Deshay once it gets opened up again. Of course, what's to be to be uh, in hopefully a need for another hotel. There. Um, and um, currently, not not necessarily right now. It's uh, um, uh, with the what the best ones in the holiday end between the Thunderbird Lodge there see, is certainly maxed out to occupancy. I think hopefully that's the questions, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Sapp. My colleagues, are there any other questions? twice or well, three times. Thank you very much for the stop and thank you very much uh, for presenting and accepting the invitation this morning. Uh, yeah. Have a good day. Thanks everyone. Thank you. All right. That, moving on down, colleagues, we do have item number D, Navajo Nation Oil and Gas Company. That, Navajo Nation Oil and Gas, are you on the line? Yes, Speaker. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can. Great. Uh, this is uh, James McClure, CEO of Navajo Nation Oil and Gas. 
Um, I just, I guess, my first question is: Is there my presentation materials? Did they make make its way to uh, to your desk? When did you send it? I guess it did, Mr. McClure, and that was sent out at uh, eleven twenty-four twenty-five this morning, colleagues. So the floor is yours, Mr. McClure. Okay. So can I just a one question, Speaker? Did you say that they that you did receive it? Yes. Okay. Great. All right. Well, uh, I've got. Uh, a few slides to go through. I apologize for the length, but I, I thought it'd be worthwhile to uh, to make sure I provided sufficient context. Uh, the first slide that I wanted to discuss, and first off, thank thank you to the uh, Navikia uh, committee for allowing me the time to talk, and also to the council members uh, who attended uh, our work session last week. Um, if you recall, one of the investment ideas that NOG had discussed last week was a potential acquisition of Elk Petroleum's interest in the Anik oil field. Unfortunately, uh, our offer was uh, declined by the owner of Elk, it's a company called AB Global. Uh, it was a sufficient offer, almost $200 million, that we had put on the table to see to gauge their interest. Uh, as I said, they rejected the offer and have informed us that they would would uh, prefer to stay in the field to continue with investment activity. There's still another 25 to 30 years of life in the Anif oil field, uh, and they, they they believe that there's sufficient uh, profitable investment opportunities to grow production and extend the life. Uh, I think my comment would be that uh, it is quite possible over the next three to five years that AB Global could have interest in exiting the Anif oil field, and this investment opportunity may present itself in the future again. But at this point in time, uh, we did not uh, include it in, in our uh, request for funds, uh, for ARPA funds. So with that, on slide number three, uh, I, I do highlight the three uh, categories that we would like to talk about and discuss today. Uh, the total capital request is, is $230 million. We anticipate or, or estimate that uh, revenues generated from these three projects could exceed $25 million annually to the nation and could create 175 to 200 new jobs. So the three specific investment possibilities are accelerated helium investment, uh, the second being new convenience stores, and then the third are associated businesses with, uh, with the oil and gas sector. And what I intend to do uh, in my brief comments is to go through each of these segments uh, at a high level and answer then any questions that anyone might have. So then on to slide number four, uh, the details of each of these business opportunities for the nation would be first to accelerate our development of helium on the Navajo Nation. And I'll speak to uh, what our current plans are and what this projected uh, opportunity might be able to do. But what we're requesting here is an incremental $95 million of capital. This would accelerate uh, our from our current plan NOG's current plan and deliver faster revenues to the Navajo Nation. This, uh, these incremental revenues are estimated at $70 million over the next five years, and those are from royalties, taxes, leasing bonuses uh, over the next five years. And uh, I think the key message here is to be able to accelerate means that the process of acquiring operating agreements so that and, and permits uh, would have to be uh, would have to be you know managed well through the council, through the minerals department and council to uh, for for approval for acceleration. The the second business opportunity is new convenience store growth. Uh, this this category is requesting 85 million dollars in new funds, which could generate incremental tax revenues of five million dollars annually, add over 150 new jobs. 
those new jobs would be in both new stores, big, big stores and small stores. I'll talk about the specifics in a second. And also a food, uh, two food preparation centers that we're contemplating to distribute traditional Navajo uh, foods and healthy food options. The, uh, the, the, the new stores, the new convenience stores would support electrical vehicles and potentially hydrogen fuel in the, in the future. And the final business category is, uh, is a request for $50 million. Uh, these funds could generate an incremental uh, royalty to the nation of $5 million annually. Uh, that The specifics of this, and I'll get into later, is to purchase uh, a, a hot oil truck, which is a tool used in the Anna field and in other oil and gas operations that NOG operates to deal with uh, with oil waxing that, that occurs in the well bore. And then a second business to to actually uh, plug and abandon and remediate well sites on the Navajo Nation and in the Four Corners area uh, that could generate additional revenues. We're also considering a bulk fuel oil business and a lube oil business that could support wholesale efforts around the nation. And then finally, an incremental ANA investment capital we're currently contemplating a new investment program in the Anna field, and we, we believe having some additional capital beyond our existing uh, uh, agreements that we have with our credit facility could expand uh, and, and accelerate growth in Anna. So moving to slide number six, uh, first question might be, why invest in helium or helium acceleration? Uh, helium Unlike uh, oil and gas activity, uh, it's, a, it's a unique uh, opportunity for the nation, could generate significant revenues for the Navajo Nation. Uh, helium is in, is, has a supply shortage in the United States and globally. And uh, it's, you know, the main purposes of helium is to uh, support several industries that, that impact humanity. Uh, so the healthcare industry being one of the major uses, users of helium in the MRI technology. And then with uh, semiconductors of uh, technology, they use that as a coolant. Uh, also in other, other, you see on this slide, other uses of helium beyond just helium balloons, as everybody's aware of, but it's used uh, in, in the aerospace industry and in uh, deep sea diving. Um, the helium system on the Navajo Nation historically has been found through oil and gas uh, exploration. So there is some small amounts of helium that are currently produced and sold today. And what we would like to do is expand beyond the, the legacy helium uh, opportunities and explore for new helium resources. Uh, I won't get into the technical aspects of how we're going to do that, but we, we feel confident that uh, our exploration model can yield uh, significant success and, and growth for the Navajo Nation revenue stream. On slide eight is just a, a map of where we're looking currently, and we've identified 37 prospects that uh, we would like to uh, move forward with, uh, with, with, with capital spend over the coming years. Slide number nine highlights the fact that the model that I'm about to show you is only 10 prospects of the 37 that we've identified. And the reason being that we've only included 10 is the fact that uh, it's, it's what we know we have the most confidence in right now. Once we start drilling and, and, uh, and being able to estimate ultimate recovery, that will give us more confident, confidence in the remaining 27. Um, again, helium, the helium uh, program, it generates new leasing bonuses for the nation delay rentals, scholarship payments, royalties, and then uh, payments in lieu of taxes or PILT. Uh, and, and then in addition, the activity the, the, that we spend with contractors generates a sales tax for the nation. The, the forward slides are going to highlight a base case, meaning what NOG uh, anticipates its, its current uh, capital funding can uh, generate with respect to revenues. And then this $95 million request could accelerate that program to additional revenues. I won't spend a lot of time on the pros and cons of the business. We can speak to that later. Uh, 
Uh, slide number 11 is a drilling schedule. It just really accelerates or, or um, highlights what we're attempting to do. The base case is a one drilling rig scenario over the next five years, and we're trying to do the activities over the next three years with multiple rigs. That ultimately will accelerate cash flow to the nation, which is highlighted on slide number 12. Uh, that the specifics of, uh, of that slide shows a red set of red curves and red uh, uh, bar charts that uh, is our base case. Again, that's with NOG's current funding level. This is what we anticipate we would, uh, we would be able to deliver to the nation. With an incremental uh, source of capital, we believe we can accelerate that, uh, those revenues in green and then what that then allows us to do is as we learn uh, about the uh, production capabilities of these helium reservoirs that we could then uh, add additional prospects which makes this business be more sustainable and not uh, fall off as you see in these graphs and so don't that don't let that alarm you uh, slide 13 is just the increment between the green slide the green curve and the red curve which shows that over the next five years, we could generate about $70 million of additional revenues for the nation. Uh, the key slide 14 just highlights the process for obtaining operating agreements on the Navajo Nation. And we were working closely with the council, with RDC and, uh, and the executive branch to ensure that uh, we navigate this process appropriately to be able to accelerate helium de uh, development. The next sec section is a uh, discussion around new convenience store growth. Uh, slide number 16 is just a, a, a graphic that showcases where NOG's current convenience stores are located. Uh, we co-brand with Chevron for three, and then we have, uh, have uh, the others are co-branded as Navajo Petroleum. Uh, what we've considered is looking at where are major tourist centers around the Navajo Nation that could support convenience stores or really support large scale convenience stores. Uh, slide 17 highlights some ideas that we've been uh, uh, working here at NOG. Uh, food preparation centers are right, currently we prepare food inside of the, our current convenience stores. And one of the ideas is as we could grow our footprint uh, is to potentially uh, build two food preparation centers which could supply our convenience stores. The convenience stores are broken up into two groups. We've got a big store model. Those tended to be locations that are in heavily trafficked, high uh, tourist areas, either that's I-40 or in the uh, Page or Monument Valley uh, region. Uh, and then the smaller store model is, is something that uh, we contemplate. We know that these are not gonna be as profitable as the big stores, but they could be provide more of a social benefit and reaching some of the chapters and communities that have requested convenience stores. Uh, I think that uh, looking forward and looking at green energy, whether that's electrical vehicles, solar, whatever uh, techniques we can use to, uh, to offset our footprint is something we wanna try to do. Uh, the site considerations, we have to look at all types of factors, infrastructure, uh, is there electrical power, water, sewer in the, in the area? What's the traffic volume for potential customers? Can we get our fuel trucks uh, to the location easily? Will vendors uh, also support the location by, because of the driving distance? Is there sufficient employee pool in the area? And then uh, safeguards around uh, moving cash and then public safety. Those, uh, those are site considerations we have to look at. Uh, we have a, an inventory of stores that we've included here. I wasn't planning today to get into the specifics of each. These are this is just an inventory of possible locations. Uh, we recognize that uh, that economic development, Navajo Nation economic development, has put forth some ideas for uh, locations and various convenience stores. So if if we're granted funding, we for sure would want to work with uh, with economic development on. Uh, ensuring that uh, that our locations are, are set to a priority. Um, more than anything, we, uh, we 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 recognize that there's going to be some locations that are going to generate 
uh, economic benefit for the nation. And we know there's others, others that are going to generate more of a social uh, you know, su- support for, uh, for individuals that are far away from conver- currently from convenience stores. Uh, the map on slide 21 is, uh, is, is, is a, just a placing 11 potential locations on the nation. And um, those 11 locations are, are, are we, we will have to work with the nation, work with the uh, council on, try, on finally trying to identify a landing spot. Uh, the capital requirements, $85 million dollars. That's spread out, uh, again, for the cost of stores, cost of two prep centers, and so forth. Uh, uh, staff additions, we anticipate about 154 uh, new jobs to be able to staff those 11 new convenience stores plus the two food preps. And then uh, slide number 24 highlights the uh, tax, rep- tax benefits that the nation could receive. Uh, the final category is the associated business category, and these are again is a, a request for fifty million dollars, and focusing on, uh, on on a number of associated businesses that the oil and gas industry uh, is involved with. The first being a hot oil truck uh, uh, business. Um, over the last number of years, uh, there was a significant amount of hot oil vehicles in the region, but they have migrated up north to uh, to Wyoming and Montana be- due to the oil and gas activity that's been going on there and the colder weather uh, that uh, drives those vehicles. But it's left uh, left us at the Navajo Nation and at the Anath Oil Field at times waiting for this equipment to be delivered. And ultimately that has an impact on our production, which ultimately has an impact on revenues that the nation would receive. So we are looking at purchasing a, uh, a couple of these hot oil trucks, bring them back to the region, and uh, and feel after talking to Elk, the operator of Anna, that we could have sufficient work to to keep these vehicles busy. And also, when you consider some of the uh, some of the oil and gas activity off of the Navajo Nation in the San Juan Basin, uh, Farmington area, we we're confident that we this could be a, a heavy, uh, heavily used piece of equipment. Uh, the other item that we've looked at is potentially uh, is starting a plug and abandonment business, purchasing a, a workover rig operation so that we can actually deal with idle wells. Uh, as we understand, there's over 60 wells on the Navajo Nation that are in need of abandonment uh, that that are not currently operated by by anyone. So we need to deal with those immediately, and then. And then in the Four Corners uh, region, we, we are aware of, of a large number of wells uh, that, that need addressing. Uh, the current administ- the Biden-Harris administration has included funds in their infrastructure bill uh, that could be allocated uh, for the actual abandonment of these locations. Uh, the first step is actually creating a business that could deal with it. So that's what the funds we're requesting today would, would address. Uh, then again, uh, the lube oil business and uh, and uh, bulk fuel fuel business. We believe that there's a, a, the ability to expand our wholesale business to the other entities on the Navajo Nation and uh, entities off the Navajo Nation. And then finally, investment in Anna. Uh, there are a number of projects that we have been informed by Elk uh, about that should be uh, on their budget in the next. Uh, over the next year, and these include a, uh, a converting their current power to self-generating power. Uh, we're working with NTUA on uh, on that possibility, and then uh, looking at additional drilling in the field to improve the uh, carbon dioxide eject- injection program that we have there uh, to ultimately improve ultimate recovery. So, in closing, slide number 28 again, just summarizes that these three investment opportunities, a helium investment, which is, again, an acceleration of our existing program, the investment in new convenience stores and a food and food preparation centers on the nation, and then investment in the associated businesses that, uh, that can support, be supported by the activity on the, on the nation by oil and gas companies. 
The capital request is, is in total $230 million. That should increase revenues by $25 million annually and create as many as 200 new full-time jobs plus contractors when construction is going on. So thank you for your time, and I'm open to answering any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, Mr. Parrish, and thank you very much uh, for accepting, first and foremost, the uh, invitation to be uh, with the uh, Navigate Committee today and uh, meeting the uh, requirements and uh, taking into consideration some big picture ideas. Uh, with that, colleagues, um, I don't have anybody in the queue at this time. Is there any comments or questions? One twice. Going three times. Thank you very much uh, for being with us this afternoon. Uh, Mr. Per uh, Mr. Perris, Mr. McClure, I just now was looking at gaming's uh, presentation. Uh, Mr. McClure, thank you very much for uh, being here with us. And thank you very much for donation of oil. oil oil and gas for uh, uh, presenting here today. Um, hello? Yes, yeah, speaker, thank you very Daniel much. So. All right, thank you, Mr. McClure. Delegate Daniel So. Uh, chairman. Yes, hello, sir. Chairman. I had a question for Mr. Parrish. Uh, Mr. McClure? Or Mr. McClure, I'm sorry. I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. Well, uh, no problem. I was looking at uh, I was looking at the next presentation. That's why. <laughs> Go ahead, Chairman. Uh, thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Tilla, to the members of the NABI committee, and the, to the presenters and all the folks that are on the call, and of course our legislative staff. Uh, Mr. McClure, what basically is the cost to build a convenience store with fuel pumps? What does it cost Navajo oil and gas? Okay. Yes, Delegate. So um, what we are estimating, there oh, are oh, really oh. the size. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. McClure. I'm sorry, Speaker. Go ahead. Go ahead. It, it, does that conclude your question? Uh, uh, no. The other aspect is uh, <clears throat> what is the aspect of uh, your company should be setting up a distributorship of oil and gasoline and um, diesel to basically distribute to the sea stores that are going to be going up. That would be the other aspect. The other is just the um, part about <clears throat> um, the ability of uh, Navajo oil and gas to basically build the uh, separators on the Anath oil field as well as being able to um, uh, set up a manufacturing line that will basically um, supply uh, other, other uh, operations, let's say in the uh, area where Hillcore is operating up in the um, north central part of New Mexico uh, as well. Um, the aspect of 
Oh, yes. The other aspect is, are you shipping all your oil to Marathon? And there was articles that they were going to basically shut down. Do you have alternative places where um, the oil would be refined into oil, uh, gasoline, and diesel? And then what are your uh, thoughts about uh, developing uh, propane distributorships? Because there is a great oversupply in the market and uh, the aspect that <clears throat> uh, maybe the oil uh, enterprise to diversify into propane if they uh, and so that is uh, part uh, asking about thank you thank you uh chairman uh, for that uh, question uh, for those questions so with that uh go ahead and go back to uh, mr mcclure at this time mr mcclure uh chairman uh, daniel so do you mind muting your phone Thank you, Mr. McClure. Yes, uh, yes, uh, delegate. So, um, thank you for your question. Uh, so, let me start with the cost of convenience stores. Uh, before COVID occurred, uh, we were estimating a new store, uh, a big store, which would be one that you might see along I-40 or in the Page area. Uh, we were estimating that to be $5 million, and we were estimating a smaller store, which would probably be equivalent to our store at, at Window Rock, to be around $2.5 million. Uh, the cost of materials has dramatically increased over the last year with COVID. Uh, so we're currently now estimating that a big store would cost $6 million, and a small store would cost $3 million. Uh, and as we anticipated uh, and, pre and prepared for this presentation today, we were assuming in our capital request that we would have uh, four large stores, four big stores, and then another seven smaller stores in addition to the uh, two food preparation centers. So that's hopefully that answers your question there. Um, your question about NOG as a distributor, uh, we, we, uh, we, we purchase our fuel from uh, you know different entities, uh, you know historically the Gallup refinery is where we purchased our fuel, and uh, with that with that refinery being shut down, we now purchase in other locations. Uh, so when we when it comes to our wholesale business, we have the ability to provide uh, you know kind of as a, work as a middle person between the ultimate uh, seller of the fuel, diesel or or gasoline. To the potential purchaser and and so we we have worked uh, with bloomfield as our location to purchase uh to purchase fuel in the past and uh, would continue to do that unless the gallup refinery is reopened uh and and ultimately want to work with the other entities on the navajo nation to be able to supply fuel for their needs in a wholesale uh type type of environment i believe your next question was around uh, manufacturing equipment um, I would say that our current business model is not to, to build our own equipment uh, because there are firms who do that much better than we, and we're actually not set up to build our own, uh, build our own uh, separation equipment out in the field. We, we tend to work with other contractors that, uh, who have the expertise to build pressure vessels. Uh, that's kind of a specialty operation that, uh, that we currently are not set up to be able to manage. Uh, but we do recognize that you know, pipelines are a, a route to market, and so we currently operate uh, the Running Horse Pipeline, where we ship uh, crude oil from uh, from the Anna Field to uh, to the Bistai area near Farmington to be able to connect to the market. Uh, and we have a gas pipeline that we also operate, where we move gas from the Farmington Four Corners area to Anna as for fuel gas. Fuel Corp's production is one that we've been contemplating. Uh, and how do how do you get their production to market? I know they they've been struggling to be able to get to market. There's a 
facility in Moab, Utah, uh, that's operated by a company called Paradox Resources that uh, has the, the ability to deal with the, uh, some of the contaminants in the Hillcorp gas. And so we've been working with, with Paradox to see how we might be able to transport their gas through our, through our red pepper line that we also operate. Um, you ask about Marathon. Currently, we do still ship to Marathon. Uh, Marathon did idle the Gallup refinery, but their pipeline connects to additional uh, refineries. Uh, the primary refinery that they're using is in El Paso, Texas. So we do continue to ship to Marathon. Uh, on a periodic basis, we look for other markets. Uh, we look to Salt Lake City and the refineries there. The issue is, is that you have to truck your crude oil to that location, and that, that adds an additional cost versus being able to ship via pipeline uh, where, we are, uh, where we're dealing with uh, you know, Marathon currently. And so there's no issues there. Even though they idled the refinery, we were able to bypass the refinery and get to another along their pipeline network. And then I think the final question you asked is around propane distributorship. Uh, we do sell pro some propane at some of our uh, convenience store locations. It's something that we want to consider in our, in our future model of new convenience stores to ensure that, uh, that propane is properly you know, marketed across the nation. Uh, we've also, and I, I was listening earlier to the uh, presentation from Nappy, uh, you know, I know there has been some requests that maybe our convenience stores be able to uh, market you know, hay and farm, farm equipment. So as we look to uh, potentially investing these new funds, that is something we would want to consider is all of the community's needs, whether that's propane, hay, farm equipment, uh, especially some of our smaller C-store locations that are remote, remote uh, like like our Blue Gap uh, location currently, that is uh, that is something we'd want to consider going forward. So hopefully I answered your questions, uh, and and thanks thank you for them. Thank you very much, Mr. McClure. That colleagues, any other questions? I don't have anybody in the queue. And we did. Uh, I think that was a. I think that was it, James. I know that you presented before numerous uh, committees. So, uh, thank you very much, Mr. McClure, and um, thank you for being with us this afternoon. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the committee. Have a good day. Uh, you too. That right, colleagues, let's continue on down. Next, we had KTNN, and as I indicated at the beginning, uh, they're working together with uh, um, Christopher Bacenti and uh, Broadband uh, as the cyber team. Uh, and as they did in the CARES funds, they've attached their uh, initial points and recommendations there. Uh, so we'll hear back from the broadband uh, unit and from Christopher Bersenti and the telecoms uh, individuals too as well. So with that, let me go ahead and continue on down to item number F. Uh, Navajo Nation Shopping Center. I think Shopping Center sent over one, right? Shopping Center, and we sent that out at 1034 again too. Is there anybody on from the Shopping Center? Good morning. Can everybody hear me? This is Nick Taylor from Navajo Nation Shopping Centers. Okay. What's yours, Mr. Taylor? All right. Thank you, leadership. Yeah, so I'll go. Uh, if I could ask the assistance of Mr. Rico, if he could please put onto his screen share our presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Rico. All right, so with Navajo Nation Shopping Centers, at the request of the speaker, we put together our American Rescue Plan. 
and our fund management proposal. So go, going on to slide two, I just want to provide a quick summary of what the contents entails within this presentation. So first off, I'd like to just talk about what shopping centers envisions as the Navajo Nation's business economic goal. And second, moving into how shopping centers fits into the mix and how we envision um, a long-term development on Navajo. Uh, third, uh, I just want to recap on the use of funds, uh, how the CARES Act funds were used versus the American Rescue Plan funds. And then we'll get into the shopping center's proposed projects, um, aka the fund management proposal. And then uh, fifth, talk about the unmet needs that shopping centers have identified. Uh, unmet needs either in the short term, a year or two out, then long term, uh, three years or more. And then some of the Navajo Nation systematic issues that we have identified that could help improve economic development on Navajo. And seven, uh, I want to identify the projects that we feel that shopping centers could participate in through partnerships with other entities. And eight, lastly, would just be uh, presenting a few of our existing projects and um, give a quick, quick overview of those. Now, moving on to slide three. So the uh, economic goal of shopping centers is ultimately to keep more dollars on Navajo and to retain those dollars and also to prevent slippage from happening on the Navajo Nation. So with shopping centers, currently there are 13 total shopping center units located across the Navajo Nation. Ten of those are owned by NNSCI, two of the centers are owned by the Division of Economic Development, and one center is owned by Diné Cooperatives Incorporated. So we are all um, have uh, different ownership in these different locations. Um, so some quick stats. So currently, for every dollar that comes on to the nation, typically 70 cents or more leaves the Navajo Nation. And an economic goal that leadership and business owners should keep in mind is that the goal should be to decrease that slippage. We should at least shoot for a goal of having less than 25 cents leave the Navajo Nation. And we view ourselves as a component to helping meet that goal. Slide four, please. So the Navajo Nation shopping centers are a long-term vision, and just to kind of lays out how we how we envision ourselves to be. So we want to continue to collaborate, and we want to see collaboration to make sure that the people or the net are well taken care of and we want to create economic viability for everyone. We want to make sure resources are used efficiently and build quality infrastructure for this ever-changing environment we're experiencing these days. Protect sovereignty through self-sustenance, increase access to professional resources for all, and attract new revenue resources, and you know, use data for better strategic development provide more locations for retail products and services, enhance community property value, and of course, it's always important to engage the next generation. So that's how we envision shopping centers um, position moving forward. Going on to slide number five. So they kind of frame the discussion and our outlook on how we envision the funds to be used so for Navajo Nation shopping centers, we're recommending that the American Rescue Plan funds be used for infrastructure expansion, chapter projects, and economic expansion. So looking at where the funds were used at for the CARES Act, um, the CARES Act, we received $714 million. Uh, most of that went to the Navajo Nation people through the Hardship Assistance Fund. Some went to infrastructure expansion, and some went to economic expansion. And also some went to Navajo Nation apartments. And that was uh, constrained. Uh, we thought there was a time limit to that, but that was uh, extended. 
But with this new round of funding through the American Rescue Plan, we're looking at a bigger pie. Um, north, uh, the amount proposed to be between one and two billion, right around there. And so we want to focus to have these funds to be focused on infrastructure expansion because our goal with these funds would be to do economic expansion. Um, economic expansion through um, increasing the professional resources, generating new sources of revenue for everybody, focusing on new real estate development to so actual buildings, and promoting business growth among all businesses. And of course, we'd like to see some funds go to chapters so that way they could have their projects going forward to enhance the quality of life for all. Moving on to slide six, please. So our, our vision for economic expansion, so for shopping centers, we recommend a collaborative strategy in using the ARP funds among the various business entities. And lately, in previous presentations, we're just seeing how funds could be used for one entity. So on this particular slide, there's a red box drawn around of projects for NNSCI. So um, that's one category. But in addition, there are better ways to use the funds. And we want to, with these funds, maximize the economic value and output. And those can be achieved through uh, partnerships and collaborations on various projects. But going back to what project shopping centers can focus on, uh, ideally, we, we, we're in a position now to where we could possibly build out two new shopping centers with these funds. Uh, one in the uh, Chinle area and one out in Eastern Agency. Uh, two would be we would like to promote public messaging. We, we've learned that a lot of Navajo individuals get a lot of their um, information from visuals as they drive along roadsides. So we'd like to enhance their um, information base by uh, establishing electronic billboards that are across our shopping centers. And with, uh, within our property portfolio now, with all the properties we own, we have some vacant lands and we have space for new build-outs. And so we'd also like to request some funds to build out those existing spaces within, within our fence area. Uh, four, we also see the need for uh, some investments into renewable energy at our shopping centers and to accommodate uh, electric vehicles in the form of those charging stations. And five, with mm -hmm. our existing NNSCI infrastructure, um, a lot of our properties are very much um, aged. They're at least uh, 20 to 30 years old, and a lot of the infrastructure at our existing centers need to be upgraded. So those are some of the projects that we have in mind, uh, totaling $124 million. In regards to partnerships, uh, we could work with the, the NAT Chamber of Commerce for their, and help them develop their Navajo economic recovery centers at a cost of $24 million. And then with DED, the, we've identified some potential projects at which we could possibly partner with them on. Um, their total amount of those projects is $137 million. And then collaboration. So collaboration would just be um, having shopping centers be a part of discussions or the planning process or actually recommending how funds be used. Uh, for the following areas, uh, warehouse storage buildings. You know, we we learned that through the pandemic, we do need storage space, storage buildings. Um, we've also learned that rural addressing needs to be addressed. Uh, we need to um, have work with chapters so that way they can establish their um, addressing. Um, and 10, location data generation and analytics so right now we talk about development, but we're missing a lot of the key inputs to talking about um, data, um, data and also where to locate buildings and infrastructure. And of course, uh, we need to do some feasibility studies to locate the optimal sites for buildings, and then utilities expansion for new sites, um, possibly working with NTUA on that, and then uh, to address the healthy living, healthy lifestyle component, there's the walking trails and exercises. So those are some of the items that we're considering um, and, and using some of the funds. Moving on to slide number seven. So 
So the unmet needs of the enterprise, I categorize these for the short term into three areas. For shopping centers itself, uh, we'd like to enhance the public messaging capabilities through the electronic billboards at all of our 10 shopping centers. And two, we'd like to see uh, more warehouse storage and distribution sites. So a lot of the smaller businesses were running out of storage space within their areas, and uh, we were kind of getting packed because a few of them wanted to bring on sh storage shipping containers, but we couldn't accommodate them. Uh, we, well, we'd like to see new business incubator sites to spur retail economic development on the Navajo Nation. And we'd like to expand the space availability at our existing shopping centers through development of our pad sites. So those are some of the immediate needs that we'd see. As far as uh, what is applicable to all enterprises, uh, we do recognize that physical addressing, having addresses that are recognized by the U.S. Postal Service is important for us. Uh, right now, a lot of those businesses don't have uh, physical addresses to which they can receive packages in overnight or two-day, three-day shipping. Everything is currently received at the post offices. Um, then also, again, there's limited data for location analysis, so we need to just make sure we have the right maps in place and the right demographic data readily accessible to us. And with the uh, retail businesses, there's been a huge need for vehicle auto repair shops. Um, up and coming is going to be the introduction or prevalence of electric vehicles. And with that, they'll need charging ports and stations. Uh, more cafe shops and lounging areas with Wi-Fi access. And printing and copy fax services. Some general retail that we see needed, of clothing, apparel, medical supplies, livestock supplies, and access to lumber. Slide eight, please. And then thinking long-term, as far as economic development needs, land. Land is the one of the um, primary needs of, our, of any plan for economic growth. Um, land specifically designated for commercial development. So shopping centers, you know, we, we'd like to have a map or at least have access to a map of the Navajo Nation that identifies all existing commercial development locations. Because right now we're just having to do, do the process of going one by one and meeting with chapters one-on-one -on -one to see if they have a land use plan and extracting information from those plans in regards to where a commercial development site is. So just having one uniform map of where all those locations are will greatly speed up development. A second, we also like to see uh, land use plans incorporate uh, zoning for mixed use development, having within a particular parcel of land, um, office buildings, residential, and retail mixed into one. So which brings us to real estate. So long-term wise, we do see that the nation is lacking retail buildings at uh, various sizes, so th those will be needed. Uh, we do n always know there's a big demand for office building space, so th those will need to be built out. Uh, again, with the mixed-use development, we'll need businesses or buildings that consist of retail, residential, and office use all in one area. And Along with real estate development comes the location analysis data. So we need uh, the 2020 census data in regard to demographics, you know, what the population changes are, um, are going on and occurring. We'd like to know where existing infrastructure is. So right now it, it takes time for NTUA to provide us this information. Um, it'd be really great if we could just have an online system portal um, where we could just access to these maps quickly. Um, same thing with NDOT, we have to request average daily traffic counts from NDOT, which takes time um, to assess the traffic flow and volume. So if we could have access to this in a readily available area, it would be um, speed up economic development. In addition, we'd like to have some workforce data too. So those are some of the long-term needs that we'll, we see from real estate side. As far as the social aspect, of course, infrastructure, we need to have the questions answers, answered of, well, is there enough water to accommodate a new development uh, for a particular community? If there's a community boundary or chapter boundary, have the infrastructure to um, accommodate three new office buildings or one new hotel. Uh, those kind of questions we need to have answered. 
So we want to make sure there's enough sewer, lagoons, electrical um, supplies there. Um, also, we want to focus on creating safe places for the public. So we're looking at enhanced security at these new development sites. And um, always an ongoing concern for everybody across the nation is the presence of the police force. So we'd like to see an improved presence among the police force in the Navajo Nation. And uh, given the pandemic and the rise in uh, joblessness and unemployment, we've seen uh, more panhandlers at our shopping centers. And so a lot of these individuals, uh, they're going through um, substance or alcohol recovery. So we'd like to see uh, treatment centers for them. And uh, lastly, in the social aspect, we'll just be incorporating uh, near any kind of development or shopping center uh, walking paths and parks uh, to promote that healthy living and lifestyle. Uh, slide nine, please. So some of the systematic issues we see from an economic expansion viewpoint is that with the Navajo Nation, uh, the Navajo Nation, we at least need a, an updated comprehensive economic development plan. Uh, we need to begin to incorporate mixed use land zoning and the land use plans that chapters are putting together. Uh, the Navajo Nation, of course, needs more homes developed. Uh, physical addressing is needed across the Navajo Nation. And uh, the updating of the fuel excise tax to account for the increase in electric vehicle use on the Navajo Nation should also be considered. Um, electric vehicles, you know, they'll be running on electricity and they won't be consuming as much gasoline. So the demand for gasoline, in theory, should fall in the Navajo Nation as more ve electric vehicles are used. And we're seeing that now. We see that tourists do like to come through the Navajo Nation on the tourist belt there. And uh, they're beginning to use electronic electric vehicles more often. Uh, departments within um, the Navajo Nation, uh, we see that DED does need a chief economist. So it would be good to have that on board as part of their team to help formulate an economic uh, development plan. Um, we learned that the Office of the Controller needs to remit payments faster to businesses and vendors. Uh, we had quite the holdup on a lot of payments in our end, too, from OOC as we worked with various contractors uh, last year. And it's kind of put them in a bind in a tough position. Uh, C. Navajo Land Department, uh, we recommend they expand their GIS, their Geographic Information Systems capabilities. Um, I've made a request to have a map made about three weeks ago, and I spoke to um, the person there, and they said that they were a one-man team at the moment trying to serve the needs of all the enterprises and the government offices for map making. So um, we do need a lot more GIS analysts there. Um, and, of course, improved communication and collaboration among all the departments and enterprises. And this is a good starting part of uh, getting that done. Uh, moving on to slide 10. So earlier I mentioned partnerships uh, in using some of these ARP funds. So one of those partnerships we've identified is with the Diné Chamber of Commerce. So the Diné Chamber of Commerce would like to work with us to help build Navajo Economic Recovery Centers. Um, there's six total recovery centers that are being proposed at an estimated cost of four million each. And these centers would house uh, various business individuals or groups to where they could collaborate and share ideas and uh, put their businesses into action. So those are some, one potential partnership. Moving on to slide 11. The Division of Economic Development uh, presented their plan last week or two weeks ago, and within their plan, they identified a few retail districts and marketplace locations. So shopping centers, we feel that we could partner with DED on these various projects. Uh, I'll quickly run through them. It's just uh, seven projects listed. One would be the Crown Point Hotel Retail District, Many Farms Marketplace, the Mayamira Navajo Retail District Residential Estates, the Red Lake Navajo Pine Marketplace, Sheep Springs Marketplace, Upper Fruitland Retail District, and Tuba City Marketplace. So shopping centers, we feel that we're uh, pretty specialized in knowledge of how grocery stores operate and how to 
uh, structure leases with them, and we have a good feel for how um, customers interact with one another and also tenants. So it would be a good idea to have shopping centers partner with DED in um, getting these projects done. Moving on to slide 12. So some of the existing planning documents we have on hand, uh, we have the Glittering Mountain development. So Glittering Mountain is an uh, area located next to the Twin Arrows Casino Resort at a Twin Arrows, Arizona. And their shopping centers holds approximately 70 acres of land. And we already have a mixed use master plan um, outlined for us and we have a proposed development costs for all that acreage in the range of 400 to 500 million dollars. Uh, this project was put on hold uh, due to the pandemic, so we're beginning right now to reassess what should be the focus for the next uh, first phase of development for us. Moving on to the next slide. This year, Shopping Center's focus on the grocery store development side is uh, working with at our location, Navajo Pine Shopping Center. It's an existing shopping center located in Navajo, New Mexico. And there we made it a goal to have a grocery business operating inside that uh, shopping center before the end of this year. So right now we've been making improvements to the property um, and also working on the building exterior to make it uh, more appealing to customers. And we're also currently working with a Navajo individual who's uh, most likely going to be the grocery store tenant there. And uh, from this, we hope to learn how to uh, further refine our knowledge about expanding grocery stores to other locations across the Navajo Nation. At the same time, we want to be able to collaborate our partner with the other groups to identify new sites and develop new real estate. So th that's our that's our focus right now is just where can we develop new real estate and how can we enhance the quality of life for people in the Navajo Nation. At the same time, you know, we need to identify areas where we can collaborate with other enterprises or departments to make sure we get these uh, products done quickly and make good use of the ARP funds. Uh, that concludes my presentation. Um, the last slide 14 is just my contact information for those who either need to give me a call or like to email. And in addition to that slide uh, 14, there's also the contact information for the Shopping Center's board chair, Ms. Felicia Adams. Um, I'm now open for questions. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Taylor, and thank you very much uh, for that presentation and accepting the uh, uh, invitation here. Uh, with that, colleagues, I know that um, uh, Mr. Taylor um, oversees the CEO of uh, Navajo uh, Shopping Centers, uh, and uh, that uh, um, presentation did go out. And if there's other entities, uh, uh, or organizations. This is one of our longest standing enterprises. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Taylor, for that presentation. Colleagues, at this time, before I go to the floor, I don't have anybody else in the, in the queue at this time. Are there any comments, questions? Or no one is texting. Speaker, Delegate Daniel So. Chairman, uh, the floor is yours right now. Thank you, Cecilia Otto, members of the Malpikia Committee, uh, participating in this work session, Otto, uh, Mr. Taylor, and the Navajo Nation listening public. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Taylor, we realize that some of the shopping centers you currently operate aren't uh, great 
revenue generating uh, facilities. And in in this uh, presentation, you didn't talk about how you would either diversify or um, go in another path to make the most uh, maximum feasible use of the current facilities that are basically at the lower end of the revenue stream. I'd, I'd like to see uh, what other uh, strategies you have in place. Um, the other is um, expansion into new areas and perhaps contracting with other um, other entities uh, where there are, let's say, in the Eastern Agency. Uh, your main corner operator is Bashos. And once you get past Crown Point, then Bashos is, is non-existent. And so there are a lot of independents. And there are population centers, high areas of um, traffic. And uh, what is your um, strategy to reach out to the uh, far reaches of the Eastern Naval Agency? The other aspect is you don't talk about uh, how much money you're going to return to the nation. Part of the monies that the Navajo Nation is going to receive is basically to create revenue stream for uh, the Navajo Nation government. And so that's the aspect I and, and including every other uh, uh, presenter, I didn't see, say, we need this amount of money over the next 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, this is what we'll return. And, and so that's the part that I'm listening for. And the other aspect is uh, speaker. We've heard presentations by economic development saying they're going to build these facilities. But when we look at state governments around around our area, even city governments, county governments, federal government, they aren't building the sea stores. They aren't building the shopping centers. So in, in that aspect, I think part of our work is to create a um, an atmosphere of uh, these uh, economic development endeavors and how can investors come and say, we've got 15, 20, 30 million dollars, we want 200 million. We'll, we'll, we'll match you. We'll leverage with you to give us a chance to give us the opportunity to build the shopping centers, the sea stores, uh, the fueling stations. Uh, that's what I'm dearly listening for. Otherwise, we it's it's we might as well be given a grant, and and that doesn't meet the purpose of the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, speaker, uh, that would be my statement and question to Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Chairman, thank you very much. That 
colleagues, any other comments, questions before I go back to Mr. Taylor? If there's none, Mr. Taylor, maybe you want to comment on uh, Chairman Daniel So's uh, question and then possibly a close out too as well. Great. Can you all hear me just fine? Yes. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the question there, Mr. Daniel So. In uh, your first question about how to maximize the use of our of the uh, our center, our existing centers, given that. Some of them are not revenue generating facilities. So uh, to answer your question, we want to maximize the use of our centers through building out new space, new space for retail use or either office use. But our emphasis would be to build out new space at our existing shopping centers where there's a land available to do so um, to offer retail entrepreneurs or business owners the chance to run a business within our shopping center. So, and that was included in our presentation under the build out of existing shopping center spaces. And that was estimated to be at $35 million. And so that would be, uh, for example, Delcon, Delcon Shopping Center, we have acreage available for development, and we know there's a hospital going up there, and we want to um, attract new tenants, but to do so, we need to build a space for them to run their operations. And so that's where we'd be um, maximizing use of the funds, because we're already um, going to be developing on an existing land base and then with, um, building off an existing building. And your second question of expansion into new areas. Well, uh, our our original intent last year was to identify a lot of the new areas we could possibly develop in or expand to. And uh, Eastern Agency has, for the most part, been a been been at the back of our minds, but it's coming more to the fro forefront. And that was mainly uh, addressed to me through some of the concerns I've heard from some friends that live out in Eastern Agency. Um, so right now we are tentatively looking to Ojo and Sino to possibly um, reach out to them and begin exploring the possibility of putting up a small neighborhood shopping center there um, using these ARP funds. And you know, my quick assessment of why Ojo and Sino, well, Ojo and Sino is kind of a central location in the area for the chap surrounding chapters like Naizi, Counselor, Pueblo Pintado, and Torreon. You know, they're all within a 20-mile vicinity of Ojo and Sino. And I, I do know that currently Navajo families in that area either have to go to Bernalillo or um, Rio Rancho or Cuba or Farmington for their groceries. So you know, just having that access to their... Uh, and these areas are about 50-plus miles away, too. So... You know, if we were to provide a central location for a shopping center in Ojo and Sino, that would greatly benefit everybody. So those are some of the areas we're looking to expand. Um, another area would be Chinle. Uh, the chapter of Chinle has approached shopping centers a couple of years ago, and they're wanting to build a new uh, shopping centers um, just within their chapter boundary there. And so we're gonna we want to continue and re resume talks with that chapter for. Um, building out that new space. So we're in the early stages of development with them. But um, going to the bigger picture of, well, what other areas can we develop on? Um, the right now, you know, shopping centers, we're, we're lacking that access to information and data um, to make good strategic decisions on where businesses should be placed or new shopping centers. And that's what we're really um, asking for, too, is more collaboration between Navajo Nation apartments that hold this information and also other enterprises that are, have uh, development plans so that way we can uh, better collaborate and make use of all the funds. And the third question of uh, how about shopping centers returning dollars to the Navajo Nation? Um, one primary area where we do return dollars is through the remittance of tax, sales tax dollars collected. 
So each year, you know, we usually remit to the uh, tax commission, um, and all, in addition with all our tenants, uh, about five to eight million dollars in sales tax um, from all the transactions that happen within our tra- shopping centers. And uh, when focusing on our existing properties and talking about building out, uh, if we were to get funds to build out, um, you know, these build outs would require the use of construction workers and we'd be providing some temporary jobs in the form of construction. And once the spaces are completed, um, the spaces will be leased out to businesses and these businesses will most likely um, hold spaces and slots for permanent employment for local Navajo people. So those are the responses I have to your questions there, Mr. Daniel. So Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Taylor. That colleagues. There was nobody else in the queue. Oh, there is. Honorable Brown. Uh, yate speaker. Oh. Oh, yate ado, um, 24th Navajo Nation Council, Sananta. Yate sen ado, thank you to Navajo Shopping today. Um, again, um, after meeting with Navajo Shopping Centers before, I have the same request. Um, I know that I've met with you over a year ago um, with one of the new commissioners um, for the Kanta Township. So we do appreciate the work on paving not just Kanta Shopping Center, um, Bash's parking lot with your shopping centers is I want to continue to pr- promote um, the shopping centers across Navajo Nation on um, basically a facelift on all of them. But I want to specifically talk to the Kayenta Shopping Center um, as we're aware that, you know, it's not just a shopping center, but I received a report from oil and gas this past weekend on that Kayenta is a big um, revenue generator for, for, for them. So I can imagine the bashes and the shopping center in Kayenta is, rev- is is bringing a lot of uh, revenue to Navajo shopping centers, incorporated as well as um, for for Navajo for for tax dollars, and um, <clears throat> so it's really helping the the community. But um, I, I have the same request. The last meeting I had with Navajo shopping centers um, is. You know, to have a faith to to work with um, Bash's um, company and Navajo Shopping Centers to um, fix up the the, the uh, yesterday I was at K into Bash's and I saw um, how a lot of things were breaking down and when you walk in it it actually looks pretty dirty. I know that's on um, Bash's, but let's work on together. And um, I did request um, to to have a meeting with Bash's. And again, this is to not just all local people in Kayenta surrounding area. So I think the Kayenta Bash is the next shopping center is in Gouldings or it's in um, Tuba City. And then Cortez Farmington would be the next closest one. So if you can imagine the shopping center um, in Kayenta is, is producing and we do have a lot of tourism even when the nation closed down and today there's still a lot of visitors going through there. Um, and then, um, you know, the other thing that I requested at the time also is maybe instead of a Starbucks, we do have our Navajo owned coffee companies to invite them into the can to bashes and set up shop there and, you know, have them purchase their own Navajo. I know there's Diego coffee. There is the, uh, the Anabas tea, if we can promote our Navajo um, owned companies that sell coffee, that sell tea, that um, our Navajo people that sell um, bake items as well to be sold in the stores. And I know that I'm a good patron of Starbucks, but I think 
the other thing that I always hear from our visitors when I talk to these tourists trying to do my homework on what they would like is they really want to have like an authentic as much as possible a Navajo experience when they travel through Navajo. You know, they really like the Navajo signage. They like to eat and drink, you know, local products. And um, that's really promoting ourselves, our people. And I see like in Kayenta, we do have some open spaces that when I know there's a young person, there's a, a family in Kayenta who wants to open um, an arts and crafts store. And I think um, allowing them and giving them, you know, tax breaks and um, the ability to, I know that when people, the first year is probably the hardest for um, our entrepreneurs, our local Navajo entrepreneurs, and how do we encourage them and how can we expedite the process for them to open um, locally? And um, if we can promote that, I want to hear your model um, your plans, your future plans in the next five to 10 years on, on some of these existing sites um, that are very successful, like Kayenta. Um, our people, that's the only grocery store we have there. Um, you do make a lot of um, money from, from Kayenta Shopping Center. And also, um, the other part to this that I'm really interested in is um, no matter how much we say and promote also by local, by Navajo, um, I a big proponent of that. I support that. However, you know, we will always, and at least in the next five, 10 years, 20 years, I see our people will continue to shop in the border town. And this is where I would like to maybe I'm um, thinking outside, you know, there's a big um, building inside the Farmington Sears mall are, you know, not just Navajo, but a lot of people shop in these border towns. You know, the traffic is there. Um, you know, that shows where people shop. And I know that a lot of Navajo dollars go to Farmington. And um, what is, uh, are there any plans? I saw that Navajo Arts and Crafts, you know, open and in, in outside of Gallup. And what about Navajo Shopping Centers? Do you have current properties um, off Navajo where the current um, dollars are being spent um, by many people. You know, Flagstaff has good traffic, Farmington. Of course, I support the local economy as well, but thinking strategically, what would that look like? The other thing would be in your shopping centers across Navajo would be um, a thank you to Mr. Yazi making these recommendations from Kansas Township is on the um, charging station. I think a lot of people um, when you see the travelers that have Tesla and now, you know, Toyota, BMW, they are, um, they're, they're no longer fossil fuel. They're using, um, you know, batteries and we need these charging stations. Maybe you can collaborate with Navajo Nation Oil and Gas and, and Navajo Shopping Centers can come together and work with Tesla and others. The other thing that I see in, in thriving communities are um, solars, maybe put solars on top of these Navajo Shopping Center parking lots. I do know of well, there are Navajo owned solar companies that you can collaborate with and make it a project. You know, think about looking at ARPA. You know, there could be shaded areas, parking lots where vehicles are cool and they are um, fueling and giving electricity to, to the shopping centers there and um, creating um, clean energy with the solars, uh, making um, the, the areas cooler on hot days also, um, and then allowing people to, to, to even um, park there. You know, we see truckers, we see RVs that spin overnight there. And talking about RVs, you know, and in, in, if you look at, as I'm sure you have a study, Navajo Shopping Centers, where the tra the current traffic is, I don't think that that needs to be heavily marketed. Um, the the traffic already is marketing itself um, with the with the southwest and the tourism belt, the um, business um, areas. I think that's where um, the concentration can also um, you, you know again number one would be the facelift there the Canta Shopping Center 
and then charging stations um, for those areas. And the other thing was, I want to hear your thoughts um, on how you're creative on, is there even conversation on, you know, tapping into the border town market where money is already flowing into? Um, I know previous this morning's conversation, um, um, they mentioned that we would have to pay taxes there and we already are um, <clears throat> as Navajo shoppers. We are, we are, we are providing the street lights, the sidewalks, the wonderful, beautiful buildings in border town, a lot of Navajo dollars going out there. Why not have one of our own enterprises recapture some of these dollars? Because do you foresee Navajo just one day stop shopping? Maybe we should try that. Maybe on the first of the week of the month, we can um, show these border towns that they do thrive on Navajo dollars. Um, you know, that would be really good. We, we know. So that, those are some of the, the thoughts. And then listening to my communities, um, in my three communities, these are the recommendations that they have. And that would be it. Thank you. Navajo Shopping Center. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. That, colleagues, any other comments, questions before I turn it back over to Mr. Taylor? Uh, Mr. Taylor, if you want to go ahead and respond to Honorable Brown, and then uh, then we can go from there. Uh, floor is yours, Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Speaker. Dr. Damon. And Mr. Really? Brown, for the... Did I hear Mr. Freeland? Yeah, I was asking the Speaker if you put in the cue box. Thanks. Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Taylor. No worries. That, Mr. Taylor, the floor is yours. Thank you. Again, Mr. Brown, thank you for the comments. So I do have some good positive updates regarding the community of Kayenta and the Kayenta Shopping Center. So uh, with, uh, within our corporation, we do have a capital improvement plan strategy outlined, uh, which includes uh, conducting exterior renovations to our key large shopping centers, such as Tuba City and Kayenta. And so this year, shopping centers were preparing the architecture and engineering diagrams for an exterior renovation at the Kayenta Shopping Center. So that's uh, um, exciting for us because we do know that that center does need an, a facelift, and it does contribute heavily to the image of the Navajo Nation through all the tourist traffic going through that area to Chaco Canyon, Monument Valley, Canyon de Chez, and all the popular tourist attractions on Navajo. And within the uh, shopping center itself, the Bashes grocery space. Um, so I just recently had an update with Mr. Johnny Basha regarding the Kayenta Bashes. And I learned from Mr. Johnny Basha that um, there are plans this year to have the interior of the Bashes store updated and remodeled. So um, that's exciting and forthcoming. So I'm not too sure exactly what month they'll be starting that, but I was just told towards the end of this year. And yeah, we do have plans for other similar enhancements in regards to exterior renovations. We do want to do um, the larger centers, uh, Tuba City, uh, Kayenta, of course, and also Shiprock, and eventually the other smaller centers is what we'd like to do. Um, question about cafes and how they're emerging as a new trend or new area to support economically. So um, right now we have been in talks with a few all cafe shop owners or even um, travel type, travel trailer type setup owners. And one of the main challenges that we're experiencing here in um, trying to lease out space to these individuals is that our current tenants that we have on site um, have within their leases non-compete clauses that uh, prevent any kind of competitor that will um, eat into their sales. So uh, that's one issue we're running into right now. Um, so 
Like for example, McDonald's, they have a, a non-compete clause to where they won't allow anybody that sells coffee on site or any kind of baked goods. So those are some of the challenges that we need to learn how to work around. And um, one solution would be to possibly uh, develop an entire new shopping center, um, not just um, a grocery anchored one, but one that's not anchored by a grocery, but more like a strip center to where um, there are no non-compete clauses in place and businesses are free to set up as they wish and sell any other um, goods and services. But in Winter Rock, uh, we will be working with one business owner that's going to be operating a travel trailer type setup, coffee and goods, a big good sales. So we just uh, received their business plan and we're entering into the early phases of lease negotiations with them. As far as the uh, concern regarding off property purchases, so the last big purchase that shopping centers made was the Glittering Mountain acreage. So that was purchased a couple, uh, quite a few years back. Um, since then, we have received um, offers or inquiries for other properties, specifically in the Gallup area. Um, so I know Gallup property owners there are looking to sell a few of their locations. And uh, we have reviewed their offers, but just at the moment, given shopping centers' current capital structure and cash balance reserves, um, a lot of these offers and their asking prices are, are, are a bit out of our grasp at the moment. But we are continuing to review and assess any kind of offers we receive. And we're kind of, um, that'll be the next phase after we do the exterior renovations for us to uh, focus on. Ideally, we'd like to make the necessary improvements and redevelopments to our properties and thereafter build out all our existing space. And then after that would be to look into the acquisition of off-site properties and surrounding border towns, even other states, and hopefully eventually do the international purchasing across countries. And then uh, with your question about renewable energy, so within our plan presented today, we do have a line item for renewable energy and charging ports, and that specifically addresses the need for providing solar parking canopies at a few of our shopping centers. So we'd like to use some of the ARP funds to build those out or find a group that does so and work with them to have those built out. And of course, uh, to provide low cost energy to tenants and provide shade and uh, some nice aesthetics to the shopping center itself. And uh, one challenge though that we're learning is that um, although these energies are gonna be a lot less in cost compared to traditional um, services provided by utility companies. Um, the next challenge for um, is uh, getting tenants to agree and sign up for these um, solar parking canopy power purchase agreements. So that's going to take some educating and just some um, general meetings with them to kind of persuade them to do so. Because at the moment, uh, we shopping centers cannot force our tenants to enter into these power purchase agreements for solar parking canopies. So that's gonna. Uh, that's one of the challenges that we're we're seeing at the moment. Um, th so those answer your questions there, uh, Mr. Brown. And again, thank you for them. If you have. Thank you very much. Ms. Taylor, with that, I do have uh, Honorable Freeland and then um, uh, Honorable Brown. Honorable Freeland. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I'm still messing with star sticker. Seems to be getting the best of me today. But uh, I got other things. Uh, uh, colleagues and staff, as well as Mr. Taylor, uh, thank you for the presentation. I, I want to kind of talk about Crown Point, uh, but I'll come talk to you directly about it. Um, it it's nice to hear Kayenta getting a facelift. Um, we need a facelift as well. And it'd be nice to get a coffee shop in Crown Point. It'd be nice to have that, um, you know, what my what my brother mentioned as far as a Navajo owned business coffee shop, maybe um, as well. Um, you know, we have the hospital right next door. A lot of the 
personnel do go to the bastions for lunch. A lot of our people go to bastions for lunch in Delhi. And, um, you know, I, I run into a lot of our, my constituents there. And, and, always, and always, I always get, you know, um, uh, recognized when I go to that bastion. So, hey, I, I just wanted to, it's kind of a social hub. And, and uh, you know, it would be nice if we could be considered for our Facebook as well. But I'll come talk to you more about that, Mr. Taylor. Um, in regards to the development in Gallup, it would be nice to get a potential, um, I don't know if you have a market analysis or feasibility available, but there's also, um, you know, consideration for the mirror area as well. So something to maybe consider, talk to the Division of Economic Development about, um, look at the mirror area and how that could be developed potentially. Um, it'd be nice to set up, um, you know, some businesses within the within the area of Gallup. Um, a lot of our people go to Gallup. It's, it's hustling and bustling every Saturday. Um, now that McKinley County is in turquoise, and it seems like um, the first of the month, the, 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 the golden rule is always to stay away from Walmart. And, you know, you don't want to go to Walmart because you can be standing in a long line. But, you know, that's another consideration is how can we compete with the big box stores if we even, if we even can. Um, it'd be nice to set up some sort of stores there um, that, that would be uh, close proximity to our Navajo people as well. Um, even a general store, something with the likes of Navajo Shopping Center, um, Alice Tanner, something like that that would be um, you know available for them. Just something to consider as well, the uh, My America Development or My America, uh, Opportunity Area. So, uh, But I'll come talk to you, Mr. Taylor, maybe next week about Crown Point more. Um, I really want to start thinking about how can we enhance that area and how can we look at giving the fashion there a face with. Um, you know, it, it, it's a hub and our people, uh, you know, come from all areas, all four directions to go to that, you know, to that store there too. So um, just something to consider as well. But ADS speakers, thank you. There I go with my star six again. Thank you. thank you very much. With that, let me move on back to Honorable Brown. Uh, yeah, it's Inanna. Um, I forgot to mention um, with the that is going on, and I don't think um, I think this would be really beneficial to Navajo shopping centers is a uh, collaboration with um, Change Labs. I'm saying um, I'm mentioning them because they are already um, working with um, many up and coming entrepreneurs, Navajo um, owned businesses, even 501c3s, nonprofits, and for profits. And they would need space again, like the um, arts and craft vendors. Um, and I know that our people love like little areas where they can have almost like a flea market uh, marketplace. I, I see that in the bigger um, metropolitan areas where there's that space like a few little eatery places shopping um, where people join and they have choices um, I think like especially again in our area where the tourism industry is very apparent the other thing you would be um, again can only has one shopping center bashes but maybe shopping center we can you know work with others um, on there is a vacant building into the old trading post that used to be the Napa store recently, but now that building is vacant. Can we look, can we take a tour of that and maybe turn that back into a trading post run by shopping centers? The building's already there, all the infrastructure's there. Um, it would just basically need a, an uplift, a facelift also, but that mark um, competition is really healthy for the market. The other part is I think whoever capitalizes and makes plans for, I don't know um, if you are familiar with the the spot between um, Kayenta going towards Tuba City um, before in between Kayenta and Black Mesa, there's a spot there called Tayet. I don't know if um, you have ever eaten at that cafe and there used to be a little hotel, but since then it burned down um, the cafe and then people are taking apart um, the old buildings there and um, leaving trash, but that's a beautiful area where 
whoever sets up a cafe or a little shop there or a little lodge will be making money. Again, it is a beautiful location. And again, our visitors like to be in that environment. You know, we're, we're also working on our trails. I'm going to continue to meet with, and we do have um, magazines that will be coming to, um, uh, uh, coming to our communities in Kayenta, and they'll be doing bike rides. We'll be working on trails, hiking, and again, we want to capitalize on the current um, tourism market. So we do have a Tri-City Tourism um, Initiative that we've been working on with many others. And um, again, we are missing out on millions and millions of dollars. We're not capitalizing on that. We are watching the dollar come in and leave. Um, and then that would be great if we can um, do something with that spot right there um, where it's say it cafe was the Anastasia Inn. Um, if, if maybe I'll invite you to come out. I did invite um, vice president to come out and do a tour of that building. Maybe you can have a meeting if you already haven't with change labs with Navajo nation oil and gas with even Navajo chambers of commerce and, in, and see and where the silos are going on and where there might be duplication with enterprises. But instead, if you all put your head um, with, with us, we can put our heads together and think of how to, because that's where the revenue will be generated. So I think that's the number one um, immediate plan would be anywhere there is any type of revenue generation. And again, your study analysis will show you where um, the pattern of, of tourism and also um, we do have that also, like my brother said, we do have a new hospital there in Kayenta. So um, the employment has gone up and has, has over um, double, almost triple with the IHS there and we'll continue to grow. So that's um, our forecast. I um, mean, you know, looking at future nursing homes um, and then also um, continuing to add to our little airport there. Um, so if you would like, um, we can have a meeting with Kanta Township and Kanta Chapter, Denahoto, Chilchimbito, Old Jato, Shanto. Shanto has been really active with the tourism industry as well as our business owners that are already doing the job. So we're not saying create anything brand new, it would be the existing um, there. So those are, are really prime locations. So I invite you within the next three weeks um, when president, vice president is out there, um, I've talked to him and his staff. So I'm looking at dates, but I'll definitely reach out to, to all of you. Again, the Net Chambers of Commerce, uh, Navajo Oil and Gas, Navajo Shopping Centers, vice president and our chapters to look at these areas on, on because again, the, the infrastructure is already there and say it has all the infrastructure also. And the other thing would be to have our business owners tap into the natural gas that's going on there. So that would be an invitation to NTUA with the Q star gas line that's going through Denahoto, Kayenta. And that would be really good for businesses that will lower their, um, bill, their, their utility bills, et cetera. So those are some of the thoughts. Um, I know these are a lot of planning and process. Uh, and that's basically it. Um, yeah, thank you all. And the other meeting would be with Change Labs, with who they are, the up and coming, and the established businesses also as the incubators. It sounds like when we listen to all these reports the past couple of weeks, there's a lot of work that's already going on. So it will be wonderful for um, enterprises, organizations within Navajo, around Navajo, to share these ideas. And, and come together and move forward on them. And I think that will make when you do this presentation as a group, as almost like a consortium of businesses, as a chunk with the commerce, the, the, the Net Chamber of Commerce, that would be really strong. I'll definitely, and my colleagues will, will look at that and support that. So those are my thoughts. And again, these are the thoughts coming from my chapter in the township and our, our, our people that are out there wanting and they, they have dreams and let's help in, in making them a reality. So a lot of the work is already done again. So thank you, thank you, speaker. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Brown and Honorable Freeland and it seems like there's more of comments and 
and I don't have anybody in the queue. So, um, Mr. Taylor, I don't know if you want to say some closing remarks, um, but uh, again, thank you very much for being here with us today. Yes, I would like to say some closing remarks. Speaker Damon. Go ahead. Go ahead. Orders. Presenters, uh, fellow presenters, and also uh, listeners, thank you very much for your time. And we appreciate the questions, comments, the feedback. We will continue to move forward and work together. And uh, Mr. Brown, I will look out for that invitation and I will make myself available to conduct a tour at the sites you mentioned. And uh, Shanai, Mr. Freeland, um, yes, let's meet together soon. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Taylor. I thank you very, thank you very much to Navajo Nation Shopping Center for being here with us this afternoon. And thank you for your team. And most importantly, thank you for your presentation. And I, we look forward to having future discussions with you. And uh, thank you for the breakdown. If we have any questions, uh, we'll definitely hear back from the staff. But uh, And if you have any updates uh, on some of those cost analysis, uh, make sure to uh, immediately inform us um, on that information, uh, Mr. Taylor. Uh, so, again, uh, have a good day, and uh, thank you for being with the Nampakee Tick Committee. With that, colleagues, let's continue on down. I do have Navajo uh, Times next, but Navajo Times informed us uh, through their uh, Mr. Arviso that they're not going to be presenting anything. Uh, so we'll go on down to Navajo Generating, uh, oh, Navajo Generating, Navajo Engineering and Construction Authority. Sorry, colleagues, it's already been a long day. It's probably three o'clock. This is NECA. I know NECA has uh, helped us out in the last CARES funds, uh, particularly on the build out of a lot of the bathroom additions. It was awesome to see some of those photos for some of those uh, um, individuals getting bathroom additions for the first time. So. Uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and kick uh, the floor over to uh, NECA. I don't know who's speaking. I think uh, we have uh, Bo Nigren who's going to be speaking on behalf of NECA. And Mr. Nigren is actually here with us in the chambers today. So thank you very much, Mr. Nigren, for being here with us. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, so without further ado, let me go ahead and hand the uh, floor over to you. Yeah. Hello, Yate speaker. Aro Hia Aro Daisono Sangi Asi Pahin Sendo Hodo Mzono and Dahat Ado Ila Nas Mishada de Nesiki and Yeh I Kat Kushi Tail Kedi Enterprise the Nan Mishdan Denigi Ado a hot o at the Dignis down no Nahata in Kitchen Hoda Ila Ado Sloan Hi Hoja Navajo Engineering and Construction Authority So Hoja Enterprise and Eat Longer the Neh the Kaya Pakal one date, At this moment in time, I'm not sure if our, I know our CEO had a meeting over at N12. So if he's on the phone, I'd like to give him the floor and then uh, we'll continue the presentation. So we've, uh, Mr. Brett Grubb, CEO, General Manager, NECA. Okay. Uh, star six, Brett. So um, <clears throat> I guess when, when uh, our CEO, general manager, gets online, we'll, I'll definitely give the floor back over to him. And then, uh, Brett, while you're – if you jump on the phone, just don't mind to interrupt. So, Iyate and Hildeshins, T.A. Bove Nigren, and Tachi means do naras uzu basis chin do tori chini dashi che do naras uzu i dashi nale le re mesa. Jasmine Blackwater Red Cares Act 
so the first thing, first and foremost, just want to say thank you to everyone listening and uh, we're very honored here to be able to present for the Navajo Nation Council NABI Committee. Again, my name is Bhuvan Nigren and I'm the Chief Commercial Officer over at NECA and I work with the CEO General Manager who will be talking here in a little bit about some of the things that we were able to accomplish in such a short amount of time. So with that being said, I just kind of want to see if the uh, General Manager CEO is online. Brett? Okay. Um, I think he's uh, he's still trying to get online. I know he just got back from our Kaylee Wheatfields project, so he's trying to get on the phone. So once he's on, we'll continue, and then I'll kind of cover some of his sections on this presentation. So again, uh, some of the lessons learned with the CARES Act was that we were able to work off a, a single list, and we were able to collect all the homeowners' information and the services that they really needed the list was initially generated by IHS. So IHS has the master list, the SDS list. And we took that list and we uh, we worked through it and we made sure who has what and who doesn't have what. So with that being said, we were able to do all the assessments. We visited all the homes and then we acted as the general contractor construction manager for the entire scope. We also worked with a uh, Navajo architecture firm and Digis Design Studios to help us developed a set of plans that were standardized because we wanted a set of plans for bathroom additions to where whether NECA was self-performing the bathroom additions or if we were working with a subcontractor, a Navajo subcontractor. Through this project, we worked with 14 Navajo subcontractors to where we helped mentored them and we helped them guide through the through them through the whole process of either a bathroom addition system, water line, or septic system. And so that's kind of the scope that we worked on. The magnitude, we definitely covered the whole 27,000 square miles, various locations. I know we did about over 120 septic cistern systems. We did over 30 water lines, and we did a total of 85 bathroom additions to homes that really needed uh, home uh, bathroom additions. There was it ranged from Vietnam veterans to Korean veterans to ordinary people to where they just didn't have the services to actually use a bathroom. A lot of the homes that we served still had dirt floors. So some of them had dirt floors and our carpenters had to be very adaptive to how to connect to existing hogans and whatnot. So using some of those challenges, we were able to develop our own inspection forms. We were able to collect a lot of photos and to be able to share that through a Google folder with the whole team. The whole team consisted of Division of Community Development, NTUA, and we coordinated with IHS. So it was a whole team effort to get that done, and we're very appreciative to work with those entities. So, again, uh, short, and then the, as far as moving forward, um, I'll ask uh, 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 to see if the CEO is online. If, he, if he's online, we'll definitely uh, give him the floor. Um, 
Um, so some of the things that we're suggesting for the ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act, is to definitely try to have a more collective approach, the same thing that we did with the CARES Act. Because at NECA, we're very, we, we treat ourselves as a team player because we work with DCD, uh, IHS, NTUA, Water Management Branch. So we definitely, whatever projects that they're proposing, we're going to try to definitely be the support to make those projects happen. And <clears throat> our suggestion is that we simply work off of one master list. And then by working off of one list, we will ensure no overlap and or confusion that could be created by working off of more than one list or map and working as a whole and standardizing the whole assessment process ensures all necessary project information is provided and accurate. The reason being is we want to make sure that we try to hit as many homes as possible without too many entities going to the same home. So if we can really suggest that we work off of one list that will definitely um, make things happen so again, um, I know that on, on the, on the, as far as NECA, we're not really asking for any funds. We're kind of just being the role of trying to um, help uh, the entities at B, um, try, trying to help the entities at B build their projects. So, and um, as we continue to work with DCD and NTUA to select some of these recipients to receive services um, um, from there we would uh, use the names and coordinates and site layouts and existing conditions to see who would get what and how we would build it so if you're listening and you're well aware of so if you're well aware of um uh, uh, someone who needs a bathroom addition, a cistern or a septic or a water line, I would definitely coordinate with your local chapter officials because I know DCD is currently collecting information to try to get data fed and uh, organized. So some of the things to think about as you're, as an audience or a leader is to make sure that if it's within a half a mile of either a water line or a power line, keep that in mind. And then if it's way further than possible, then they're going to need a cistern system or septic system. So, um, so with that being said, keep that in mind and really reach out to your chapter officials and try to get those projects coordinated. And the reason why we really need a clear assessment is to really understand what kind of appliances that they're going to need. If they're too far off the grid, to where the power line's too far, then they're gonna need propane appliances for uh, water heaters or a heater, a space heater. If it's hooked up to an electric, then they'll definitely take an electric water heater and electric heater. And the information definitely helps with the proper material being procured because at the moment there's <clears throat> definitely a material shortage all over the country. So making sure that we do have what we need when we show up makes things a lot easier and so that initial assessment will definitely be a a, a a big win for all of us all the way around and so moving forward again i'm kind of just going going into actually how to just um, look at projects or projects that are feasible and to see when you're reviewing a project or a scope Definitely the GPS coordinates or photos definitely do help. And then, so that's kind of the logist of my presentation is definitely just trying to think about these projects in clusters or trying to figure out how to group them together and to just make sure you're collecting the GPS and photos. So from there, we would definitely take it into a Google spreadsheet and and uh, Google Maps and map everything together and try to keep everything together. So with that, um, speaker, I know that uh, this was more of a process on how to do an evaluation or to look at projects. And as far as us, um, as NECA as an organization, we didn't really approach this as um, trying to secure funds or to try to figure out how we could use ARPA internally. 
more of just we wanted to express our gratitude to enterprises or divisions seeking to try to make projects happen that we if you need help then we can be there for you and uh reach out and we look forward to any comments or questions so speaker thank yeah. you oh thank you very much mr Nigerian. thank you very much for being here with us too as well and it's good seeing you um colleagues uh, i know that the, there was more formal process and as indicated, uh, they're not asking for anything uh, specifically from the ARPA funds, I guess, collectively to build out in Navajo Engineering and Construction Authority. But uh, my one ask, Abu, uh, is uh, I, we're still coming together and I think we're, we, we're supposed to have this meeting this past Monday and it was recommendations for uh, internal process. Uh, if there was any recommendations from NECA that uh, you're looking at some of the things that have helped slowed uh, down the process, maybe some ideas or recommendations uh, for changing some of the internal processes and what you see uh, working together with NTUA even, or working together with any of the other enterprises or even working together with just the Navajo Nation 164 process. Um, that's what I, I'd really like to hear from NECA too as well. And maybe uh, we invite you, what day do we reschedule that day for? Um, I, think, I think we're gonna be working at that um, uh, the week of uh, the 18th. So uh, maybe the Wednesday the 19th, we'll have that meeting because that's critical, uh, May 19th, that's critical in order for us to go ahead and have our processes uh, put together and forth and really trying to say, okay, if we're gonna draw down these funds in a timely manner, we, there's, you heard it yesterday from our former leaders, one of the, I think a couple of them said, we need to cut down that red tape because it does take a long process to get uh, some of our projects completed. So that's just one thing I'm asking you. And I know that you guys had some recommendations in the past and maybe we could bring you guys back in for those recommendations too as well. Go ahead. I definitely do would, uh, as far as NECA, we'll definitely be in, in attendance to that meeting because I know that with NTUA's effort last year, during the month of December, there was a waiver that was produced to where we could do the right-of-ways and the cultural assessments after the fact. So that definitely helped us streamline bringing water lines that were within a thousand feet of most homes, which usually typically take a lot of processes and clearances to happen. So we definitely did do that and we were able to do 30 water lines in the month of December. So I think that was a good feat. And if we could try to duplicate something like that for the residential connections. And then I think as far as planning purposes, I know um, some of the big issues has always been the big, I can't, we call them the big four. It's uh, water, electricity, broadband, and roads. And I think if uh, council and some of the and leadership is thinking about it, then I think there really needs to be a big effort to try to get a lot of those right-of-way clearances and projects identified and trying to pave the way for the next six months to get all of that done so you get a real solid three years of construction to get those things done so again a hat speaker uh, for giving me the opportunity to respond to your question yeah thank you very much with that colleagues uh, i know that uh, you might have some questions too from mr nigri and his team members that might be on the phone with him uh is there any comments or questions right now for uh neca Speaker Freeland. Yes, I'm a Freeland. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, colleagues and staff, Nada, Nada, Ms. Nagrin, good afternoon. Kila, Kila, for the presentation. Um, I appreciate your your um, straightforward um, words and, and appreciate, look forward to Nika helping out uh, with more of our connections through uh, water lines or especially bathroom additions. That's a big one. 
Freeland, we, we lost you. Oh, he might, he might, uh, he might be um, going over a hill. Hold on, Honorable Freeland. Mr. Speaker. Uh, Honorable Freeland. Mr. Speaker, this is Brett Grubbs with NECA. I finally have reception where I can call in. Okay. Just checking in. All right. Thank you. Uh, we were just listening to Honorable Freeland. I don't know if he's on the line. If not, let me go back to the floor first because if Mr. Honorable Freeland is going to get back on the line. I just want to make sure he... Here's your response when he calls back in. Is there any other questions, colleagues? Sorry, Speaker. Lost my call. Go ahead, Honorable Freeland. Uh, I was just saying, I was just yeah, I'll make it quickly. I, I was just saying it's really heartbreaking to hear that when our Navajo people are, are homeless or they, they're in dire need of a home. And, those are the kind of uh, situations that we need to address. So homelessness, it does occur. It does, it is, it is rampant. It, it does exist on the Navajo Nation. So I visited my eight chapters these last three days, and I, I did come across that. So, um, Adia, speaker, uh, colleagues, thank you. Hey, thank you. That uh, uh, there's nobody else in the queue. No one questions. Mr. Nagar, let me turn it back over to you, and maybe. Uh, uh, Okay. Yeah, the uh, Mr. Speaker. So I'll answer half the questions, and then I'll have our CEO really give an in-depth um, what we're doing with the vertical division at NECA. But to answer your question, Mark Philly and I, I, we definitely do resonate uh, with some of the things that you're saying. That there is a huge need for bathroom additions. As over the four months that we did 85 bathroom additions, some of the people's lives that we literally change because you'll walk into their house, dirt floors, this house is maybe 50, 60 years old, and then they walk into their bathroom, which is complete modern ba bathroom addition and full amenities. Their light, their faces light up. And the quality and the craftsmanship that really went into some of these bathrooms really have changed people's lives. And then again, your question about the housing, uh, the same issues with uh, bathroom additions is definitely still needed. As far as homes, there's also another really big need, and that's one of the things that the CEO and the board of directors have really been tackling on heads-on with their vertical division. So I'll hand, hand it over to Brett, our CEO, and he can really talk into depth on what we're doing with the vertical division. Thank you. Thanks, Boo. Go ahead. Mr. Forgers. Thanks, Mr. Speaker, and all council delegates and invited guests. I uh, apologize for calling in late. I was traveling, but I uh, want to thank everyone for inviting NECA to per participate in the meeting today. And, Boo, how far along did you guys get through our, our agenda and our presentation? Uh, uh, Brett, we were able to get through it, the whole presentation. So now it's just oh, Q&A. Okay. okay. 
So as far as the as far as the vertical divisions, a year and a half ago, NECA was able to change their plan of operations to where not only can we provide services for all of the civil requirements on the Navajo Nation, but we're developing crews and processes to where we can actually start doing home construction and even some commercial construction on the Navajo Nation. We currently, the bathroom additions was a great start for us to not only find uh, quality people and quality subcontractors, but we were able to start our vertical division uh, basically on the ground floor. And it, it was able to find people that were excited to make a difference in people's lives. So our main focus, instead of doing just bathroom additions and changing people's lives to that extent, we want to be able to provide an actual home for the entire family to enjoy instead of just a bathroom. So that's our next phase as we go through the vertical division is to, draw, <clears throat> is to try to develop and work with the other enterprises to where we can actually provide more than just a bathroom addition for the people in need out there. Um, there's been talks. We had great talks going forward okay. and because of the COVID everything was derailed the and we're actually having to restart those conversations, but everybody is still enthused. Our board of directors is behind the opportunity. Uh, they're pushing us to acquire and get the equipment and the people that to, uh, to be able to perform these services for the Navajo Nation. Thank you. That's all I have to report at this time. Thank you very much. Snugger, go back to you. Yeah, okay. so, and I think this brings it back home to, to kind of add on to Mr. Grubbs' comments too, is, is that when we ventured out into uh, the vertical division, I know the, the board of directors and there's a lot of leadership out there that really encouraged us to go in that direction because as you are all well aware of NECA, we bring from uh, distribution major water lines to residential water lines, to lagoons, to mini lagoons, to Elgin systems, to septic systems and whatnot. So the next question that was asked was the biggest struggle some chapters really have was the whole bathroom addition package. So by adding the whole bathroom addition vertical group to our organization, now we're able to provide a full-fledged one-shop system so that now a chapter official or a Nav an honorable Navajo Nation Council delegate or the president's office and vice president's office can really rely on NECA to just provide a complete system to where since we are your construction company, this is the Navajo Nation's construction company, our quality has to be good because any one of our leaders can hold us accountable because we are part of the Navajo Nation. So we felt like if we take this on, this is a good benefit. And I've heard a few chapter officials through some of the areas that we've served. They are very appreciative because they know that NECA owns the whole system from the water coming in and the water going out to the actual facility that the people use and there's only one place they need to call if there's ever an issue. So and that's one thing that we're very proud of. And I know that through Brett's leadership and the board's leadership, we're able to really accomplish some really good things. So, speaker. Oh, yeah, as well. That colleagues, so there's no more comments, questions. I just wanted to say uh, thank you very much, Mr. Nagra, and thank you very much uh, uh, to your team and to uh, everyone there, CEO, and um, for being here with us this afternoon. I know uh, some of those bigger challenges uh, are ahead of you and uh, uh, with this coming up and all that uh, information coming down the pipeline, but we just did schedule that. So it is on the 19th, we invite you back for some of those recommendations and we look forward to that discussion. So again, thank you very much to NECA for being here with us this afternoon and moving forward um, in helping the nation. That colleagues, uh, we do have uh, Navajo Nation Gaming Enterprise who's on the line now, I think, and uh, we'll move, move on down. 
NNG for yours at this time. Yate, Mr. Speaker, can you hear me okay, sir? I can. Very good. Uh, Yate, thank you so much for the opportunity to share some information and present to the 24th Navajo Nation Council. Uh, we appreciate everybody's uh, time and, and, and the opportunity to have some discussions. Uh, what we've put together is a series of uh, projects that are ready to go. Uh, the construction projects are shovel ready. Uh, we've also got some uh, opportunities that we've identified that we believe working collaboratively with leadership and in partnership with our sister enterprises uh, can help us uh, start uh, providing immediate financial returns to the general fund. Uh, we know that the pandemic, uh, the closure of NGS and other factors have uh, made that a, a higher priority for Navajo Nation and we're anxious to be able to uh, provide support in partnership in that area. Uh, as we know, the enterprise was structured initially to create jobs and provide long-term investment revenue uh, back to the permanent trust fund. Uh, but those times, that's still important. But right now, what's more important is, is building this infrastructure, uh, strengthening the Navajo Nation, and creating a better quality of life for the Navajo people. And uh, that definitely takes more cash and more resources, uh, some of which we can deploy yeah. right away, and then others that we can continue to increase and grow as we go forward. Uh, the... Uh, the projects and things that we've identified have been independently evaluated uh, by several different external industry experts and consultants. Uh, we've placed in a Dropbox file for uh, the members of the 24th Navajo Nation Council about 10 different documents. Uh, so there's quite a bit to, uh, to be able to go through and digest, but the important takeaway uh, for today's discussion is just that these projects have been uh, looked over, evaluated, cost it out and we have a very good sense of how long it will take to execute them and what the resources that are required in order to get those done. There are uh, four different major components that we're gonna talk about today. Uh, these projects can be done as a group or the nation can choose to implement one, two, three, or all four. So we've got lots of different options there in terms of combinations and how this can work uh, for the Navajo Nation. Uh, the, what I want to share is that sales tax benefits are not included in the numbers we'll share today. Uh, the value of new jobs being created is not included uh, in, in these returns right now. And then also we have, um, we've established tremendous partnerships with Priority One and Priority Two vendors. Uh, we are committed to continuing to grow their businesses with us or we've got a track record of doing that with our development and we wanna be able to continue to do that. The benefits for priority one and priority two vendors are not included in the numbers that we're gonna share. If the nation chose to aggregate all the different options that we're presenting today, uh, the total funding uh, for that would be $316 million, but we wanna share that over 15 years, the first 15 years, the incremental benefit back to the nation would be $685 million. Uh, these numbers, again, are based on analysis and, and uh, our strategic plan, independent assessments and evaluations. Now, the benefits of the money, uh, the funding options being uh, um, uh, capitalized up front, that doesn't mean that the benefits end at 15 years. Those go on and on into perpetuity. Uh, but the reason we wanted to do, uh, provide a, 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 a benchmark is say, hey, over this period of time, this is how much you can expect to, uh, to receive in return specifically. As time goes on, our assets continue to grow and improve. That number can easily increase as we go forward. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members of council, we provided a, uh, a document uh, dated April 28th that's signed by our board chairman, Mr. Quincy Nate and me, uh, it's a 10-page uh, a document that we will go through the highlights with for you right now. Uh, and uh, we sent that to Mr. Rico and uh, also to uh, Chief of Staff Yazi this morning. So we're hoping that document can be displayed uh, on your Zoom screen. 
to start off, I want to share that under executive summary, uh, this enterprise in its first 12 years has returned $289 million back to the Navajo Mr. Nation. Birch. Yes, sir. This is Speaker Damon. Uh, the, the document that you sent to us is it's highlighted private and confidential, and uh, we're, we're live streaming right now. Understood, sir. Understood, so, sir. Okay. So you still want this document? Is it just getting sent to the members of the council? Uh, Mr. Speaker, if we may, sir, if we could at least ensure it's emailed to the members of council, that would be terrific, sir. Okay. Colleagues, that was sent out when? Um, I was sent out 10 minutes ago. We're just making sure that we went through Mr. Parrish. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Did you guys get it? Is that the same one? Mm -hmm. Colleagues, uh, Mr. Speaker? Yes, um, I'm just making sure that we received it, but I haven't, I have not received it. Colleagues, have you received that document from Mr. Rico? Hello? Colleagues, member, Navigation Committee members, have you received a document from Mr. Rico? Uh, in, in that document, it's a, it's a, it's a memo from uh, Navajo Nation Gaming Enterprise. Speaker, this Helena. I, I haven't received anything yet. Speaker Callan, I did receive some document. Delegate Stewart, I did get the document. Okay. Speaker, uh, speaker, I received a ten-page document. Okay. From Gaming. That's that document, right, speaker, Mr. Speaker, uh, this is so good to over here. Y'all receive a report too. All right. Yeah, Speaker Salona, I just it just came in. Got it. Thank you. Okay, colleagues. That, this this document is not going to be posted on the uh, Zoom, but it, it, colleagues, just if you want to follow along, uh, just be reminded, Mr. Parrish, uh, that uh, we are still live uh, streaming as this is an Abbey work session. 
Um, and if there's any reference, any details, uh, we would probably have to go put it on a, a NAPCIA committee meeting where we can discuss this further if there needs be. So with that, Ms. Parrish, the floor is yours. Mr. Speaker, sir, thank you. Members, thank you for your patience. Uh, so as, as we had shared, the enterprise in its first 12 years has, shared, has, uh, has returned $289 million back to the nation. About $186 million of that has gone back into the permanent trust fund. Uh, again, that's very important because it's providing for the financial future of the Dinah people. Uh, but those monies are restricted or encumbered in it. It makes it difficult to be able to utilize those I funds. Mean, uh, for other immediate needs on the Navajo Nation. Uh, we've come up with some options and ideas for being able to uh, provide $300 million over the next 15 years in uh, payments to the Navajo Nation General Fund, in addition to continuing our payments to uh, the Gaming Distribution Fund. Uh, and those payments over the next 15 years would be $130 million. So on a combined basis, those payments would be $430 million. Uh, in addition with the other projects that we're proposing again, most of which are shovel ready. Again, we have all our assessments and market and feasibility studies completed. Uh, we would be able to create 645 new full-time jobs uh, as well as 3000 construction jobs. Uh, those jobs in, um, in terms of permanent full-time positions would be in at least 17 different career fields, uh, creating a wonderful opportunity to return uh, young Navajo college graduates back to the nation uh, to work in, in one of its own enterprises. Uh, the development of the new facilities and products and product lines uh, that we've created are also helpful in sustaining uh, economic growth, community development, and, and helping to make the Navajo nation stronger. Uh, we've got some outstanding partnerships with our Navajo sister enterprises, NTUA, NHA, NECA, NAPI, NOG, uh, shopping centers, uh, um, uh, NACE, which is Arts and Crafts, Navajo Times, KTN. We're working very closely with all of those uh, enterprises already, as well as the Navajo cattle ranchers. Uh, we've got partnership programs in place that we're benefiting each other and helping each other grow uh, our businesses collectively. And that's part of the strength that we bring to this equation and reduce the risk associated with reinvestment in the enterprise and in these projects. Uh, again, I did touch upon the priority one and priority two vendors. Uh, we have over 25 relationships just in construction alone uh, where we've helped these vendors uh, develop new skills in terms of uh, learning how to uh, apply new technologies, uh, accelerated design and construction schedules, and um, expand how they communicate, acquire uh, product and, and uh, materials and things, and execute their projects. Uh, moving over to page two, uh, this enterprise has always been able to help with new utility infrastructure development. We've got over 35 million in infrastructure development at Twin Arrows alone. And uh, that infrastructure allows for the introduction of all kinds of other new Navajo Nation businesses uh, that, can, that don't have to worry about uh, developing that infrastructure on their own. It exists, it's ready, it functions at a high capacity uh, and, and very proficient. Uh, so we're also interested in integrating more renewable energies and facility energy management systems uh, with the infrastructure and the operational plans to maintain the long-term stability of all these facilities. We also can assist with uh, the Navajo Nation with increased utilization of existing water rights. Uh, we know that that can be a challenge. Uh, right now, there's a lot of uh, uh, back and forth uh, about water rights and things going from Utah all the way down to Phoenix that affects uh, the Navajo Nation. Uh, we've got three high capacity water wells uh, that are functioning out of Twin Arrows. We have the ability to drill two more. Uh, Navajo Nation, or our Navajo Fizz uh, Soda Company uh, is one way that we can uh, expand on this initial success we've had with uh, this brand new product line and company. We can start bottling water uh, for the entire Navajo Nation. Uh, we have the ability to expand into diet sodas, energy drinks, teas, uh, and all kinds of other options 
associated with a, a brand new beverage company. Uh, it's important to share that we've already had been approached uh, by Pepsi Bottling. They've pitched to us a, a regional uh, business development program where they would like to uh, participate in a, a regional distribution of our Navajo Fizz products. Uh, they wanna get behind that and help us not only continue to develop new uh, flavors and new product lines, but they're very anxious to put Navajo Fizz in convenience stores, in grocery stores, Walmarts, uh, Bashes, and uh, other um, grocery stores and chains that they service. So there's tons of upside with that project. We have proof of concept. There's almost no sunk cost on that. We have a high quality product that's been vetted with nutrition labs for stability and content, and uh, it's ready to be expanded. Uh, we also have the ability to support a uh, new workforce housing. We know that's a huge challenge across the Navajo Nation. And in uh, speaking with Mr. Wasetta and talking with the, the Navajo Nation Housing Authority teams, one of the big challenges with some of these larger new developments is sustainability of the facilities. And the nice thing is with, with our enterprise, we have team members that uh, can, uh, um, can go ahead and occupy these facilities right away. They're making good salaries and wages. They have benefits. Uh, so they're there to be able to provide rental or, or, um, or mortgage income on these properties and uh, make it easier for them to live in the communities that they're helping to build along with the businesses that they're helping to grow. Uh, we also have our signature uh, Let's Build a Business Internship Program. Uh, we're very, very proud of this. And this is a, a commitment that we've made to uh, college graduates in the Navajo Nation and developing uh, the younger Diné uh, students as they're coming up out of school. Uh, this has been an excellent program for us with the Navajo Blue Travel Plaza. And we're committed to uh, making this opportunity available to students on every single development project that we continue to engage in. Uh, in addition to all these things, these projects and, and the, um, the programs that we're outlining in this document, they make it possible for us to continue to enhance our existing facilities so we can maintain the profitability and productivity and the jobs uh, associated with those enterprises so we can continue to move forward. And then ultimately, what happens as a result of all these, these projects is we create an overall economic output increase of approximately $1.5 billion over the next 15 years. Uh, so we know that we can help on a global standpoint with executing these projects. We know we can provide more, more cash and more revenue back to the Navajo Nation that can go into the general fund. So there's greater flexibility in utilizing those revenues. We can create more jobs. We can strengthen the investment that the nation has already made in this enterprise and continue to grow this asset and help our sister enterprises and leadership continue to, to nation build. Uh, if I may, I'd like to ask uh, the members to go ahead and turn to page three of the document. Uh, so the first item that we're talking about in order to create an immediate infusion of cash being able to go back to the general fund is uh, utilizing the uh, ARP money uh, to go to the UUFB account that could be used to convert our loan uh, from uh, debt to equity. So essentially the Navajo Nation pays itself that money. Those monies go back into the permanent fund. And then what the Navajo Nation Gaming Enterprise does is instead of making interest and dividend payments back to the permanent trust fund, those monies are automatically diverted right into the general fund. Uh, so current uh, debt service payments are 5 million per quarter. Uh, as soon as we can reopen, uh, fully, at least at 50% without restrictions on roadway access, we'll be able to be positive cash flow and start down that road to recovery. Uh, so this is a, an opportunity to um, build on the success that's already been created with this enterprise. It's very low risk. The money's going back to the nation initially itself, and then we continue to pay the nation by putting money into the general fund where there's greater flexibility for utilization. Uh, as you can see, uh, moving down page three, uh, how would this exchange of debt for equity work? Uh, and you can see where the payments would come from. Uh, so under item C, uh, where it talks about the, the years and then how that 
that's money going to the gaming distribution fund. So that increments, and that's part of the existing senior loan agreement. We would just carry that component over and continue uh, to make good on that commitment. But the big thing is the 15 years. And again, the payments don't stop at 15 years. These payments would continue uh, indefinitely. Whereas once we pay off the loan agreement, then that obligation is not there any longer. But once we make this commitment and we put this money into the general fund, this just goes on indefinitely as long as the uh, enterprise is, is, uh, is operating. So the total benefit from being able to do that is, is $430 million over a 15 year period. If we can move over to uh, page number four, uh, the second option that we'd like to present is an equity investment in NNGE projects to stimulate uh, new jobs, new economic development, and increase payments back to the Navajo Nation. Uh, we believe that the projects that we have outlined uh, can generate uh, approximately $35 million in aggregate EBITDA on a consolidated basis per year. Uh, we recommend that we would go ahead and, uh, and have a 50% split uh, with the Navajo Nation and take 17 million of that EBITDA and provide that back to the Navajo Nation. That could go back to the general fund or wherever the, the nation wanted to commit those funds. Uh, this is the first time uh, that the nation would be investing with equity in the Navajo Nation gaming enterprise. Up until this point, Everything that's been invested in, in the enterprise has been loans and debt, which have uh, interest that we have to continue to repay. In this way, by making an equity investment, this speeds up the development of these projects. It helps us create those jobs sooner. It protects the investment that the nation has already made in the Navajo Nation gaming enterprise. Uh, we've briefed the council on uh, other tribes that are looking to build and develop in the Northern Arizona market, uh, which is where we have one of our largest investments. We've got to take steps to capitalize on the opportunities that are available to the Navajo Nation to expand, to create new jobs, create more cash flow, and provide more money back to the nation. So the dollar amounts you see for these six different projects are laid out. Uh, for the Fire Rock permanent facility, that 15 million doesn't represent the whole uh, cost of developing a permanent facility, all that does is replenish the money we had previously saved and set aside for developing that new asset. The other monies are for the full cost of developing those projects. You can see the corresponding number of jobs that are listed, and then the annual EBITDA or profit that would be generated by each property. Uh, again, we believe that this makes a lot of good business sense, of not only for the enterprise, but for the Navajo Nation. I'll share with you briefly as you move down page four and into page five, we had Wells Gaming Research do an extensive study of the Shiprock Hotel. Uh, we had committed uh, 3.9 million of our own cash to put into that. Uh, we are anxious to be able to fulfill this commitment. That was part of getting our senior loan agreement uh, and working with the Navajo Nation's largest chapter to be able to help create this anchor uh, retail and construction project that would create more uh, jobs, more opportunities to cross market other businesses and attract more tourists to, to that, uh, that chapter. A 100 space RV park over at Twin Arrows, extremely cost effective, low risk development. Again, the project has been fully vetted by Wells Gaming Research. It's a much less expensive way than having to build new hotel rooms, but you essentially get the same benefit of extending the, the amount of time that people spend, spend at the resort. Uh, as a result, their gaming goes way up. Uh, they spend double or triple the time, and they also have more opportunity to uh, spend money in retail, in uh, food and beverage, and other areas of the business. Uh, the third item that we wanted to recommend as part of these uh, projects is a day spa that we would uh, put into the, uh, uh, the, the Twin Arrows Navajo Casino Resort. Uh, we already have a 7,500 square foot space that's been fully shelled out. Uh, it hasn't been finished. Uh, it was part of the original design and development of Twin Arrows, uh, but it was value engineered out uh, at, in the final stages of development of the project. 
but a day spa there would help increase occupancy. It would enable us to increase uh, the room rates that we're charging, and it would also enable us to attract higher value gamers and conventions and meetings that are interested in some of these uh, specialized health and beauty services. So there's tons of upside with, uh, with this project, and again, vetted by Wells Gaming Research. Uh, moving over to page number five, uh, we know that we purchased that 15.1 uh, or 15.2 acre parcel at Horseman Lodge. Uh, we had this project vetted by Klaus Robinson. Uh, they're a 35 year gaming and hospitality uh, market feasibility company uh, in terms of studies and evaluations. Uh, they feel there's tremendous upside in that location. Uh, we know that Highway 89A has more traffic on it than Interstate 40. And it's also different traffic. It's not the same patrons. So the folks driving past Twin Arrows on I-40 I are not necessarily the same patrons that would be traveling uh, up State Route 89A and going to the Grand Canyon. So this represents a, an opportunity to attract new patrons, patrons that are interested on going onto the Navajo Nation, learning more about Diné culture, the Diné way, and there's lots of opportunity for us as well as other Navajo businesses to uh, be involved in that and create opportunities to, to generate revenue, attract more tourism and uh, create more jobs. Uh, in that same study by, um, by Klaus Robinson, Page was also identified uh, and that uh, there's tremendous opportunity in that location uh, as well. We have some solid ideas and concepts uh, for how we would develop an asset in that location. All of these assets, we would start off with a, uh, <clears throat> a well thought out uh, uh, mix of amenities and things at a level of investment that enables us to be successful and generate positive cash flow right out of the gate. And the, all of these assets represent an opportunity to expand and grow and develop. But the key thing is that we're doing it in phases we're not overburdening ourselves with too big a project that takes a long time to go into it. We know we can be successful quickly with these, create the jobs, protect the market, protect the nation's investment, and be able to return incremental money back to the Navajo Nation. And then of course, the, the permanent fire rock facility. Uh, this is very, very important. It's not only our flagship property, uh, and it continues to generate uh, tremendous cash flow and profit uh, but it's a temporary structure that has been wildly successful in terms of its return on investment. What we need to be able to do is put money into building a permanent facility that will have a 30-year service life, not a 12 to 14-year service life like the current temporary facility. The good news is there's another 20% of revenues available in that market. So knowing what we know about our markets, how to build we can optimize the design and construction of the facility to make sure that we optimize jobs, we pick up as much of that incremental revenue as is available, and we maintain the high profit margins that that property already generates. So that constitutes that, that uh, the six projects that we're looking for, the, we believe the equity investment from the nation would make good sense. You'd be getting back approximately 17 million dollars a year in shared EBITDA after these projects are all up and running. Uh, we would provide those monies to you as each one came online. Uh, and again, those monies can be earmarked for the general fund uh, or other uh, needs or programs or projects on the Navajo Nation as leadership sees fit. Uh, moving down, uh, we've already as an enterprise created over one point, uh, actually it's five billion, uh, in our first 10 years in economic output and benefit for the Navajo Nation, uh, we've got sales tax revenues that we would be providing in addition uh, to all of these items. And again, we mentioned early on that sales tax is not included uh, in some of these numbers. Uh, but uh, anyway, there's tons of upside in that area as well. The nation received, for example, $600,000 in sales tax revenue just on the construction of the Navajo Blue Travel Plaza. So how would an equity investment work for project development uh, to the nation's benefit? Again, simply just the sharing of EBITDA, the, the uh, development of new jobs, the support of new utility infrastructure that's vital uh, to be able to facilitate development around it 
And then also we've got a solid workforce that's ready to go to, uh, to make these projects a success. Moving further down on page five, part three, the investment in a combination uh, Navajo uh, FIS production and storage facility and office building. Uh, presently, the gaming enterprise rents a space uh, off the Navajo Nation. We're anxious to return back to Trustland and be on Navajo. We would utilize the uh, Twin Arrows Public Safety Building as a baseline model to start from. Uh, and what we would do is take those initial designs, reconfigure, and have half of that building be office space and the other half be Navajo uh, FIS production and storage facility. That enables us to um, pay rent or a lease, enter into a 30-year lease with the Navajo Nation on the building. So it becomes a long-term investment for uh, the nation. At the same time, it enables us to uh, prepare to ramp up our production on our Navajo FIS program and take advantage of the demand that we've been able to create for these new products. Uh, we think that uh, it, it, the proof of concept, as we've talked about, is already there. We have the relationship with Pepsi bottling, and we also have the ability to use high quality water from the sea aquifer below the Coconino County uh, Mesa out there where, where uh, the Twin Arrows property is located. Uh, and again, bottling water, uh, uh, energy drinks, sparkling waters, teas, non-alcoholic beverages, all kinds of different options with this. This is a new money maker, creates brand new jobs, and again, they're all authentic products that we're creating in partnership with our sister enterprises. So it's a great opportunity for us to grow the Navajo brand and show off the capabilities of uh, and the and the culture of, of the Navajo Nation. Uh, the next project, if I'd like, oh, and let me, before I wrap up on this one, so item K, paragraph K, <coughs> excuse me, this project will create about 250 construction jobs and 20 permanent uh, jobs for Navajo FIS in terms of immediate production. That number could go up dramatically depending on how uh, well our sales go. Uh, we've had people come through the travel plaza from all over the Midwest and Southwest. Uh, and we receive inquiries all the time about, hey, how can I get this product back home as far as Oklahoma and Texas? Uh, so there's tons of upside in terms of where we take this product and where we go with it. As we also know, we have our Navajo beef and sausage program, we have our jerky program, and these are all authentic products that all tie in together, and these all fit. There are absolute best-selling items that we have at the Navajo Blue Travel Plaza, and there's tons of opportunity for us to continue to increase production for the Navajo cattle ranchers and also for these individual products. So this investment will help further all of those commitments. Moving down to part four at the bottom of page six, workforce housing projects. Uh, again, we've, uh, we've had some preliminary discussions with Mr. Wasetta and the uh, Navajo Housing Authority. There's uh, four different locations uh, in the uh, general Flagstaff region where we could put uh, housing. Uh, we believe that the best two locations are either Costnino Road Development or on the southeast corner of exit 219 where Navajo Housing Authority already has land available. Uh, we like the idea of preserving the immediate area around Twin Arrows to be a resort environment. That way as future development occurs, we don't have resort environment and tourist environment butting right up against residential. Uh, but we do think that the southeast corner of exit 219 or Costnino allows for a very good uh, uh, housing development, not only for apartments, but um, middle income workforce housing. Uh, as people move into supervisor and manager ranks, the opportunity for them to own property uh, and, and start to build their wealth and, and help them take care of their families for the future. Uh, in speaking with Mr. Wasetta and NHA, uh, one of their biggest concerns is being able to have people that are occupying these facilities that are able to, to pay their rents and pay their mortgage and, and help maintain these facilities. And the good news is we have a solid workforce, well-trained, uh, that would be very interested in occupying these facilities. It enables them to save money, uh, to be close to, their, uh, to where they're working in the community they're helping to develop, and then they can also access 
um, infrastructure in Flagstaff, Gallup, uh, and other areas that's relatively nearby. Uh, also, we know that there are a lot of Navajo Nation students that attend uh, Navajo, or excuse me, Northern Arizona University, uh, and apartment housing is ridiculously expensive within Flagstaff. Uh, providing housing for our upcoming students so they're not overburdening themselves with additional debt uh, while they're going to school would enable them to have a leg up on success once they graduate. So there's some excellent locations and opportunities right there. We've got a built-in uh, client base that occupy and, res and in residency in those locations. And we'd love to work with NHA on, on deploying those, uh, the assets and resources to be able to make those happen. Uh, as, we, as we continue to move forward, um, I'd like to ask you to move over to uh, page eight. So, uh, when you add up all the construction, also the, uh, uh, the ability to develop the four quadrants of the Costnino Road interchange, because the Navajo Nation owns all four corners of that, uh, that exit and that location. It's uh, located just one mile east of the Flagstaff city limits on I-40. There's tons of opportunity to develop retail, uh, mixed use housing, commercial uh, business pads and things like that. There's tons and tons of opportunity there. Uh, we believe the first phase within three years could create 500 to 1,000 jobs, and that would be expanded over the, the broader development of that overall project area, including all four quadrants of that interchange. So it diversifies the business, creates new assets, creates housing, creates amenities that the residents will need, uh, and it can be done in a way that uh, makes it affordable for Navajo students and Navajo employees. So critical, tremendous upside. Uh, collaboration is already underway with a lot of our sister enterprises. Uh, we work closely with NECA, NDOT, NTUA, and NHA uh, anyway. And so we know that we can uh, pull a program team together uh, to, to, uh, to make this a success and do this within a very, very reasonable and short period of time. Uh, the final uh, part that I want to share with everybody is in the middle of page eight. Uh, and this is where probably the biggest and single largest financial opportunity comes, and that's with that uh, primary roadway, scenic byway roadway going up to Cameron. Uh, and so investment in, in infrastructure for Twin Arrows and other things that we're doing, uh, it also lends itself to support uh, that broader project and bigger long-term uh, vision of, uh, of building that roadway uh, through Loop and all the way up to Cameron. Uh, it'll save drive time for all of our team members, especially the ones that live in the loop chapter. It creates a byway for all kinds of Navajo businesses all along both sides of that road, north and south, or excuse me, east and west, to be able to capitalize on all that traffic. It's the scenic byway all the way to the Grand Canyon through the Navajo Nation. Uh, so some of that I, um, State Route 89A traffic that's being diverted away from our businesses a lot of that could be picked up and go right up uh, this scenic byway right into uh, to, uh, to Cameron and ultimately the Grand Canyon. So there's tons of opportunity with infrastructure development along that road, bringing natural gas to Twin Arrows, renewable energy uh, locations out there. Uh, there's all kinds of opportunities associated with that to leverage ARP money to get multiple benefits that would help the chapter, help the enterprise, help with housing, and all of these other uh, projects and things that were being contemplated. Uh, we also, as uh, Mr. Taylor had mentioned, we have that uh, there's 70 acres owned by Navajo Nation shopping centers. Adjacent to Twin Arrows is five, 405 acres. We've got some excellent development plans that are not included in today's presentation that as all these other projects come together, we throw off more cash flow. It makes it possible not only to reinvest further by the enterprise, but also attract outside investment back onto the Navajo Nation. Uh, there are opportunity zones that have been uh, identified and designated. Uh, the Flagstaff area is part of that opportunity zone, which makes it possible to attract outside investment onto the Navajo Nation. Uh, that can also create tremendous opportunity for jobs, but also cross-marketing and other ways that we can generate more revenue 
and more infrastructure for the Navajo Nation. So uh, Mr. Speaker and honorable members of the 24th Navajo Nation Council, uh, we, we believe that this enterprise has offers and continues to have tremendous value. Uh, we know that the, the way we were set up initially was to provide income to the permanent trust fund for long-term uh, dividend returns uh, and strengthening the financial future of the Navajo people. But we know that with the closure of NGS, with what's happened with the pandemic, uh, that it's, it's created this more immediate need uh, for uh, near-term access to additional uh, cash that can be utilized to improve the quality of life for the Diné people. Uh, so we believe that the proposals we brought forth are very viable, they're lower risk, they provide immediate returns back to the Navajo Nation, uh, they create more jobs, they create uh, additional stability uh, for everybody living and working in these areas, and it protects the nation's uh, bigger picture long-term investments in some of these other enterprises. So working collaboratively uh, with the Navajo Nation, with our sister enterprises, uh, we continue to focus on uh, executing our workplace safety plan. We're ready to go to a uh, full yellow stage without restrictions on travel onto the nation. Uh, we have our team and our resources and our assets available to assist with development. And we're here to partner with everybody to help get those things done. Uh, so we're grateful for the, the support that we have received from Navajo Nation leadership. Navajo Nation Council has reinvested in us with, uh, with CARES money. We've been able to receive UUFB funding, uh, and that's been critical because it's preserved uh, 1,180 jobs uh, that have been created by this enterprise. Uh, we cannot begin to tell you how much that means to everybody uh, that works and earns a living at this enterprise and as a result, they're able to take care of their families. So uh, in conclusion, I just wanna say that, again, we've got 10 documents, act attachments. They're in a Dropbox file. We'll make arrangements with Mr. Rico uh, to have all those documents emailed out to each member of council. Uh, so you can see uh, the investment at work and where the monies that the Navajo Nation Gaming Enterprise have paid, where they've gone. And that's all audited data, so it's 100% accurate. We've got our feasibility studies, our development studies. We've got a program we call Deneh Bekeya, which is our plan for assisting and expanding a tourism economy across the Navajo Nation. We have the sister enterprises in place to do it. This is a way that we have shared services, shared resources, and we can expand this to create more revenue for everybody, uh, not only bigger businesses, but smaller roadside businesses and family owned businesses uh, so that they can generate their, the income they need for their families. Of course, the Cameron Scenic Byway, there's tons of upside with that. The projects we've mentioned at Twin Arrows, the housing project, the intern program, and then to cap it all off, uh, you have the independent economic impact study that shows that all of the investment that the Navajo Nation is, has made in this enterprise it shows you how it's returned and where the economic benefit is back to the Navajo Nation. So um, Mr. Speaker and members, thank you so much for the opportunity to present today. Uh, that concludes our initial update. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much uh, for that presentation and that rundown, a lot of information there. And um, I think that we could take a whole day on tearing up that 10-page uh, document. Um, uh, Mr. Parrish, so thank you and your team members and the board for presenting before us uh, through you here today. And uh, I, I'll need some time to review that document too as well. Um, but uh, thank you for presenting. My colleagues, that document was sent out uh, to your uh, email and uh, there'll be other documents coming to forth from Navajo Nation Community Enterprise. Uh, colleagues, um, uh, I don't have, oh, well, I do. I have uh, Honorable Yellow Hair in the queue at this time. Honorable Yellow Hair, um, the floor is yours uh, on comments and questions. Honorable Yellow Hair.
Yellow hair going twice. Yellow hair going three times. That colleagues, I don't have anybody in the queue. No one has uh, text myself nor Mr. Rico. Uh, but I think that was a lot of information. Maybe uh, we could take that in consideration. I know we're bringing back Navajo Nation uh, Enterprises again with some of the recommendations that they took into today. And uh, maybe uh, I know pictures, uh, pictorials tell more than words and maybe some recommendation towards that too as well, because that is a lot of information, um, uh, Mr. Parrish. But if there's no other comments, colleagues, this time. Thank you then, Mr. Parrish. Thank you to you and your board members, your team members for doing the presentation this afternoon. Have a good day. Our pleasure, sir. Thank you so much, Aki. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I just want to congratulate you too as well, you and uh, gaming uh, the board and uh, to the staff. Uh, this past, um, what was it, Thursday? Thursday, uh, we drove by there. The very first time I went to that, I was enthused by uh, Chairman Hino's uh, words about the uh, Twin Arrows Travel Center. And I haven't been there since, uh, the, I think the last time I was there was a groundbreaking. I just want to commend your team members. That is just a beautiful place and that branding, uh, that is something else. And I just want to say that that, that was, uh, there were so many people there, sat there for 15 minutes, and it was just so many people going in and out, in and out. And so uh, it's it's a blessing that, that we have that open and uh, continuing to know that Navajo Nation can draw that economy to the nation on its borders and internally. So again, congratulations on that uh, Navajo Blue Enterprise Store. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We'll pass your thoughts along to our team and our board. They'll be thrilled to hear that. Yep. So uh, we're you. grateful for the nation's support because without it, uh, we would not have been able to build and, and achieve that. So, sir, thank you. Oh. So with that, colleagues, thank you. Nomination Game Me Enterprise. If we look on our agenda, Navajo Tribal Utility Authority is coming back, uh, I do believe, on, uh, on the 25th of May. Navajo Housing Authority is coming back with both the Veterans uh, Housing Program and the Division of Community Development next week on the 5th. And then Dene Development Corporation was, uh, did their presentation this two days ago. We do have a Natani Development Corporation on the list. Um, we haven't received anything from them, uh, nor have we received any recommendations we did invite them, but there was uh, there has been no response from them. So, colleagues, moving down on the uh, agenda items, uh, that does conclude our work session for today. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much to NAPI, Navajo Arts and Crafts, Navajo Hospitality Enterprise, Navajo Nation Oil and Gas, uh, Navajo Nation Shopping Centers. Uh, NECA and Navajo Nation Gaming Enterprise for adhering to the call and uh, wanting to present some ideas to the council or Navajo Committee on some of the options and looking towards economic development to streamline more revenue back to the nation, creating the jobs, looking at long-term efforts, uh, especially some of the bigger picture items that we need to close that gap and uh, creating revenue for uh, the benefit of the Navajo people. So again, thank you very much uh, to all the enterprises uh, today. And thank you very much for taking some time uh, out of your uh, Thursday to go ahead and present before us. So that colleagues, uh, since this uh, was uh, a work session um, for today and tomorrow regarding uh, enterprises, uh, this will conclude our work session. I know that there was numerous different uh, individuals that wanted to be working towards uh, and our numerous uh, committees that wanted to have some kind of meetings tomorrow too as well. So that'll free up the Friday. I know that we have, I'm um, just going down on the uh, Navajo Nation agenda here. We are closing the work session, announcements and then adjournment. Colleagues, is there any announcements at this time?
If there's no announcements, all these uh, members, of the, members of the uh, speaker, this is got a good yellow hair. Yes, honorable yellow hair. On announcements, uh, announcement is uh, I asked for a pick on the guest. I already called my name. I was a When we yellow here? Uh, I had a question for Mr. Parrish uh, on the uh, report on the uh, gaming committee uh, from Mr. Parrish. The report is very significant. There's a lot of good return and revenue. And my my uh, question was the uh, uh, investments that were the documents were sent out and explained explained to us as documents like gaming, loan, return, and wages and benefits. I wonder if you can still walk us through the chart, or if this is a, or is this a confidential? Speaker and uh, Mr. Parrish. Um, Honorable Yellow here, I can have uh, Mr. Parrish uh, contact you. He did indicate that he was more than willing to do that, so we can make sure that that call is set up with you, Honorable Yellow here. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank you very much, Speaker. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Any other announcements, colleagues? If done, Colleagues, well, this concludes our work session with our Navajo Nation Gaming, our Navajo Nation Enterprises, and with the Gaming Enterprise. Last one. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for being on the line, and thank you very much for being with us. Uh, everyone listening in, yeah, uh, have a good day, everyone. We're officially adjourned at 4.21 p.m. Oh, safe travels everywhere that you're going. Uh, I know we have a couple of committees traveling. Uh, safe travels uh, on your way home this evening. Uh, employees are working today. Safe travels to everyone. Uh, and please be safe out there. Yeah. Oh, go on it. Oh. Oh, colleague.